All right, all right, all right. It is October 2002, and today I'm going to be rewriting the NBA script. Now, what the hell does that mean, Kobe Bryant? Well, there's been a lot of rumors and things of that nature saying, oh, the NBA actually is scripted. None of this stuff is real. Oh, all right, if that's what you want, then here you go. I have control of every single team, and I can control as much of them as I, if I want. I could do the lineup, you know, anything like that, or, or just trades, free agency. Speaking of free agency, some of the guys that will expire after this year. And like I said, because I control every single team, I could decide where any of these guys go, and it'll get more interesting as the years go on, like when, you know, LeBron's decision is happening or something. Speaking of that, LeBron is in the draft, and if I want to, I could decide, oh, this team deserves a number one pick more. They might just be located in Manhattan. And on top of that, which is something that I have already done, I can make trades for these teams, and the first one that really sh just striked me the second I looked at this roster was, man, oh man, does Allen Iverson need some help? And the first trade I made in the video before I even clicked record, actually, it was like 12 hours ago, was Vince Carter to the Philadelphia 76ers. He is now going to be their starting small forward after trading Keith Van Horn, two first round picks and three second round picks to the Raptors. And they, with those picks that might become good, maybe they won't, um, can now tank for LeBron. The thing is, is that I'm writing the script. I know everything that will happen. If I, hypothetically, if I, you know, I know that LeBron is going to be LeBron. So I know he's worth that value. And I might just go and make another trade for like someone, another team to tank as well and give, you know, some more teams, some supporting cast, because you know, these two guys are kind of unfair together. Not that I'm going to break them up. That's not what I was insinuating. As a matter of fact, I'm, I am at the end of the day still an NBA nerd and just looking at the Raptors roster I mean like man Keith Van Horn doesn't need to be here even though who the hell cares about Keith Van Horn I am trading him the Timberwolves so they have some more help and they actually get another first round pick so the Raptors will be coming off pretty nicely and uh, also getting an old Terrell Brandon they'll be just fine I'll even you know I'll throw in another second just to make it but I don't I don't see them getting more than one first for this so now Kevin Garnett gets himself another supporting piece he will be well I mean he could either be on the bench start whatever matter of fact what am I talking about this is my script my league I'm making Kevin Kevin Garnett a center so that Keith Van Horn can start at the four and there you go I mean pretty mediocre backcourt but it already was shout out to Joe Smith now you know to be fair the season hasn't started yet so I'll let some more teams maybe establish their direction before I do anything else like oh yeah are you playing good are you playing bad the rotations are on auto right now so they could decide to do whatever the hell they want and you know at the end of the day and also why are the Knicks playing so well this is the thing I know I've been in my NBA nerd bag thus far but I can you know uh, go past the bounds of reality although maybe there should be like a, a in the back of my head like a like a oh snap don't let the fans catch that there's a script type of thing you know like i have a wanted level in gta and it's one star and has a chance of getting up to five well as of right now the philadelphia thing is working out really well vince carter now and iverson are the number one seed i actually oh yeah i left iverson at the two because eric snow's here so i'm like screw it we'll keep as much talent as possible in the starting five new orleans baron davis doing it. let's check uh nicks actually did better than i expected but middle or lower pack yeah cavaliers are trash by the way the bobcats still haven't been added yet so uh, there's also that there's 14 teams in the west right now i think one of the east teams move over there oh yeah the new orleans hornets eventually moved to the west the dirk mavericks are actually number one over the kobe and Shaq lakers and the move for k the kg move their their move is doing real well for them i don't know how keith is doing he's averaging 16 points per game so it was a well worth trade he's also shooting 46 percent from three and 46 percent from the field oh uh, yes this is an interesting one the warriors don't look that great on paper but gilbert arenas is one of the greatest 2k players of all time so he's cooking although part of the script could be nerfing players because i mean but gilbert really was fantastic though around this time and the jazz with malone and stockton are still doing good man that is a team i should have looked at as well they should be breaking this up dog why are you still competing matter of fact you may be like oh they're old uh you know you you uh, they've been there for 20 years you can't trade them well guess what malone left anyways and stockton don't care this is what I, this is what i like to do too when i like used to do like my league series or even like the lillard series i like to look at like you know middle of the pack teams that maybe would need a guy like that and also could afford you know taking on 19 million of salary for a year this is where the player finder comes into effect and honestly i don't know if there's going to be a player that works for carl malone actually dang i was about to give props to the player finder but you can't do minimum salary on here i, I wanted to do minimum not max so funnily enough the team this actually works out best for is the knicks and antonio mcdice who actually by the way was a crazy hooper i was just looking up antonio mcdice's stuff a few days ago because i always see him do well in 2k i always see his records like certain and like you know he had like 40 point games in real life he started averaging 20 points per game then he tore his patella i believe and didn't play a whole season and only played 10 games of a certain of this season i think right here then got traded to us of course we overpaid and traded for him and and wasted time with him for years but the jazz aren't worried about that right now really they're not an attractive free agent destination they're about to fall off a cliff the second that stockton and malone are out of the league so might as well get the tank started early i'm also going to throw in i think this is reasonable although protections are broken in this game 
game. You know, for Carl Malone still giving up production, I'll give him an unprotected 2003 pick. Knicks try to move in a bit more of a weird contention. Around this time, they were known for doing terrible things, um, just egregious. And they gave Al Allen Houston a large contract that is one of the worst contracts in basketball history, at least like granted for the time. And Latrell also got dealt to the Timberwolves around this time, but I don't know if I will in this, maybe. I'll let the Jazz give him a second round pick for good measure. And uh, there you go. Carl Malone is now a Nick. I know I'm doing a measurable thing to, to our, our city's timeline so in my league now we can give out we can give out contract raises but this one is for the sake of making a nice trade making a very nice trade actually as you can see charles oakley is on the wizards right well you know who i want to trade to the wizards man oh man scott pippen would you like to reunite with Michael Jordan for just one season? I know. I know. It sounds a little bit insane. Charles Oakley. Also, I'm not going to lie. There's a lot of these like role player guys in 2K that are giving all of this money for no reason. These guys literally don't exist, I don't believe. And they're giving them like three years, $17 million contracts just so the seasons could start. If I want a team to sign a player, I will definitely exile these players from existence, Um, by the way. So don't like get scared that I'm trading too many of these guys to one team. If I think the Blazers deserve a player sooner than later, then there you have it. Like, look at this. This guy right here is making 16 million dollars and he's a 65 16 million i think that would be the biggest contract in the league but i'm gonna trade the wizards first round pick this year and charles oakley and basically nothingness to the blazers for scotty pippen and by the way i'm not just doing this for a rebuilding team or something well they soon will be because they're both inevitably insanely old but the wizards now have michael jordan and scotty pippen who is at the four which works because jerry stackhouse is there and jordan at his old age is still averaging 27 6 and 5 so maybe just maybe we see an interesting playoff run and 80 overall makes a big difference in this type of league especially when he's just still playing this well like scotty is and jerry stackhouse is averaging 26 my god they might actually be a contender now oh by the way injuries are off there's already enough weird stuff going around in this league so you know don't worry about that now for orlando i'm gonna pull something that i actually already did for the sixers but i didn't say anything i, I forgot to I, I did it like 12 hours ago like before i fell asleep and then yeah for the sixers because this league is a little bit weaker i had signed them one of them g league dudes just sits around in the pool like you know he he's in the modern day when like you simulate 2k you know i think they added them like two years ago or something where these guys just sit in the free agency forever and i usually don't let them sign anywhere but because the league is so weak i was like screw it might as well take advantage of it and for the magic they badly need a center i believe i just saw that sean kemp is their starting center yet they're the third seed in the league so i believe that t mac you know they deserve to have gotten a little bit lucky here we'll go with uh we'll go with aiden dermakenko you know throw him in here on a minimum for a one i could have done multiple years but yeah throw him for a one year why not he's also classified as a stretch five with an 88 three-point shot time will tell if he actually has the tendency but that should open up a lot for a team mac on the floor oh yeah he has the tendency all right he's gonna be chucking because i don't see a move that this team could really make they don't really uh i mean you could trade george hill but or why did i say george hill i literally was about to say grant hill and i changed it to george for some reason and mike miller's averaging 17 yeah i'm not trading him either i'm just gonna do one more scheme of any other like weaker top of the conference team see if they'd like to trade for a worse player but i mean aside from the lack of a small four for the hornets they're, they're looking pretty fantastic fantastic actually they even have pj brown off the bench and actually jamal mashburn could just play the three so i don't know what they're doing yo why is th why is that the case because pj brown's a four why is jamal mashburn listed at four if pj brown's a four maybe he was supposed to be a six man i don't know but me personally i'm putting jamal mashburn back of the three look at that way better starting lineup oh i actually have a very interesting trade to make i take it back now with the magic trying to gear up for a playoff spot i gave this bum ralph westbrook a raise and i'm even gonna throw in stephen hunter who's a younger player he's 21 years old was just drafted you know a solid young asset to the jazz for john stockton to play alongside tracy mcgrady i'm also giving the jazz a first round pick this year from the magic which we know now is a trash draft class and hell i might as well act like they know too but i mean that's kind of how i'm treating it by throwing away these picks like this so now the orlando magic who by the way i did check john stockton's player card it says he does want to retire after the season maybe i'll force him to play another one but he'd probably go down to like an 80 79 anyways he's 40 years old for the love of god but that gives them a a contending type of point guard to maybe even more match up like i feel like i see t mag usually match up with the lakers but uh, e even better than this and well i'll continue to evaluate the simulation as things go on and be like oh snap this guy doesn't deserve any more help maybe but for now i think that's good i think every team I've, I've done what i needed to do in case you're wondering yes the cavaliers are trash i've thought about trading big z but he stood around for a while and he's a solid mid-tier age asset so he could stick around i'm not even sure if the bulls have their pick but they were just confused around this time i know this is a little bit 
last second shot clock buzzer beater thing, but I just saw something that's very interesting to me. So I'm trading Eddie Jones in a scrub. I'm make this top 10 protected, by the way. And Eddie Jones is averaging 22 points, five rebounds, five assists this season on incredibly efficient splits. The Suns for Tom Gugliota, two picks and 76 overall Joe Johnson. Now, Joe actually shouldn't progress too much because he's a 24 year old man, which kind of messes up real life. But I am going to let him progress more. But this is more so for the Suns to focus on maybe winning this season. They're already in contention. I don't think the Heat would want this Penny Hardaway contract, by the way. This is terrible. And I guess he helps them win. He's still a 78. But I actually am going to edit Joe Johnson, let him get a little bit better of a uh, ceiling, you know? The ceiling is the roof. Shout out to Michael Jordan. All right, there you go. Eddie Jones to the Suns. That'll probably be the last trade. Jesus, I was scrolling through contract extensions to see if I could sign anybody back, but not one person wants to sign back to their teams. Or, yeah, I, I don't know. Trade deadline is officially over. I know I took my good time on that one, and I'm supposed to be going for years to come, but I feel like those are some moves that'll set up the teams for that time as well. All right, Shaq wins MVP. Yao Ming, Rookie of the Year. Bobby Jackson, Sixth Man of the Year. Ben Wallace, DPOY. Big Z, Most Improved. And Larry Brown, Coach of the Year. And all for NBA first, Kidd, Kobe, Duncan, Nowitzki, and Shaq. Second team, McGrady, Iverson, Jermaine O'Neal, Paul Pierce, and KG. Third team, Payton, Jordan, Antoine Walker, Vince Carter, and Pau Gasol. And so on and so forth. Yep. Uh, all rookie first team, Yao Ming. There you go. Amari, Carlos Buzzi. So here you have it. The NBA playoffs. Um, at this point, I actually, the whole point is that I actually am writing the script in 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 moves of through the light of trades. I don't know. Not not through the actual, you know, what happens. So Clippers, Wizards, Supersonics, get all these teams out of here. Like, you know, I like to get to like the conference finals before I really care. And look at this. The New York Knicks so far have smoked the magic. Who I made a good amount of moves for. Um, got them that center who chucked a bunch of shots and John Stockton. That John Stockton move was not worth it as the, oh yeah, right. Carl Malone. That's kind of a crazy first round matchup. And the Knicks make it to the conference finals. And granted, the conference rank maybe would be a little bit different if they had him for the full season. But I think they got even a little bit worse since I traded for him, at least in terms of record. And then you have the Mavericks, who I actually got to check. I feel like there's a few Western Conference teams I expected to get further. I didn't actually make a move for him because they looked perfect as is. The Lakers smoked the Suns, which is it's it's cool. Eddie Jones is going to be there for you know a long time. I think he's on a four year deal, five year actually. And the Spurs actually got upset by the Mavericks, but I didn't make a move for either one of these teams. So it's cool. They just yeah, they just ran the ones. Minnesota, though, they couldn't get the edge on Dallas, despite the few things I did do for them, like Keith Van Horn, who played well, but not well enough. And I definitely did think about making a move with Milwaukee to like send them into rebuilding mode, throw Ray Allen away. I mean, it might just honestly be to the Celtics with Paul Pierce, but maybe since they made the playoffs, it'll be the other way around. Honestly, the Celtics just barely missed it, though, so it's not that crazy. But they, it was an 11 game difference. The Knicks, who only had 40 wins, are actually now up 1 0 on the Sixers and now 2 0 to 1. 3 1, 3 2, 3 3, game 7. Let me see real quick. Oh, wow. The Lakers and Mavs went to game 7 as well. So maybe some gameplay here. Maybe not. I guess we'll see if the tides turn that way. The tables turn. Or the... All right. Two minutes to go. It is 93 97. Let, let's see, actually, if the Knicks can get a bucket or it's going to be okay. Yeah, yeah. I see them shooting free throws. So two minutes to go. The Allen Iverson, Vince Carter led Sixers are up by three points, I believe. But the Knicks have the basketball still, actually. Maybe it was just a technical free throw. I have no clue in the world. And there goes number 32. Carl Malone, the pass into him, pass back out to Isley. I thought about trading Isley. Look at Malone down low, gets a bucket. No, imagine Carl Malone wins a ring in his last season. Generational talent uh, for the Knicks at 40 years old. Because that's the thing. I think the I actually I think the Jazz were around the same place, but it's like the Knicks had you know some hope for the future. I think Malone and Stockton are both gonna retire within the next two years. Isley, he is going to once again try and force it down to Carl. Carl in the post. They're gonna double team him. He will stick in the double. Oh my god, he just took the double team and went to the basket anyways. I don't know where Allen Houston. I think actually I see Allen Houston on the bench. I'm not sure where Spreewell is though. Is he in the game? Do I see? Yeah, I think I do see a Spreewell. Oh my God. The three pointer and that is off by Iverson. Carl Malone dribbles it. He hands it off to Charlie Ward. Oh no. Uh, pass over to Isley. Isley steps back for three. Hands it off to Carl. Carl's just going to ISO from the mid range area. He's going to bump. Go to the right. He's going to go into the post. Spin and what a pass down to the big man. I think that's was that Kurt Thomas? That just cut right there. Number 40 Knicks. I don't know. It's kind of hard not all the players look the best oh my god Allen Iverson pulls up for three and that is off again Allen Iverson one of the more inefficient three-point shooters I guess overall shooters but he also was you know six foot Carl Malone yet again cuts to the basket and oh my god he is putting on display he is about to get another finals appearance it maybe is looking like Vince Carter by the way who I think is just old right that's him in the left corner he just looks old you know he looks as he does like today because 2k yeah um and Allen Iverson for three bang takes a one-point lead finally hits a shot could have been a lot worse for the Knicks who I'm obviously rooting for because I'm a Knicks fan.
man. I didn't, I didn't expect this though. And Isley's gonna go all the way. He he. I kind of like that. He he said, uh, oh snap, I'm trying to do that Carl Malone default pick and roll where you kind of just wait here forever. You know what I'm saying? Just pass the ball eventually. But he said, wait, no, Lane, uh, Howard Isley to the basket. I expected a lot more ball handler action from you know Spreewell or Houston, but neither one is in the game. I'm about to see him subbing now as Vince Carter calls the timeout or what the coach does. Vince Carter was in possession of the basketball. Is there not a young Vince Carter model in this game? Like he looks insane. The pass is gonna go into Allen Iverson, who now is guarded by Allen Houston, and Iverson will pass it down to Vince Carter in the post. Vince Carter will pull up the shot, and that is off rebound by Thomas. They foul Kurt before he get the ball to his hands, and Kurt will go to the line. Hey, wait, this is this ain't Is Why is saying Isley sets? I swear, yeah, that's Kurt Thomas. I'm not tweaking. Three point deficit for the Sixers. They have no timeouts to go because they would have called it. Iverson goes back up the other way. I mean, my bad. That's Vince Carter, and Carter spins, goes another spin layup. That is a beautiful layup. A tough layup down by three, but you know you'd probably want an easier one. But I mean, hey, it's a nice shot though. They foul Allen Houston. He'll head to the line now. Houston, the first free throw is good. Why are they showing Vince Carter stats now? What in the glitch is going on? And the second one is also good by Houston. Pass over to Vince. Vince is gonna pull the three, and that is off. Rebound by Isley, and that'll probably do it. Let me get out of here. Free throws hit. Sixers hit some, and the Knicks are going to go to the finals. You would think I rigged the actual results with how this is going, but a team with like three low 80s is now in the finals, and we have the Mavericks versus Lakers in the Western Conference. Once again, two teams I don't believe I made any moves. I almost traded for the Lakers to get a better point guard at the end uh, of the last trade almost, but it looks like they didn't need it, and if they're cooking the Mavericks, man, oh, the Mavericks come back with a 10-point um, outscoring in the fourth quarter. 112 to go. Lakers up by three. They do have the basketball. And it'll go into Fisher. He'll dribble it out a little bit. The screen by Ori and the pass down to in the post to Kobe Bryant. Kobe will do a post hook and miss. What the hell? I also don't know where Shaq is. Shaq fouled out. So it is time. I, I Honestly, it is my universe. I might turn off foul outs after this year. Steve Nash will pass it over to Dirk. Dirk's got it at the top left. He'll get the screen from Rafe LaFriends. Dirk is isoing. He'll, he can pass it off keep it pass it to the corner not a bad shot by uh, nick van exel he misses though and the lakers got it will the mavericks foul they probably will this is something i can't turn off that 27 seconds ago they're probably gonna foul and nope they're gonna let it rock pass on to kobe kobe guarded by nash kobe is gonna take nope he gets double teamed by dirk beautiful double team and Derek fisher with five seconds to go on the shot clock fisher goes to the basket back out and big shot bob bang robert ori with the bucket to potentially end the game oh my who would have thought Everybody. Literally everybody. This is what's expected from him. Pass into Nash. Nash top of the key. Three-point shot. That is looking way off. And the rebound by Dirk. Back out. Nash. A much better shot. That one is good. Cuts it to two. The foul Derek Fisher to go to the line. Can Derek Fisher miss the point four seconds? Hit the free throws. The first one is good with 77%. Not a green. Which, by the way, actually, matter of fact, on my on my NBA universe, whatever you want to call this, script writing, I've been meaning to turn off shot feedback. I just want to see if the shots go in or not. And he hits the second one. That was kind of nerve-wracking. I'm not going to lie. Four-point ball game, like the announcer said, I think it should be over. Michael Finley, that is off the rebound by LaFriends. LaFriends is going to dribble it out, and that is it. The Lakers will advance to the finals in 2003, which actually isn't true to life, right? I believe all three finals was Spurs and, and uh, Nets, which I don't even know where the Nets were at. I didn't even peep where they were at. Dirk tried. He definitely tried. Mavericks are out of here. They'll probably be back around in these in these playoffs sooner than later. And um, oh yeah, the Nets got smoked by the Sixers. That's respectable. That's respectable. The Nets had a pretty stacked team themselves. All 80 plus overalls in the starting lineup, except for Dikembe, who's Dikembe. In the NBA Finals, the Lakers and Knicks, probably the first time this has happened since 73 or something like that. And I expect an absolute blowout in favor of the Lakers, but we'll see. The New York Knicks have one game won by 15 points. Allen Houston and Carl Malone combined for whatever that is. I want to say 54 points, but am I stupid? I guess we'll find out. Howard Isley had 12 points on zero field goals and 12 free throws. Matter of fact, there is a lot of free throws being taken. 40 free throws for the Lakers, 43 for the Knicks. It's not even uneven, barely. The Lakers are looking like they're going to run away with game two, a 109-85 win. Shaq had 37 and 23. The Knicks will win game three by 13 points. Shaq had 40. Kobe had 
had 30, but the Knicks all around effort. I see. I get it. Yeah, their, their team effort is going insane right now. It is a close game. Two minutes to go. 153 left. I was about to say Mark Madsen at the line, but I didn't want to just guess. But it was Mark Madsen at the line. He misses the free throw. Pass up to Allen Houston. And the Knicks, by the way, this is their first finals appearance since 1999. You know, it was with basically the same team except Patrick Ewing instead of Carl Malone. And whoever that is is going to shoot the mid-range shot. I genuinely do not know who that is. Also, is Carl Malone fouled out or something? Why is he not in? That's going to hurt the team a lot. Well, Kurt Thomas did, and so did Carl Malone, and so did Charlie Ward. What the hell? Carl Malone only has two points in this game, and the team is still, you know, in this position cooking. He was one for eight. Pass down to Kobe. Kobe guarded by Houston. He will fade away deep midi, and that is good. Allen Houston crosses over, does a few between the legs. I don't know. Goes to the right. Bag isn't as deep as Kobe's. He passed it out. Back over to Isley. Isley's going to get the screen from Latrell Sprewell. He goes left. Isley will go all the way to the basket, stop around the rim, and pass it back out. Nice shot by Sprewell, but he misses. I'm assuming Shaq's fouled out, too. He's over there sitting on the bench, not playing either, but Kobe Bryant is Kobe Bryant, and that will be game right there. Kobe games it. Seven-point lead. It should be over with, I would assume. 36-9-8 for Kobe. It is 2-2 two to two in the series. And yeah, I'll turn off foul outs after this season ends. I, I decided, you know, I'd keep it, you know, consistent. I have some morals. The Lakers, though, smoke, smoke us. I'll just say us. Screw it. I was about to say us anyways. 29 and 10 for Shaq. The Knicks, though, not letting up. It is a two-point game, 155 to go. Weatherspoon is at the line. He will hit his free throw. It is a three-point lead for them. Derek Fisher back up the other way. The screen by Shaq. Shaq trying to get down low, and my God, it is going to be bully season for the rest of this game. I could already tell. 52, 52, and currently down by one. He has, well, not half of the team's points. It's 118, 119, but uh, Houston goes left to the basket. He will take an ugly-looking layup. It will miss. Rebound by Shaw. Brian Shaw back up the other way. Pass down to Shaq. Shaq, you gotta double. You have to double team there. Oh my God. Is Shaq about to send the Knicks home right in front of our eyes? Just like how Carl Malone did to the uh, Sixers, who I also do not know where he is yet again. Houston will step back, go right. He is getting clamped up. He has no bag right now. Into the post. Pump fakes it a few times. Pass out to the corner. Back out to Isley. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Isley goes left. Pulls up. Oh, what a pass down. Will he make it? He does. It is a goaltending on Shaq. Weatherspoon out there fighting for his life. Where is Carl Malone? Oh my. My Carl Malone fouls out yet again. So did Kurt Thomas. And yet again, I mean, this one wasn't as bad as the last game, but Carl was having a decent game. But yeah, fouled out. And Kobe and Shaq are combining for, yeah, they don't deserve teammates, dog. This man has 54, 7, 2, 3, and 2 in 44 minutes. And Kobe has 25, 5, and 12. And nobody else even has double digits. That is insane. They sub in Charlie Ward. I just heard the announcer say Fisher will screen with Shaq. And will he force it down to Shaq? I see a little bit of help coming over there, but not really. They just let him, man. Is Weatherspoon even a center? He's a 6'7 power forward trying to... You are not Dennis Rodman, buddy. He is now tied for the third most points in the playoff game is what old dude just said. And oh my God, he just sent home that man Allen Houston shot at the rim. Just put his hands up. No chance of anything. And he is trying to go to the basket again. It goes out to Madsen instead. Madsen over to Fisher. They are probably going to swing it around to Shaq yet again. Double team this man. Holy hell. When are they going to learn? Three point deficit. Shaq O'Neal is earning himself his fourth ring pass into charlie ward ward the pass over to Hugh, uh spreewell spreewell for three that is good latrell spreewell ties it up gives him one more chance mark madsen will pass into Derek fisher 18 seconds ago they need a game winner we still have weatherspoon on shack will they be able to stop him will he even take the shot i don't know oh my god he is going to the basket they're gonna fake double team he is just bully ball and one shaquille o'neal shack at the line he even hits the free throw he now has 61 one point. The Knicks have no timeouts. You would think a Shaq foul would be a good idea. Houston with no time to go. He misses the shot and that is it. The Lakers are NBA champions. I should have rigged it. Bill Jackson up there, man. Oh, man. Do not come over to this team after this, dog. Especially because you would be do Nothing while you were on the Knicks president. Shaq wins finals MVP his fourth and fourth straight, right? Because it's 03, so they won 0 uh, 2000, 01, 02, and 03. So this is the fourth straight ring for the Lakers and the Knicks nearly dethroned Ronald Carl Malone sold us, dog. Fouling out every single game. And, and Kurt Thomas, my God. Shaq, 35, 14, and 3. And yes, he also scored 61, which is, I believe, the third most in playoff history up to this point, of course. And yeah, our second, actually, tied Elgin, which is now tied for the most in a finals game with another Laker. Big and Michael Jordan, the Wizards did nothing with that last opportunity I gave them. I mean, they lost in six. It's not terrible. And yeah, let me not forget it now. Never do foul outs again, dog. Just foul to hell. So Kevin Willis. 
list. Scott, okay, so I am going to save Scotty Pippen for another year, 37 years old. Why not? Anybody is still impactful. Why not stick around another year, right? Michael Jordan, amen. Stick around for the LeBron year. Clifford Robinson. Now, this is a thing, right? The draft lottery is about to happen. I, I personally will trade the picks if need be. Um, David Robinson, screw it. You could stick around for another year as well. And Sabonis, why not? You're, you're the least tenured player in the NBA, but aside from that, yeah. Uh, historic changes, all this stuff, you know, it, it's essential for the NBA. The draft lottery, so I believe Cavaliers should be number... No, Cavaliers jumped up, and Bucks via Atlanta are number three. Magic via Sacramento are number five. I don't think I made any of these trades, right? What's crazy is I do know that Pistons 13th pick was from Memphis because that's the pick they drafted Darko with, so they won't have to do that this time, probably. So as much as I love to sit around and watch this, the NBA draft lottery, Nuggets, Heat, Bucks, Cavs, Magic, who's going to get the number one pick? The Heat. Hey, honestly, I might let that rock. The Heat, Hawks, Magic, Nuggets, and Cavaliers are the top four, which is, you know, the most important four. And the Cavs also, by the way, yeah, fell out of the top four, so they will not have a chance to draft LeBron unless I, you know, make it as such. And yeah, I do not know how the Magic have that pick, but they now have a guarantee to get one of the Hall of Famers. The Heat obviously did just trade away Eddie Jones to buy into potentially tanking, and it worked out beautifully. LeBron James will fit this team wherever he needs to. He now has Joe johnson who should have some decent potential now time shall tell and obviously you know he was here years later anyway so it kind of fits a pretty funny narrative you know what though i could do something crazy and trade the magic pick and be like oh we're trying to contend right now like in like a mm, that could be crazy trade the magic pick for like a disgruntled star not too old literally could be any age could that possibly be jesus the blazers are trash so the magic had got this pick from the kings for nick anderson and it was the 27th overall pick in real life which was actually kendrick perkins who they traded again is what i just found out through google but in this the kings were trash instead of really good which is crazy so um yeah that's how they got it let's not waste no more time man with the first overall pick the miami heat are going to select lebron james there's no there's no way around it 1000 percent. the second overall pick the atlanta hawks now they have jason terry they, they basically can fit perfectly either mellow or d wade and no i'm not picking darko here remember i'm writing the script darko is trash i could make darko better i might go and make darko better for whatever team he goes to but he's not going this oh should i just do that where even is he 63 31 ranked 18 year old darko milicic ceiling ben wallace all-star is crazy terrible balance plagued by poor judgment very limited range you know what i do think i'm gonna let darko be picked pretty highly but it won't be by the hawks i'm gonna let the hawks select we'll go with carmelo anthony number two also where are the pistons oh they were the 15th seed or 15th pick i should say they made the playoffs i guess oh no, no that was the grizzlies thing i was talking about right i don't know um yeah carmelo anthony will be an atlanta hawk for the time being recorded the highest vertical that is surprising the orlando magic i do think that Dwayne wade is the best selection here he could play point guard for them they have no point guard at least a great one i will say chris bosh would be interesting too though but no nah, let, let's go best available for them Dwayne wade to the orlando magic next up is the denver nuggets who have a very very bad team now I do think I'm going to let Darko and a, a juiced up Darko go either here or Cleveland. Actually, maybe not them either because he wouldn't really get much PT. Oh, it might be the Jazz. Let them reset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably going to go there. But all right. So then with that being said, Denver, let's just get the obvious pick out of here. Chris Bosh, you're going to have to suffer over there for a little bit. Maybe I'll get him some help somehow, some way. C Cleveland Cavaliers. You know, this draft starts to fall off a lot around here, but they could very well use a point guard of the future. You know, a guy to, you know, be around, whatever play basketball and i'll take kirk heinrich to the cavaliers and the utah jazz are now on the clock and with this pick chris Kamen is great as well but i have a plan here for darko milicic welcome to the cleveland cavalier or the the utah jazz coaches love a player that can get up and down the court as quickly as this guy darko impresses class with the best in class three quarter court sprint time at the draft combine wow he is talking grizzlies are next up they have pal gasol i'm not gonna draft all these picks by the way but i was just doing a couple next to pal gasol you love a guy you know that uh can really move and groove and play they make like Boris Diaw, I would assume, right? They don't have a four. They got Drew Gooden, but matter of fact, I got an idea. It's crazy too. I don't think I even overrode John Stockton's retirement. I think he just didn't retire, right? Am I tweaking? I swear, I don't think I did. So with this pick for the Grizzlies, since Boris Diaw may or may not take a while to develop and they already have Drew Gooden and everything, I'm going to trade their pick to the Hawks for Glenn Robinson, who averaged 18 last year, but was on the team that is trash and now has Mello, who is going to play small forward. And they also get a second round pick back and some, and there goes some dude who's making too much money screw it that worked Mellows hawks theo ratliff's a bit up there in age a 
give him the set best player available, Chris Kamen. Hey, if Boris Diaw is the best guy available, he is perfect for the Blazers because they are terrible. It really doesn't matter. They just need someone. Yeah, screw it. I'll take Boris. Said he could be an all star. So yeah. And I already drafted Dark on everything, right? Yeah, I'm good here. I don't really care about the rest of this stuff. They could draft all the rest of the picks. Don't care. Josh Howard went to the Raptors. Shout out to Willie Green. He went to the Bulls. Nick Collison to the Celtics. Uh, Zaza and Kendrick Perkins to the Bucks. Oh, I forgot about Kyle Corver. Dang. They always rank him very low since he was a second round pick. I'm pretty sure. And got traded for a fax machine. Also, for a team like the Blazers, I will definitely keep the second round pick because they are terrible. Matter of fact, most of these teams got a pretty decent second round pick. But look at this. They don't want to sign Luke Walton. Come on, man. And Carlos Delfino. Absolute classics in the basketball world. DeAndre Barbosa not about to get signed. Like, come on, man. Come on, man. Was there no team player options around this time? What the hell is this? Why? Did they add team and player options within like the... What the hell? It actually is throwing me off. Or is it just glitching? It might just be glitching. So, you know, for this portion, I've been thinking about it for a while. I am going to turn off season free agency to automatic just because it is going to be hell to try and sign a bunch of players like that. I, I, I'll be able to influence, move players around if I feel like it, but I don't want everyone to just run back to free agency on accident. All right. So onwards to free agency. So Tim Duncan's out here. He has four offers, one from the Spurs, the Wizards, the Pacers, and the Clippers. Now, I think that Tim Duncan's the guy that I'm going to keep an eye on to potentially trade in the next few years if they do nothing over here. Oh, also, I got to fix up Manu because Manu, they do not let him cook. Jason Kidd also leaning towards re-signing with the Nets. All right, so I finished the offseason. I made a few moves. I mean, nothing really too crazy. So Gilbert Arenas actually is on the Wizards already. Well, I actually don't know when he signed. It might have been this season that he signed with him in real life, but he's there because they had the cap space and the the uh, Warriors did not. And he did not have bird rights, so they couldn't even re-sign him if they wanted to. Oh, yeah, actually, this is a pretty crazy one. Jermaine O'Neal. And I think I said this already because I'm not going to lie. I took a few hours off recording, but uh, I think I said that I was going to let them kind of rock and just sign whoever they want wanted to and Jermaine O'Neal to the Spurs also Carlos Boozer what the hell how did he okay did I trade him there how the hell did he get off of Cleveland I'm gonna put him right back on Cleveland because this is stupid but yeah more importantly Jermaine O'Neal signed with this team and it's a pretty interesting a four or five duo with him and Tim Duncan who I'll change to a five since uh David Robinson's pretty old and went somewhere else I think he went to Miami Raptors gotta get their elite tanking on I actually don't know what they were doing last season wait they ended up ninth even though I traded away Vince Carter that is insane honestly I think I think that was it i can't think of anything else that happened notable and free it's not really you know we're not in like star studded league territory just yet also like tim duncan re-signed with his team i believe jason kidd re-signed with the nets right yeah that's about it I, I didn't you know there's no really need to mix that up right now i did think about doing something nasty and make a michael jordan take like a pay cut and go to another team which is it's not really a pay cut because he was already making a million with the wizards last season now he's making like 10 beginning of the season i might just let it rock to the actually let me look over some stuff right i didn't realize that uh rip hamilton left Left the Pistons for the Nuggets, but that's actually a pretty good, uh, yeah, that's pretty solid. Matter of fact, let me uh put Corey McGetty at the three, and then you're good. Go. I like that. Puts Chris Bosch's team in a more, you know, competitive space off the rip. And the Pistons sold last year, anyways, or didn't win anything. Oh my god, the Pacers are terrible. I would trade the way they're role players, but they don't have any. Oh, the Pistons did sign Ron Artest, though, so there's that. So the Rockets were very trash last season. I might give them one more year to like see like if they can do something on their own before I do anything, but after that, God to make some shake and make a third trade or another trade to get him a third star because if Yao and Steve Fran this isn't a team that you just break up 287 plus overalls in this era you don't just break that up and my god the Spurs are gonna be crazy also put Carlos Boozer back on those Cavs dog literally do not care what the scenario was I'll give him a uh a Cavaliers 08 first for compensation hopefully they're good by then it might it might get ugly though let's just I I'm feeling the vibes just simulating to the trade deadline around that time and then making a trade I didn't pass the trade deadline did I I did I'm so used to the simulating that I, you know what? Okay, hold on. Trade deadline off. Can I trade now? I probably not because I already pat. I knew it. I'm going to turn it off for future years. Screw it. With that being said, I'm actually just going to turn off trade logic if I wanted to make a trade. Let me see what's going on around here. Oh my God, the Clipper. Oh, I knew they were terrible. Yeah, they literally just signed Andre Miller. They're terrible. Yeah, you know, they, they should be number one for Dwight Howard. The Knicks are terrible. They were in the finals. All right. Assuming that all these players are already on long term contracts, anyways, I think I'll just save the trades of the offseason then. But yeah, um, actually, no, because Allen Houston could already have an impact on a team. I sold, but I'll just like write stuff down that Knicks should get 
get picks from like a certain team or something. But where can Allen Houston go? I will say his contract is terrible, but in this video, I'm not trying to pay too much attention to contracts. We, we're here for the script. Well, first and foremost, actually, rookie year, Melo Hawks are uh, 45 wins, best in the East. That's really nice to see. Spurs already clinched the playoffs. Lakers a little bit more mediocre. I actually, the Lakers got Shaq and Kobe for a minute. Neither one is leaving. Well, the Wizards, dang, the Wizards are right next to the playoffs. Bet I'm about to commit a criminal criminal offense. Carl Malone to the Wizards. I'm not going to, like, when this happens, they, they probably just give the Knicks some, like, maybe a protected first or something. Nothing crazy. I believe he's on a one-year deal. I know it affects the cap space. Technically, this shouldn't be allowed, but I don't care. Any other scrub teams that should be giving up by now? Uh, Jalen Rose is 31. The Bulls aren't that terrible, though. They're, like, in the range, like, oh, snap, in a, a year or two, they might be okay. But is he expiring? No, he's on a long-term deal. So we'll leave him around for a little bit longer. The Knicks are just, they're just terrible. I don't know when how this happened so fast. The, the Pacers have nobody. Flippers are terrible and have nobody. I mean, Andre Miller literally just signed there, so I'm not going to trade him. Jazz are doing what they're here to do, lose. Nuggets are disappointing. I was about to say, let's trade it for a point guard for them, but they're they're 11th, dog. They're not making the playoffs. Oh, this would have been interesting too. The Rockets are ninth, but I'm looking for a big trade for them, so I'm going to let them rock for a second. LeBron's Heat are also almost in the playoffs. Dang, Karan Butler is on the bench, but I'm not going to lie. There's really no other way. I don't want LeBron playing point guard this early in his career. I've been waiting and wanting to trade Paul Pierce to the Bucks, but there's really no point. They have Michael Red already. They actually would need another position, like a center. They need a center. Yeah, they have Kendrick Perkins starting, I think. I, I was about to say, let's do something crazy and make Ben Wallace make his way to the Bucks, but they just got run our test on a five-year really, really like nice deal. Also, he does not shoot enough. This man averaged 20 points at a point in his career. Why is Ron Artest not putting ball in hoop? Hey, Chauncey Billups a little bit more as well, but like Ron Artest should be hell at 80. I think I saw a thing about how Ron Artest was out there like playing with a weight vest in practice. All right, no more trade deadline ever again, and we're good for now. Shaq wins MVP, LeBron rookie of the year, D Wade six man. Oh, I forgot. And you know what's crazy? I forgot to talk about the magic. This is okay. Let's just let's just go to him. Zach Randolph most improved because they have nobody over there in uh, Portland. He's become a GOAT. Out to Greg Pop. Here's the first team. LeBron's already there. Second team, Gary Payton, who actually I didn't talk about went. Oh, no. Well, he just stood with Seattle, I guess. And he is still cooking. And they also got Elton Brand over there. What? I'm OK with this. The clip. Honestly, it's better off for the Clippers. They weren't going to win nothing with Elton Brand. Unless, I mean, hell, I don't know. Could have traded Kurt Thomas, too. He's still on a contract. It'll be all right. Jesus, Shaq and Kobe led the league in soaring. Then LeBron, Tim Duncan and Pierce. Rebounds with Shaq, Ben Wallace, Tim Duncan, Yao and Garnett. Assists, Kidd, Peyton, Nash, Williams and Terry. Steals, kid, block, Shaq. Why did Elton Brand average that many blocks? Uh, did he? Was he a shot blocker like that? Vince and Kobe led the league in field goal percentage. And Eddie House in threes. All right, in the playoffs. The Bucks are out of here. Yada, 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 yada. Yeah, if you're a failure, we'll figure out eventually. Okay, Spurs and Lakers. And Heat Orlando. The, the Hawks. Mellows Hawks lost in the first round to Baron Davis. And Alonzo Mourning. Actually, old Alonzo Mourning went back. I didn't even realize that. Unless I made the trade and I forgot already. They also had old Arvidas Sabonis. Also, so the Nets lost in the first round with Kid, but they, they did lose to uh oh yeah 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 right so some most of them about the Magic who were actually in the conference finals it's Wade versus LeBron in their what first year yeah so they had you know Mike Miller who was cooking last year still starting and I I completely forgot I said something about Wade starting at point guard which he honestly still probably should but they also re-signed John Stockton so Wade has been coming off the bench he's averaging 20 in the playoffs and I'm not gonna change it now because they are cooking so yeah LeBron versus Wade and T Mac right now which is incredibly I, I'm I'm surprised he's even a higher seed than them. And then Shaq, Kobe, and Allen Houston against the Spurs. And don't worry, I didn't forget that the Knicks need some picks because, you know, bias. All right, the Lakers make it. Or the Lakers lose to the Spurs. It's not too surprising. It shows that they needed some help with Allen, but not enough help. And oh my God, he shot five for 24. That is one of the worst games I've ever seen in life. 24 shot attempts was the most he has attempted probably since he was on the Knicks. Yeah. Or no, no, this is Lakers because it says they played the Knicks like two days later. So or maybe it was. I don't know. It could have been before the trade. Either way, yeah, he, he hasn't attempted that much in a long time. And he hasn't missed this much probably since he was in kindergarten. He down one in the series. They tie it. Game seven, Miami. D-Wade versus LeBron. I just realized they're both in Florida. Jesus, the Heat are on a 19-0 run in the fourth. And it is still going. 
thing. Oh my God. This might be the most insane quarter run I've ever seen in life. I wonder when it'll be broken. Still no. Oh my God, 30, 32, and they finally score. They just lost the game in the fourth quarter. Oh my God. The Miami Heat are going, they're going to the NBA Finals against the Spurs. Man, they got Karan Butler at the four guarding Jermaine O'Neal. Old David Robinson against Tim Duncan. Nah, that's crazy. Joe Johnson against Manu. Two guys that actually had to fix their peak start end whatever because they both weren't getting better. And Eric Strickland against Tony Parker. Oh, God. Can LeBron do it? Year one LeBron. That is the most insane quarter run I have ever seen. I still can't believe that. And uh, no, he can't as of right now. Smoked in game one. Second game also smoke is lebron about to get swept by the spurs again for his first ever finals loss tim had 46 he finally won a game was this one close it actually was all right going back to simcast to be fair the simcast and the simulation really doesn't have much of a correlation like if i would have simcast that game it wouldn't have been close or well it maybe would have but it wouldn't have been nearly the same scores or whatever it's just it's all random Spurs win another one though now it, it's over dog it's he's not coming back 3-1 on this team right right he's not coming back 3-1 on this team oh my god lebron james 3-1 comeback first year the script would be scripting lebron is gonna force game seven 42 and seven here we go oh oh he's coming nope no oh. Uh, very bipolar game thus far. And yep, the Spurs are going to, wow. The Spurs are going to do it. LeBron had 37. Only Karan Butler scored in double digits. Good to know. Karan Butler probably will never be off this team. If you know what I'm saying, you're a pivotal core key piece. He's even assistant coach for the Heat now, like in real life. Tim Duncan, finals MVP. All right. So to the off season, yet again, John Stockton's, a, oh, he's not officially done. I mean, yeah, screw it. I'll just keep you around. Yep. Hakeem, you too. Why not? Matter of fact, any, yeah. Yeah, Scotty's out of here. Scotty and Michael are out of here, and David Robinson. But that's uh, that's probably it. Yeah, Dikembe, you could stick around. Robert Ori, why not? Oh, there goes Sabonis too. What? Scotty didn't make the Hall of Fame? Maybe he made it last year or something. That is hilarious. Jordan and uh, Jordan and Scotty get their jerseys retired. Maybe the same day. Who knows? Add one new team to the league. Interesting. I for I did I didn't forget about it, but I draft lottery. Oh man, for Dwight Howard. The Hawks have the second pick from Indiana. Don't know how they got that obviously trades are also a manual right now so like i literally nobody's making a trade unless i make it so this is from previous to the to the draft or previous to the you know you know what i'm saying the start of this league all right skip the lottery clippers hawks knicks jazz and trailblazers it is going to the bulls where did the bulls just jump up from was what they jumped up from 12 to number one and i think the hawks fell from two to six unless i'm the one tripping i don't know the chicago bulls will get dwight howard which is another center which means that hey tyson chandler there's got to be available because I'm definitely not drafting anybody else there. At least I don't think it would be rational, reasonable. I could get Lou Aldeng. I'll see. I did just remember just yet again. Also, I do take into account the Allen Houston's contract is garbage, even though I said I said I don't care about him. Uh, we'll let the Knicks get their pick this year as well as next year. And then like I was do two first, two seconds for a very future second round pick to the Knicks. There you go. And the Wizards pick is very good, so I'll make it a. Uh, I'll just make it two seconds for Carl Malone as well. All right, screw. We'll uh we'll, we'll protect some players real quick and then decide after that what to do with some of these uh you know stars that need to be traded uh why are they talking about releasing kevin is he a free agent or something okay he's a free agent that's why i like what the raptors are thinking they said hey we suck get rid of this dude he makes a lot of money and he's old i respect it although so does antonio davis what the hell why would matter of fact get rid of antonio davis too let the bobcats take him man if i'm thinking of a raptor as a raptor right now get these guys out of here oh man nets nets falling off pretty bad and they're trying to get rid of dikembe and yeah he's 38 and a 73 making 20 million fully understood all these make sense so far i don't i don't have any issues here will the bobcat select oh man all of these scrubs they got dikembe they got uh that's steve blake dang they let steve blake go that's tough they didn't really look it over to you know to a t i guess yo honestly it is the bulls are so lucky they moved up because man the, the all the way from the trailblazers the clippers have some of the worst rosters i've ever seen in life the pacers really do need a pick but i won't lie you know what knowing this draft might just say screw it don't trade for one uh ah, there's some decent players though they just need anybody thing is they need a pick and they lost their pick to the hawks um yeah they don't have anyone to give really there's no rational you know uh outcome where they get a pick they're just screwed because why would you give up lamar odom that's a good young player so and honestly i'm not gonna make any drastic moves for the kings i see that they are uh eighth they weren't very good they are very much so on the fringe of oh snap we should be giving up but we 
we also have a lot of hoopers i can't make everyone tank because not a lot of these drafts are good enough to where teams are going to get good off of the draft you might as well just stick with your 27 year olds that are going to be good for another six years so the raptors are very garbage but they only got the 11th pick because mo peterson was balling out so much i'm going to trade him to the hawks for the sixth pick i'm still as Woj would say i'm still figuring out the details but you know i, I think actually i really I, honestly i think that's just going to be it is it like an old player they wouldn't want antonio antonio davis is too pricey dang and uh and the bobcats didn't even draft antonio that's hilarious yeah because i'm not swapping 11 for six plus mo pete so we're just gonna do mo pete for six maybe i'll throw in a uh shoot wow they have a de decent amount oh yeah from the uh from the vince carter trade okay i like what they got right now we're just gonna do this straight up we're just gonna do this straight up they get themselves a six pick stop asking me if i accept it i accept it it's me all right that's it for now yeah that's it for now it's 2004 nba draft the first overall pick chicago is gonna take dwight howard the second overall pick portland now with their team yeah they they just need whoever could come in here and get a bucket so i'm literally just gonna go through i don't know who's gonna be the best from here or whatever but a lot of guys have decent potential i'm surprised josh smith isn't supposed to be better to be honest with you considering though that he's unanimous number two matter of fact i feel like luau deng doesn't even feel like a reasonable player that could have like you know taken over the league with all due respect to luau deng hooper great guy he's more of like a you know second or third option but who in a weird twisted universe feels like they could have you know done a little bit more when i write this script is either jr smith or josh smith josh smith already had his hands on a franchise though look oh or sean livingston without the uh the injury man there's actually a lot of good players in here i'm gonna do something real interesting though let's let jr smith see if he could save this is portland right go with jr smith the new york knicks thing i could have put him on new york that's tough i know a mecca oak for one rookie of the year and everything but that's not happening either and they still got latrell over there but yeah i'm gonna go with the next best thing for them but i not pick Gudala yet yeah andre Gudala. dang or low key you know what low key nothing oh like Gudala. whoa what the oh i don't have control of the bob hey that's cool that's a good pick they could have picked the mecca oka for again he wouldn't win rookie of the year oh no wonder he won rookie of the year because they were an expansion team i never thought about that wow the clippers are just terrible they're gonna take the next player that i think especially with they already have andre miller so i'm not gonna pick sean livingston the next player i would take to potentially you know with a lot of potential is uh josh smith I might have to bolster his up a little bit because he's usually way better now the raptors have two of their one of their two picks right here so they already have a okay team but they really need everything except for a two or a wing because they have steven jet really they just need everything i think raptors is a good fit for a mecca okafor just get you a solid player but point guard album nah let's give toronto the best the best potential player sean livingston was looking like a dog before he smoked his uh his knee or whatever everything almost had to amputate his leg go with sean livingston there they said with a freakish build that's actually pretty accurate way to describe him especially for that era okay right here i'm actually cool with going to mecca okafor next to uh andre karolinko or because karolinko nah i'll go with a mecca i'll go with a mecca there sacramento okay so they you know i didn't move this pick a mecca would have been a great pick here but you know who else would be a good pick at least solid kind of like a you know every other place they already have scoring at every other position the only one they're missing that maybe you know maybe try to mix stuff up more because they really don't need anything else is uh yeah go ahead and get a uh, i saw him al jefferson right here the denver nuggets they literally do not have a point guard right now might have one in free agency either way um well he's looking right at me i guess let's go with uh let's let's go with devin harris all nba all nba potential wow okay celtics paul pierce antoine walker you know what's crazy i was about to say let's trade this pick away from them for whatever but just give me whoever says they have the highest potential jameer nelson let's let's potentially start this rebuild over here and paul pierce might get moved in a different deal him and antoine walker because they might not have hope right now and it might not even be to the ray allen team it just might be somewhere else maybe i got some good ideas actually okay so the raptors are back yet again so they just got um whoever i sean livingston right a nice score from this era yeah let me get him and kevin martin overall aside are honestly interchangeable in this matter but uh yeah bring them bring them men gordon over there pistons they really don't need this pick they shouldn't even be in this position but since they are screwed i feel like the next highest ceiling player is probably a kevin martin so i'll draft him there i was gonna uh, trevor reese is a good fit too and honestly after that just ball we ball we're, we're getting too we're getting too deep in i'll see yeah, the raptors got a lot of second round picks i think just this guy and yeah that's really it oh they got hasen june or whatever his name is yeah screw it yeah, you can sign him Dorel Wright, elite role player from the past 15 years or whatever 15 years he played 10 maybe is that just bob pettit Sasha voyacic goaded royal ivy another og player and the knicks got a good couple of these too that's um dave debusher or something bill bradley one of them old knicks players i'm pretty sure ironically enough and uh jackie butler yeah i don't know okay there goes some team 
game options. Are they are they not on automatic? Oh snap. Maybe they're just all getting declined. Yeah, hey, team options automation is on. So they just don't want any of these players. I actually agree with most of these being declined just because there's not a lot of money in this league yet. So let it rock. Yeah, a lot of these guys are pretty expendable. Every single one got declined team option. My God. Dang, no Brian Scalabrini qualifying. They don't want to give no qualifiers either. I'm not mad at it. But Kevin Garnett is out here, right? It looks like he wants to re-sign with the Wolves, but he does have offers, which I can, you know, think about from the Heat. Clippers, Pacers. That's the only ones currently. Dang, does he want to go to LeBron? Oh, yeah, I totally agree with that. As a matter of fact, the second that KG, he is going to re-sign with the Wolves, I'm assuming. Actually, no, I could just decline the contract. You know, KG's going to go to the Heat. That is confirmed. Kyle Gasol wants to stay with the Grizzlies. That's fair. Tony Parker wants to stay with the Spurs. Completely fair. You want to ring. Kenya Martin wants to stay with the Nets. They gave him a bag. Karolinko, no offers is kind of interesting. Mike Miller is about to leave the Magic for the Cavaliers. The Magic aren't even offering him. Uh, I disagree with that. I'm going to offer Mike Miller back. He's only 24. He should be a pretty decent part of the future for this team. Matter of fact, I'm going to give him a five. I've done something pretty interesting. I've offered the Jazz to sign the current reject of the league. Well, actually, one of them being their own player, Karolinko. I've offered them to re-sign him for a few years, as well as Manu Ginobili had no offers, so he could pull up over here as well if he wants. Let me see uh, the Timberwolves, right? So they, I'm assuming, the, yeah, the Heat didn't get KG. Very attractive destination for a Miami who has the money to sign him. Didn't realize they did, but they do. Timberwolves, hop off. Let the Heat sign him. I'm gonna make sure that he ain't signing nobody either. Yeah, they, they, they've actually signed nobody at all. So uh, yeah, perfect. If KG the super bag, we'll even throw him, uh, just give him the super bag. Kevin Garnett, welcome to Miami. Anybody else? Though? Steve Nash still out of here, huh? First of all, why are the Heat offering him? Don't know how that would work. Do they do they have money for that? No, 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 they don't. They don't. He, he's going back to Dallas and it, it makes sense. He shouldn't leave Dirk. I know real life he went to Amari, whatever the hell happened there, but it shouldn't. Screw it. Let's give Jay Williams. How he how'd he play in his career thus far? 14. Not bad, actually. Not pretty solid. You know what? Screw it. Let's give him a long-term deal over there in Indiana. They have nobody except for, well, him and Lamar Odom now. Also, Earl Jenkins is out here getting offers since I signed him to the Sixers all them years ago. Yeah, sure. All this stuff. This is all cool. Yeah, they can do what they want from here on out. Let me see KG over there. Look at that, man. Jeez Louise. But yeah, the Spurs lose money, but they didn't offer him. And, you know, I, I got a, you know, player empowerment, you know? There is definitely a few moves that need to happen a few teams that need to give up on certain players i'm making all the moves happen that in real life don't happen and you're like oh why didn't our team go and get that first round pick the losing kg dog wally zerbiak's a really solid asset averaged 24 last year and on top of that he's an 86 but hey the timberwolves didn't make the finals like how bron did without any second star really right you know what this is actually a pretty solid trade for the rocket oh who's m taylor yep maurice taylor making a lot of money for no reason catchings making yeah this is perfect oh but dang i don't know there's a lot of hey you, you gotta weigh your options if you're the rockets right because you either get wally zerbiak or you can go and get yourself a paul pierce who's actually a lower overall but he's he's got more dog he's paul pierce you know what celtics are in a much better position and actually when you really look at it they're really not much different than the what's it called are uh the uh the, the timberwolves are you know what screw it well you know what the rockets just drafted josh childress 14th overall uh don't know how he'll turn out well, you know uh they're gonna get josh childress one of them salary fillers we'll give them the better one of the two well i mean they're both trash though to be fair those two i'm not gonna lie you're gonna have to give up a pick haul for paul pierce so you can go top three protected just in case things go wrong but 206 you go you don't you go top three protected all of those years and 07 just no protection i would give even give even further future picks but you can't really do that in 2k you can't go like eight years in the future only like five so screw it we'll go three first round picks and josh childress for paul pierce and you know what i would throw an Antoine Walker, but I can't. I, I could throw in a shoot. I don't know. Dang, Nick Collison's only 23. Nah, they need to keep him around, man. That's a good young piece for no reason. Screw the second round pick. I'm trying to make this work so I can give him another player. 12,000 more than allowed. All right, screw it. Yeah, I don't care. You don't need Tony Delk, dog. We'll trade second round picks. There you go. Make it even. Paul Pierce is now. I, hey, the, to be fair, the Rockets are in dire, and I mean dire need of something like that. They now have Yao Ming, Steve Francis, Quentin Richardson, Paul Pierce. Very good lineup now. Kurt Thomas is our Kenny Thomas. Sorry, I didn't, uh, did not know that was Kenny Thomas and not Kurt. Let's start the season at the very least and then check through. So also still Antoine Walker might get moved. So how is like, you know, the 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 76ers, my bad, have not seen much success through all of this. If it's possible, let's send the let's send uh, Antoine Walker to be a four alongside Allen Iverson and Vince Carter. You know, Antoine alongside Charles Barkley is another one of the absolute worst. Also, Carl Malone signed here. Uh, one of the absolute worst three point shooters, uh, like volume wise ever. We're going to go.
go these three scrubs for Antoine Walker and uh, an 09 first. He needs to have some sort of leverage to it. Still an 85. Dang, he's actually very good. I'm going to throw in a uh, throw in a second. You really, man, the, the, the league is getting, you know what I'm saying? And man, watch out for the Pistons because this team probably next year, if they don't do nothing right. Matter of fact, who did I draft them? Oh, Trevor Reese was there. I could have sworn I drafted them um, Kevin Martin, right? Was that a different team? Oh, yeah. Oh, they got both. Where did Trevor Reese get drafted? 18th? Oh, not bad. That's, those are some good picks. But wait, if you guys want, you know what I'm saying, a last chance before everything goes downhill. I'm not sure, though. Me personally, if I was a Pistons fan, I would not be confident. They have been very mediocre. But at the same time, it's like I, Ron Artest just learned how to shoot. Let's see if I can make some shake. And a very, very affordable contract as well, Wally Zerbiak. I don't think Keith Van Horn's going to find a spot. Yeah, throw Corliss Williamson for Wally Zerbiak. And then throw in a... We'll, we'll do a top 10 protected first as well as a 08 first. And a second for Wally Zerbiak. That's it. He is now a Piston. And they've got themselves a big four again. They also should have had Rashid, but he's not in 2K. I could see like a star for star trade happening this year. But for now, just simulate the season or to the... Well, I guess there's no trade deadline, so it's not going to ask me to stop. But once the All-Star game kind of rolls around, I'll look over some stuff. The Pistons are still going straight mediocre right now. They are such a disappointment. Matter of fact, can I like try and help them out a little bit or something? Like they should be way... They were a force for a while in the East, and this is just disappointing. Oh, well, Ron Artest is inefficient. Kevin Martin's actually playing a lot and is also inefficient because he's young, to be fair. And yeah, Ben Wallace is known to be inefficient, but he is... Man, he is very, very inefficient. Can I see his shot chart? Yeah, he's missing from the paint, taking some middies and missing. It's just, he should not be taking middies, though. I'm not going to lie. There's nothing to do to help them. They are just trash, unless they figure it out. Matter of fact, fire their coach. Rick Carlisle. Don't fire their coach. Oh, my. How are you losing with Rick Carlisle? That's one of the best value coaches you could get. All right, let's see. The, the things should be very clear at this point. I've been controlling this league for a while, setting the script. Okay, so the Knicks are garbage. The Clippers expectedly are garbage. Josh Smith should be decent, though. I didn't update anybody's tendencies. Man, and yeah, his, his should be updated. I'm not going to lie, Doug. Why are you not shooting more? Bro, Josh Smith at a 65 shot tendency is insane. There's never been a point in his career where he was like that. J.R. Smith, I'm trying to make him a star. Sean Livingston at a 49. And Darko, too. Oh, man, you're supposed to be a star. He's also shooting terrible percentages, but hey, you're supposed to be a star, dog. Uh, man, this is not a good look for the brand, but yeah, I updated everything else except for their tendencies, though, to be fair. Oh my, and there goes these these gods. Come on, men. Hey, Al Jefferson got dog at least. He, oh, he doesn't play much, I guess. The Hawks are number one in the East this year again, but the Heat are right behind that, and it is impressive that the Hawks are this good. They do have a great all around team, and actually, Mo Pete, who oh, he is a small forward. I thought he was a two. I'm gonna chain him to a two and see if they want to start him. He might go down by like one overall, knowing 2K. Yep, there it is, and yeah, the team. Teams that are tanking are indeed tanking. They were bound for this. Any oh, I just realized, yeah, the Pacers didn't have Reggie Miller. That's true. But he was also very old and retired by this point already. Or this year was the year he was retiring. And yeah, Timberwolves setting their priorities straight. Just straight tanking. The Hornets might need to give it up. They are garbage, dog. There's nothing to save this team, really, except for just giving up. And the Kings, yet again, are a lost cause. They even signed Earl Jenkins. I think this offseason, I'm going to focus on uh, on them because I don't know who else, who else could possibly trade for Peja or Peja is really the only one I think might eh and they're both pretty same age, pretty young. Is there any team that's in like dire need of three point shooting? This Peja might be the best at it right now. Oh, well, the Knicks, but yeah, not uh, excluding the trash teams. Uh, oh, the Wizards would be interesting. They have Gilbert. That, that would be kind of cool. Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, because he needs a he needs a, another star on his team. The thing is, none of these players are the point where like, oh, they need to be traded for like a haul of young picks. And it's not like they need the Rudy Gobert trade package, which then again, he shouldn't have warranted anyways. So I don't feel terrible just trading them for picks and salary filler because it's better than just being better than they should be anyways they don't have any uh any good young they have tony allen okay 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 that the salaries match up i guess they have a lot of cap space this could be very good for a for a gilbert arenas team let's throw away an unprotected uh this this one doesn't have you know i i feel like always the most leverage is in the later picks but let's throw one and one top five protected i think three might be a little bit much for page plus i'm throwing in their pick that they just made which is tony allen a great defender at this point they might think he actually is a little more in the tank like maybe they'll be able to shoot a jump shot one day but just like ben simmons will learn their fate soon so yeah screw it Peja, two picks uh is there anybody else i could throw in i was gonna i was thinking about throwing in jared jeffries that's kind of cool this is cool i'll do this there you go so the wizards put themselves into a little bit better contention we'll see if it matters one of these years i think Peja was signed for multiple years right so that that should be pretty cool and yeah they instantly put him at the four which is expected and yeah he's got three years left that's that's worthwhile i actually goes up at the four so i'm just gonna move him there and he's from serbia too i didn't even know pay I, I mean i just knew he was 
four and him and gilbert is a, a pretty interesting duo and they still have stackhouse who's getting buckets i already know he's averaging 20 because he always averages 20 there you go they're getting firepower over here if they could just sign like a decent center or maybe trade for one i don't know do they i don't i think i usually use all the cap space oh wow dwight howard and tyson chandler's bulls are in the uh are doing great i'm actually not gonna mess with them wow i'm happy i didn't trade jalen rose from them because they are already top three they technically though oh they they should be eight right now but the division thing is carrying them so i guess that's kind of overstated you know i was about to say i wouldn't make any trades but i might trade tyson chandler away from them let's see if a, a team needs a center there's another like contending team needs a center instead of a wing i would trade that for uh for the bulls just to see if they can you know what i'm saying gear themselves up for the future better honestly it could be i still haven't moved d way to point i'm about to do that right now actually yeah never mind i'm not i'm not trading mike miller from the, the magic or two they're they're too solidified in their ways i feel like although them with tyson chandler would be kind of insane they kind of wanted to get rid of mike miller anyways i might do it you know rather than trading tyson chandler there's just a wing i could get for the bulls that isn't you know bound to a uh that i gotta trade tyson for him dang why is jay williams at the two you know what the new orange hornet sorry why am i talking like this yeah, let's talk let's talk with chicago jamal oh he's 32 okay bet that's that's good to know so yeah yeah very low cost player right hey man i'm building my script making the league interesting go ahead Let, let's see how much uh, money does he make nine million bet so does this guy oh he makes five yeah close enough i'm gonna do the next two bulls picks for uh jamal mashburn throw these two guys in there to you know round out the salary jamal mashburn a star a star player you know a star wing to the bulls to join dwight howard they're obviously already surpassing the tank phase of things he could play the two and pj brown is also 35 how many years he got left dang pj brown three years eight million per you know what me personally if i'm a team i'm not trading for him but he is making eight million a year averaging seven points well uh, if there's a team in dire need maybe dang the eddie jones thing has not worked over there in uh in phoenix but they are in the playoffs but they're let's be honest they're not winning nothing they might have to give up soon mavericks are falling off too 30 wins dog jesus keith van horn's making 15 million a season yeah he's sticking over there i don't know who the hell and zach randall's about to get his bag matter of fact this dude Derek anderson oh my god he's making 10 i was about to say man if one of these guys on a low contract putting up good numbers and it's old man they could get you know just traded for a young player on a good team honestly i, I lost where pj brown was i was about to trim the net but he's a hornet right there you go you know what he's 35 nobody wants this scrub all right we're done lebron wins mvp in his second season he didn't win it last year right i think it was shaq yeah th he wins mvp in his second season though once again to reiterate dwight wins rookie of the year ronald murray six man ben dpoi fred jones most improved okay i guess walt moore coach of the year don't know actually you could just click this the hawks coach nice obj kid james carter and duncan first team mcgrady iverson marion brand garnett second team elton brand cooking though third team parker richardson pierce martin o'neill and then defense there you go ron artes sean marion joining the obvious ones well i mean they're obvious in themselves and yada yada bada bing luau josh smith okafor iggy dang jr made the second team he was not cooking as oh he averaged 18 yeah no i have no concerns about him even this dude kirk snyder averaged 14 i think every single player on these all nba all rookie teams averaged double digits they were all cooking man luau dang might have been a worthwhile pick look at him let's see league leaders kobe led in points uh ben wallace and rebounds jay kid and assists steals kobe blocks shack field goal percentage vince yet again up there and uh kobe in three point percentage the nets grizzlies magic suns pistons wizards supersonics lakers are out of their second seeded lakers loose to the rip hamilton chris bosh led nuggets wow by one point in game seven and seattle also got upset in game seven that is uh elton brand in them and gary payton who's still cooking at his old age lost to J jason richardson and antoine jameson and basically just the warriors i mean this is pretty accurate to life although they did they did lose gilbert who i couldn't even resign if i wanted to i could have just forced him back if i felt like it but uh yeah those were the only two upsets i'm pretty sure the rockets sixers nuggets and heat are out of here the heat lose to the Bulls. Jamal Mashburn, Dwight Howard in them. Dwight is now in his rookie season to make the conference finals. And look at the Bull. And I and they got Eddie Curry. Dang, I forgot they had Eddie Curry. They got a man. They got a boatload of centers over there. And then uh yeah, Golden State was uh they were actually you know the upper seed in that. Hold on real quick though. Atlanta and wait, Atlanta smoked Philly, who even made that trade for what's his name Antoine Walker, who led them in scoring in this game. But Vince Carter out here selling. And they had Carl Malone old self, who he actually played pretty well. So Carmelo Anthony 
Sweeney, Sharif Abdurrahim, Jason Terry, Chris Kamen against the Bulls. Pretty nice, even match team compared to, man. And then there's the Spurs. There, Then there's the Spurs who, they got Charlie Ward, the two, James Posey, the three, but they got Jermaine O'Neal, Tim Duncan. They would deserve another player if they weren't already insane with a big three, hella big four, because Posey's an 82. That's like a top 50 player in this league. And will they lose to the, the Warriors of all teams? Oh, no. Uh, and the Bulls are going to the finals. So we will have Tyson Chandler for some reason is starting right now. You know, if that's the case, if they're going to like be confused about who's going to start, you know, those are two great big men. Just give them both the power forward tag. Because I mean, hey, the, the Spurs are starting two big men as is. Two pretty big dogs. Yeah, Dwight. Uh, and then also Eddie Curry. Where's Eddie Curry at? Come on now. Oh, he already has it. But uh, they're not start. They're not starting them both together anyways. They don't want to. But yeah, it, it's an option. Spurs versus Bulls. Game one, year three. It is two minutes to go. I think the Bulls are at the line right now. They just made the first. Never mind. It just negated the entire process of free throws. That's in a Mashburn. Their new, you know, leading wing score. He'll get the screen from Eddie Curry. Mashburn goes right. He'll pull up. A pull up three is off. Rebound by the Spurs. Jermaine O'Neal. Pass up to Bowen. Bowen now. Between the legs a few times. And yeah, they got Jamal Crawford, a point guard. Haven't talked about it much, but it is what it is. Brown now. He's trying to get it down to Duncan. Duncan guarded by Chandler. A solid size matchup. And he'll foul in one. Duncan potentially to take a three four point lead. Jalen Rose. The screen by Eddie Curry. Jalen goes right to the basket. He passes it down. Unless that's Marshall. Marshall back out to Crawford. Jamal. He'll get a screen from Dwight Howard. Jamal pass it. Open shot. Jalen Rose. It is off. The Bulls, crazily enough. Hey, you got to give me my props for helping out the Bulls a little bit because they were supposed to be struggling until Derrick Rose. But now they got Dwight Howard and oh my God, Jamal Mash for an N1. Poised. Poised to get to the basket. Pass into Tony Parker. Parker. He'll get the screen on the right side from Jermaine O'Neal. Tony has got a money mid-range shot and he will go all the way to the basket. He's got that as well. Tony Parker, short body self, gets his gets his makes his way all the way there Jalen rose point forward back up the other way screens off ball by dwight howard and danielle dwight will set the screen now for Jalen rose rose will go right rose all the way he didn't have to pass it to dwight but he did and dwight still makes it in a god tier interior finisher who is also shorter than you'd feel like dwight is what 6 10 bruce bowen for three completely contested rebound again by dwight mashburn 22 seconds to go with the basketball he's making his way to the basket he passes it back out wide open Jalen rose and Jalen Rose sold, but he gets another rebound. The team gets another board. Jalen Rose in the post. He'll take a fadeaway, and he misses again. Jalen Rose with the all-time sell. Three missed shots wide open. Tim Duncan will hit the first. He's getting his MVP chance, and Tim will hit the second as well. Dwight Howard. Jalen Rose is still in the game, so you're still in for treacherous times. Oh, my God. The fadeaway three. What are they doing? It doesn't matter. That man, Jalen Rose, they had great shots and he just sold so yeah it's over the bulls are ha have pretty steady control this game but the spurs are still right there to strike and they will not strike nothing shout out to Lil Yachty. bulls another game where they are leading and going to take another win jalen rose with 30 redeeming himself that's that blunder i did not expect this team what's crazy is when i made that trade to this team they were at 34 wins like in like a fake second seed they're not hitting a shot oh yeah the bulls are gonna win another one it looked like wait hold on oh might have something decent here Oh, no, the Bulls just have it. Screw it. I guess I got to watch free throws. So if I sim cast it, they're just going to turn the ball over or something. Man, if Jalen Rose misses some free throws right in front of our eyes after what we've seen earlier and the Spurs had a game winner, that would be generational. Okay, he hits the first. As long as he hits the second one, I'm out of here. Oh, it's, it's shaky, but it's good. Should be over with. Yep. That is it. Bulls are going to win yet another game. Mashburn and Rose combined for 40. Tyson and Dwight combined for, what is that, 15 rebounds, like 20 points almost. 3-1 to one lead for the Chicago Bulls. What a turn of events. Dwight Howard, rookie season. Dang, the Spurs took a game. I am rooting for the Bulls now. I can't lie. Dethroning these gods amongst men. Bulls cooking, not letting up. And the Chicago Bulls are your NBA champions yet again. They get their first since the Jordan era. And hell, they haven't got one since. So yeah, this is, this is a pretty big accomplishment Jalen Rose wins finals MVP he did not qualify for three-point percentage and thank God he didn't because that man could not have shot for his life yeah, they were actually joking he's a solid three-point shooter he, he shot 41 percent from three in the playoffs at least and uh yeah they did it wow can I can I see real quick Bulls playoff stats yeah just look at this Jamal Mashburn did lead him and Jalen Rose that became a new duo then you got Dwight man they just they're just doing it better than some other teams are man I don't know what else to say player retirements all right John Stockton's done Hakeem but didn't even know he's on the magic he's done Carl Malone's done I'm gonna let Vlade get out of here if the, unless I 
I see like a 78 overall. Uh, 76, who's that? Charlie Ward. Yeah, screw it. You get out of here. Too. Actually, you know what? He's a spur. I won't act like I'm... Eh, he's a free agent. John Stockton, Carl Malone, Sean Kemp. All together. I didn't even realize Sean Kemp retired. Dang, I could really revoke the rule that makes players not be able to come out of high school anymore. I'm going to leave it. I'm leaving everything as, as history made it. You know, at least in terms of rules and all that. And the draft lottery. Now, any teams? Nope. Everything's looking clean slate. Every team's got their pick. This is the draft lottery for Chris Paul. First, Clippers. Then the Knicks, Raptors, Timberwolves, and Pacers. Let's see who's going to get it. It is the Raptors. Then the Knicks. The Clippers dropped to four. So the Raptors, I'm pretty sure, are pretty clean slate and, ra and roster themselves, right? They are, uh, yeah, yeah, they, they just need anybody. Well, they got Sean Livingston. You know, he's a tall dude. He can end up playing the two if needed, but they also got Ben Gordon. I'm going to just get to the draft and then we'll, you know, talk trades after. But for now, let's just, you know what I'm saying, get to cooking. Chris Paul out here. I think it's without a doubt not going to be stupid here. He goes number one. New York Knicks, number two. Now, Bear, uh, I mean, uh, Darren Williams. I was saying Baron Davis. It's weird. It says he's going to be a starter, but this guy was a generational, like, talent point guard. Like, not generational. That's a little bit far, but all star, all NBA talent point guard. So if I wanted, you know what I'm saying? At least, I mean, he's already in 81. Now, how are the Knicks looking, actually? Oh, well, I got to go to their trade thing. Um, Yeah, they just need anything. So him and Iguodala would be a solid duo. Shout out to Nate Robinson. That's the player that they actually did get from this draft. But yeah, I think it's obvious. Oh, Monte Ellis, I could guarantee you right now. I don't know why he's rated so low. He might have been, a, I think it was a second round pick. He will definitely be getting picked higher up. Hey, Gerald Green, I might just turn him into a star too. Dang, Bynum's all the way down here too. That's stupid. Let's go Darren Williams to the Knicks. Dang, he was 21. Hey, I ain't gonna make the mistake though. Marvin Williams is not him. Cool dude though. Pretty solid player. I, I loved having Marvin Williams as every, like my league I would ever do, I'd have like a nice stretch for him. Gershon Yabusele. I want to say PJ Tucker, maybe Maurice Harkless. Guys like that, you know, if you're really getting your know, rich out there, maybe a little Tobias Harris, but Tobias Harris was always so slow in 2K. Okay, Timberwolves, number three. So the Timberwolves are, yeah, they, they're also clean slate. Just anybody, anybody, really. And the best scoring potential out here. Now, I know also I just saw Andrew Bogut was all the way down there as well, who was actually number one. He does have Tyson Chandler all-star potential, but you know, eh. Jesus, why does David Lee look like that? Without much thought, I am going Danny Granger to them. The Clippers also clean slate, but they have Josh Smith. They kind of need, well, a Joe Johnson for their Josh Smith. Raymond Felton's also a solid player out here, but he's not, you know, a high potential guy. So David Lee does not make sense next to Josh. I think I really rock with a, I saw a tweet the other day and it was, um, who was an NBA player that never made an all-star team that has an elite highlight reel. It was like circulating a lot on Twitter and first per swear to God, first person I thought of for some reason, cause I always think of him when I think of player who got snubbed from all-star team was Monte Ellis. Just a pure hooper. One of the best scorers of really hit like the generation for a while. No, he didn't win nothing, but you know, there's a lot of circumstantial stuff. But yeah, Monte Ellis will go right here. We'll make him the uh, score alongside Josh Smith. Two high school drafted players, right? I'm not sure. I know Lou Will was high school. I'm not sure if Monte was. Pacers already set for a while with Lamar Odom at the three, Jay Williams at the one. You know what? This looks like the perfect team. Go ahead and get you uh, ooh, Andrew Bogut or David Lee's not a bad one either. Actually, you know what? Man, yeah, it even says ceiling to Kevin Matumbo. That's another man. I'm gonna go Bogut though. I'm gonna go the former number one overall pick goes here. Give him a big man. Celtics just need anything. They're restarting. Let's give them the nice back to the basket, high potential score, Mr. David Lee. Hornets, I mean, they could keep Baron Davis around for a little while. They don't have to potentially, you know, just give up. He could be around till he's like 32. I don't know when he's going to fall. If I see him falling off though, yeah, he's going to get gone. And no, I'm not going to bring Raymond Felton. Actually, Raymond Felton went to the Bobcats, not the Hornets. I think Marvin Williams was the Hornets though, right? You know, they're going to need their center as well. I'm going to go ahead and do a slight reach and give them Andrew Bynum. Kings kind of semi restarting. Everybody so, no, just restarting really. Mike Bibby is another guy that could stay around for a while if he wants, but look at how old all these guys are. And you know, we're kind of running out of assets here. I did just see they have Al Jefferson already. I keep getting tempted by Gerald Green. This is going to be the one. Gerald Green is going to, you know, I'll make sure he turned to a star there. At least some decent, maybe like a nice 83. Jazz are actually kind of decent. They even got a Mecca from last year, Ginobili, Karolinko. It's more so like a just best player available kind of thing. You know what? Marvin Williams, all-star potential. I might have to do it to him. He's ranked this highly in the, in the Draft Express rank. Let's go Marvin Williams to the Jazz. It's actually one of the only positions they need still. Bobcats, I don't know how the hell they didn't get worse. How are you this high up in the draft? You know what? Let's give them, and no, they're not getting Remy Felton. Give me somebody over here that can chuck up a couple shots, man. Where is he? And then I might be done, honestly. I might put Raymond Felton somewhere else, but where is he, dog? I didn't put Lou Will anywhere yet. Come on, man. Did I miss him? I probably missed him. There he is. Lou Will, chuck some shots, man. I, I saw Chris Broussard said to say that Lou Will was a, is a shot first guy would be an understatement. That is hilarious. Oh, this is perfect. Trailblazers need a point guard. There you go. Let me end off my uh, my reign of terror. Give them Mr. Raymond Felton, Mr. Top 5 pick, and uh, yeah, get me out of here. So 
uh, a mediocre draft, but a, a, a maybe a you know impactful one. So I didn't see no obvious trades or nothing around this time. But uh, oh, actually, real quick, okay, yeah, see, look, nice. Why is Andre Blotch, Damian Dotson? There's some nice second round picks in here. This is Cody Zeller, fake Cody Zeller. Ronnie Turioff, Knicks legend, Ronnie Turioff. Hello, Fran, aka Goron. Chuck Hayes, free throw garbage man. Brandon Bass, actually, Draymond. That's hilarious. Cause I definitely remember when Draymond started playing that I I thought he just looked like Brandon Bass. Like he just built like him. Oh man, look at that first team option to be accepted. Kendrick Perkins, high value. Dang, they want to get rid of Kirk? Why? I know, really, why? What the hell? Eh, I guess they got a decent amount of money in free agency. You know what? I'm gonna let them rock. I see the vision. It's not how many people want to play in Cleveland. Look at Michael Petras. Oh, Dwayne Wade's being accepted too. That's gonna be a surprise. Matter of fact, probably past the yeah, Bosch, LeBron. All right, let's go to free agency. So Shaq is out here. Now, me personally, I would love for Shaq to just go back to the Lakers, and which is, I think that's what he's doing. I mean, I know they lost in the first round, but the beef with Kobe doesn't exist. Hell, I'll, I'll create a beef with someone else that isn't Shaq and Kobe, like another duo or something. All right, so uh, who else? Sharif Abdurrahim wants to stay with the Grizzlies. Jason Rich from the Warriors. These are all cool with me. Bucks, Richard Jefferson. Are the Nets not offering him? Well, Tyson Chandler's out here as well. Someone's probably... Uh, well, all right, seriously, where are the Nets at? The Nets have offered nobody, and they just want to let... Oh, here we go. They're offering Gerald Wallace. I mean, that's cool, but yeah, I'm not letting the Nets go out. Unless they have money... Okay, they have a lot of money for someone else. Matter of fact, they could offer Shaq. No, that's just stupid. Why would he leave Kobe for this? I really don't know why they would just not offer Richard Jefferson. He's kind of a... He's kind of cooking. I mean, Jason Richardson is really cooking, though. See, this is the thing, right? He got a bag bag from them, right? I'll give him a bag bag over here and see if he even thinks about it. Let me see. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, he does. Because I do... But matter of fact, can't they just sign both? Sixers actually have some decent money as well. Now, this is a team other than... Uh, I, could, I could definitely make the cap space. Imagine the Sixers get Shaq, Iverson, Vince Carter. But nah, Kobe and Shaq won four straight. They're not... They're not quitting yet. You know, they had Antoine Walker who doesn't have an offer yet, but dang, I really wanted Tyson Chandler to go back to the Bulls. Are they not offering him? They're trying to offer Sharif Abdurrahim. You know what? I'm going to give the best offer Sharif Abdurrahim from the Sixers. Let them cook, right? Let them get Sharif Abdurrahim. Then let the Bulls keep Tyson Chandler. They just won the championship, right? Like he deserves whatever money. It doesn't matter what, what role he's in. Give him his bag. Joe Johnson should be just fine on the heat. Antoine Walker will figure it out. Michael Red to the Knicks. They might be trying to give up over here because they have been doing nothing in Milwaukee. Ray Allen might be getting a little blockbuster soon. Honestly, Michael Red is a solid value for them. I was gonna like, you know, we'll let them cook like how uh what's it, what's their names cooked with Manu Ginobili. If the Bucks don't want him back, they want to give up. I'm cool with that. Now the Cavs, are they trying to give up too? Ilgowskis is trying to leave, but I feel like they shouldn't, but they also should. I, yeah, yeah, they yeah, they should give up. Yeah, they should give up. This isn't gonna work. But only like fake give up low key. So this is the type of situation where I would actually re-sign him to potentially trade him but he's 30. there's a thing now you gotta ask okay what other team could use a center like Ilgowskis and do they have the money the Suns definitely needed a center but I don't think they'll have the money right no not even close yeah I could see why he hasn't got an offer yet you know what the offer is going to start piling in from teams that need him after day one probably after teams get disappointed by Sharif Abdurrahim like actually who's going to get disappointed the Pacers the buyer of the Bulls offering him you know what? if the Pacers were interested in Sharif I'm down to let them offer one of them one of those short-term bags to a uh, big Z I don't want them locked into big z for multiple give them like a, a two plus one with a team option let them let them cook with that that's perfect that's perfect right there and zebo you getting your bag hey he wants to go to the nuggets not the blazers what happened to the blazers what mistake are they making man i want him to cook with the blazers for a while and him behind bosh that's just ruined his career man but at the same time i got tyson chandler over there so you know what if, if zebo wants to win in there and they're undervaluing him let him cook man oh also he's a center uh, I guess, what do they got? Marcus Camby over there in, in Denver? He's pretty old. Okay, I respect it. I respect it. And you know what, man? For the last dance for the Pistons, go ahead and offer them. They have, they supposedly have some money. Go ahead and offer Antoine Walker for them, man. They they need to, it is pissing me off. They're doing nothing over there. I'll, I'll give him a, uh, he's always an expendable asset. They're actually gonna get a haul of picks from around the world probably once. So I'll even give him a four year. If that doesn't work, dog, f 585 plus overalls. Yeah, I don't know. Hey, I'm, I'm bulls biased now. Go ahead and resign Eddie Curry too. And speaking of that, actually, I'm gonna turn up the CPU resigning aggressiveness to like 63 or something. All right, let's see. Day one of free agency, they get Tyson and Curry back. Uh, the rest of the stuff we're gonna just let cook. You know what? Actually, let me go in. So Big Z's gone. I'm pretty sure. I think he signed with uh yeah the Pacers. Let me go to the Cavs real quick because they have been in hell since LeBron's not there. Ricky Davis is 25 and expires next year. Let's go ahead and talk to some teams about him. He's a great player, but they what what see where they? Because I mean I already know they're 
not gonna win win but yeah they were the ninth seed very very solid but man might need to see to you know think about it stuff again so ricky davis let's see he's got a decent amount of value a good player i think the warriors are gonna lose jay rich or they might have already lost him so how about we talk with them about ricky davis for but dang they're not good either though but they were in the playoffs with jay rich jay rich went where the nets yeah he yeah he took that bag let's get some ricky davis value dog let's see if he could cook over there they got a solid little squad and uh send this dude complete just salary space ricky is a good young player though so i mean <laughs> all they got is chris on freeze i don't know what else to do throw a top five protected and another top five protected in there and that's it ricky davis of the warriors boozer will just stick around for now i guess matter of fact let's really lock in for them tony delk has been sitting on the celtics for years and he's 31 though he's about to get worse i'm not gonna do him like that i was about to say let's give him another solid role player but never mind the knicks offer for michael red is still number one also joe johnson is still hoping on going back to the heat and you know what gary payton's getting really old over there in seattle a great player but getting very old whereas elton brand has been very very like a very very positive asset i, I don't know if it should be mike bibby or another one. i know there's another point guard out there that uh, i maybe had to trade there's baron davis as well but which one do i think would fit better next to uh baron uh what's his name elton brand yeah screw it i'll go baron davis let's see and trade him to uh thing is i don't even want them to trade gary payton i want them to stay competitive because uh, why would this team care to even get gary payton but do they have like a young uh beadrins is cool oh nate robinson's cool too honestly these two two picks this is honestly a solid return for baron he's only got one year left though i'll probably force him to re-sign him but you know i'll make this one lottery protected how about that there you go baron davis for this this haul screw it they could potentially see elton brand still contend for some years to come because he is really good in this speaking of contention amari stoudemire what's your like yeah his shot tendency is up he just i don't know they're just not doing anything over here eddie jones should be up a little more even if he's old don't care even penny even penny he's old too though my god and for the rest of this free agency stuff assuming the players go where i accept, expect them to go um don't really care oh spurs getting jam didn't they already have him oh zach randolph is going back to the blazers they offered him there you go man get your bag mm, gerald wallace the rockets makes sense yeah for the rest of this we ball all right cool thanks Shaq getting a little bit old kobe still cooking d wade up to a 92 about to be actually a pretty mediocre draft but you know tanking teams tanking yada 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 bada bing i think i'm starting to get to the point where maybe less moves can be made and more ball but hey i'm here to set the script 21 and 38 for the raptors let me check some stuff out okay heat are cooking nets are cooking richard jefferson back um who was it else? oh i got oh yeah they got both my plan worked they got both look at them cooking mediocre centers but they got a you know a big dog in a uh, kenyan martin and i would just move kenny to the center and oh they got wong zz too look at that man bulls are cooking yet again 76ers also oh i would say iverson go to the one but my lowest team is kind of mellowed out no pun dang magic six seed oh pistons cooking this year thank god cooking just enough to make the playoffs and the wizards man it is getting very competitive out there in the east the Cavs are still almost in the playoffs even without everybody because oh my god this team is tanking dang this team's actually pretty decent but kind of tanking oh thank god the bobcats are trash is here dog they need to lean into being garbage get you a top pick man there is some solid players this year though i won't lie and probably a good idea for the horn to do this too nate robinson's probably cooking right right what damn he is terrible <laughs> Oh my god he is terrible holy hell i kind of like this core over here in the clippers the second they get like a star you know we need the kd the 08 07 08 09 drafts to hit we need them even 10 11 because this one right here is trash i mean well we just need someone to get kd because 07 isn't that i mean it's al horford and mike conley they're pretty great and they're not starting danny granger in minnesota the raptors are moving stephen jackson to the three let either ben ben gordon or sean Livingston. i guess ben gordon is going to start sean could be the backup to cp3 and the mavericks fell off so bad oh yeah dirk about to be knock knock knocking at the trade door i don't know what i'm even saying but celtic should be worse than this but they're locked in i guess stupidly and the lakers actually eh, 34 isn't bad if you're 10 wins over 500 i can't say you, you're disappointing also jr smith jesus yeah there's so many teams taking in the west that jr smith and zach randolph led blazers are in here he's averaging 23 didn't even know the rocket signed stromo swift or stromo swift whatever but uh the solid signing and now well uh with paul pierce and all that they are second to utah utah what utah number one wait i didn't even realize i drafted them darko and Emeka, but darko and Emeka are both cooking this season jeremy moiso is also there um darko could play the four if they wanted both of them could but they don't care and what the hell they even signed kirk heinrich see i told you they, they you know whoever had let him go the, i think the Cavs should have kept him manu is cooking jose Calderon is cooking but they are number one in the west near
nearly the best in the league. Bulls fell off. Not really. Actually, they're still great. Oh, yeah. And the Kings, it, it's time to get Mike Bibby out of here. I actually just saw a team that maybe would be good for him. That's the only trade I'm going to do right now. It's it's just, it's time to give up. Actually, how old is he? 20? You know what? 11 million. They could re-sign him and keep him around for a while. How trash are they? Is he holding them back for being like trash? I'm pretty sure they're pretty trash. Yeah, yeah. Never mind. He could stick around. If he could stick around, still be good when he's like 32, maybe. LeBron wins MVP again. Chris Paul wins rookie of the year. Sean Livingston, six man of the year, 18 points per game, six assists, four rebounds. Ron Artest wins DPOY. Okay, Pistons. Josh Smith, most improved player because they didn't have him taking shots, but oh my God, he really did cook this year though. Brad Nelson, the Heat coach, coach of the year. I like Josh Smith. Josh Smith's cooking though. He might bring them to the promised land. Gilbert, Kobe, LeBron, Carlos Boozer. Oh, he might be a franchise player. I'm not going to lie. They might need to start cooking around. Hey, they probably have some money now, you know? And Shaq, all NBA first team, second team, Mac, Tony, Anthony, Brandon, Garnett. I don't think I've ever called Melo Anthony. Third team, Jason Terry on the Hawks with alongside Melo with Kidd, Nowitzki, Smith, and Duncan. Here's defensive first team an elite defensive team. Oh my God. Josh Smith, Ben Wallace, Karolinko, Kobe, Artest, and then Kerry Kittles on the second one. And then rookie, you got David Lee, Darren Williams, who they cook his shot. Ten Man, why do they do this with everybody? Why do I got to go through and fix everyone's shot tendency? Like, why is Darren Williams only shooting that many times, man? Jesus, T-Mac is still only 26. All right, so for playoff stats, or my bad, season stats, Shaq led in points, rebounds is Ben Wallace, barely assists, chasing kids, steals, Ron Artest, blocks Ben Wallace, defensive hell over there. And Dwight White and field goal percentage, that seems pretty normal. Also, Eddie Curry is second, tied with Vince Carter. And three point. Aiden Dermanenko, whatever the hell his name is. Ray Allen and free throw percentage. Groundbreaking. All right. Warriors, Sixers, Suns, Wizards, Supersonics, Magic, Lakers, Pistons. Lakers were the fifth seed. Get smoked by the Nuggets with Chris Bosh and them. Utah made it out of the first round as well. They'll play the Nuggets. The Suns, who actually did better than I would have expected, um, were the third seed, but they lost to the Spurs, which isn't that crazy. Philadelphia only won one game against Carmelo Anthony and Jason Terry's Hawks. I got to give them equal representation on that team because Jason Terry has been cooking all right second round hawks are out of here rockets are out of here nets are out of here and jazz are out of here so it is the jazz getting cooked by the nuggets the um bobby simmons chris bosh jonathan bender marcus Camby. hey chris bosh is cooking so is rip hamilton and them and the rockets quentin richardson yao ming paul pierce steve francis matter of fact yao ming paul pierce and steve francis all combined for barely 20 points in this game which is not good and they still barely lost by two but they lose to you know them the bulls are back in the conference finals playing against LeBron James and Kevin Garnett, you know, Dwight Howard versus KG. And I mean, finals MVP Jalen Rose against LeBron James, of course, of course. If anything, I should be looking to, you know, another big star trade might need to happen for the Bulls if they lose this because Dwight Howard showed way too much promise for us to be sitting around. And hey, I would include Jalen Rose. I mean, he was selling when I was watching the game anyways, although he wouldn't finals MVP though. So I don't know. And man, the Spurs really do need a two guard. Can I see actually the Spurs real quick? Do they not have one player that could be the two guard? I feel like that sounds kind of, yeah. Aaron McKee could, Bruce Bowen could, you know, though they, that just shows they have enough good twos where they could make the decision, but they're not. So I'm just going to let them rot. Not really, but I'm going to let them make their own decisions. And oh my, yep. See, there it goes. They smoked them. Miami up 3-2, tied 3-3. Chicago still fighting. Maybe they don't need a move. Let's see. Close game in the fourth. He trying to run away with it. Will they? Not really. Oh, yes, really. Indeed. Wait, maybe not. Hold on. Here we go. LeBron passing in the ball, weirdly enough, into Hughes. The screen by KG. Hughes is going to pass the ball down down to LeBron. LeBron in the post. He will fade, do a hook, and that is off. Okay. Wow. Interesting. Very interesting development. Tyson Chandler is in with Mashburn and Dwight and Eddie Curry. Mashburn will get the screen from Eddie Curry and get it picked off by LeBron James. LeBron back the other way. Hands it off to Johnson. Joe Johnson will step back for the mid-range, and it is good. Oh my. The, the hook by Jamal Mashburn. We are definitely playing basketball out here. 47 seconds to go. Hand off to LeBron. This might be rigged. The double team on LeBron. They give it to Garnett. They double team him in the wide open corner three that is off. Hey, the double teams work. Okay, Mashburn trying to cook. He might drop the ball. He doesn't. Hands it over. Jamal Crawford's got it. Jamal pulls up a deep three. They should get a board because they have 75 big men. And he misses the layup. It's over with. Miami's going to the finals. They sold. Uh, KG and LeBron making it back. We need some more firepower teams. They keep making these role players. And now, you know what I'm saying? We get the Heat and Spurs. But hey, I, I do think this is the first time this has happened, right? At least with KG on the team 
team because Tim Duncan versus KG is crazy in the finals. And LeBron versus, I guess, Tony Parker. Not really an even matchup, but yeah. I mean, also Jermaine O'Neal. The Heat are cooking and will go on to win this one by 30. LeBron, 35 and 10. Karan Butler, he's a wizard if you didn't know. He's not a wizard. That's a J. Cole bar. Oh my God, dog. 50 point, nearly 50 point win. LeBron, yeah. Yeah, they're cooking. It's not even really a super team. It's just him and KG being that good. They're up 3-0. It's over. It's just over. Yeah. LeBron James finals MVP. Is this is you won already, right? Nope. His first championship right here, right now. And Gary Payton is trying to get out of here. He's still, you know, I'm gonna let him stay. He's still a value player. All right. The giraffe lottery for this year. The Bobcats have number one. It's Bobcats, Kings, Hornets, Nuggets via the Clippers. I didn't make that trade. I cannot imagine I traded something from these trash Clippers. What the hell? Yeah, I think this pick was traded. Um, once again, Bobcats, Kings, Hornets, Nuggets, and Knicks. And who will get the first overall pick? or whoever the bucks okay where were the bucks they were seventh that's not bad also the hornets jumped up i don't know hornets pacers what the hell did they all jump up pacers jumped up from nine but the hornets were three man next year when i do like uh simulations i might have to just go through shout out to all the people that do make draft class and take the time out to make sure all the players in the right draft class and everything but you know what i'm saying because i know 2k stuff is normally slightly inaccurate or missing players that aren't in the game but like for example pj tucker i was looking at this stuff and his peak end age was 30 man pj tucker is the same now as he was 10 years ago you know what i'm saying so he should not like stuff like that like 37 he is literally 37 and he's just now maybe falling off so out to steve novak i was just looking through all these players making sure stuff was correct honestly this one wasn't that bad but uh i mean the draft is kind of bad but yeah let's see the first overall pick the milwaukee bucks who should they select so the bucks have ray allen they got the first pick with ray allen man it might be man you know what we got a very interesting proposition to a team by the name of toronto raptors now they have the ninth pick in the draft right they also have chris paul they are bona fide to be good they should be good sooner than later okay but what if you give me the ninth pick and they can't trade ben gordon right now ben gordon being part of this trade after i do the team option thing for him in a few minutes right and it would just be that for ray allen basically the ninth pick ben gordon and i'll take a uh, very future lottery protected top 10 protected pick how about that so it'd just be the ninth pick a lottery protected pick and ben gordon who was a top pick in himself damn you got the first pick with ray allen on the team dog it's like man give up dog oh, matter of fact you want sam cassell too uh there they got sean livingston how about we reroute this third team right who needs a point guard sam cassell though this would be the perfect time for the bucks to give up too because um you know oh man what record were they were again who they where'd they jump up from let me check. Now I'm kind of conflicted if I even want to them to trade right now. Should they just cook with LaMarcus Aldridge? And the Lakers have every player expired except for Shaq and Kobe. I was thinking of where to, where to trade maybe Sam Cassell for a pick or something. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with You know what? Let's just go Bucks. Number one overall pick should definitely be Mr. 79 overall according to this thing. LaMarcus Aldridge for the Bucks. Number two, the New Orleans Hornets. So they have nobody. PJ Brown. Let's go ahead and give them the number one, potentially the best scorer in this draft. Brandon Roy number two overall the indiana pacers in a bit of a weird spot they have some good players all around ilgauskas williams odom is expiring but i think on this type of team your top three anyways you gotta draft best available and who exactly is that honestly i agree yeah i think it, it's probably paul Millsap, especially for them already having jason williams let's go paul Millsap. bobcats literally just need a person who could dribble a basketball or anything of the nature and um i feel like kyle lowry fits better with this team more of a scorer than rondo i'm gonna go with him next to uh next to luau dang nice little one-two punch the kings really just need anybody who is alive although him and a more traditional pick and roll duo him and al jefferson could fit much better him and arondo i'm speaking of but actually i was thinking of going with someone else over everybody i did realize someone else a few seconds ago oh yeah right there rudy gay but you know what though i'm not gonna I, I'm gonna go with Rondo. I feel like Rondo is a bona fide, a, a GOAT level. Okay, whatever. Rudy fits perfectly here as well. You know, Clippers. You, you actually get yourself the little, uh, remember when I said Josh Smith need, well, you get Monte Ellis, Rudy Gay, some Hoopers, some Hoopers around, you know. I, I know Bargnani's still on the board, but no way in hell I'm drafting Bargnani over Rudy Gay. I do not care. The Knicks are on the board. They also need anybody in the world. And if, unless I check around and see a better potential player than, you know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go. Let's go with a center for them. They already have Darren Williams, Iguodala, Michael Red. Bargnani sadly is going to the Knicks again. Timberwolves also just need anybody that 
plays basketball like Danny Granger. And funnily enough, I'm not gonna lie, I did just look at uh at Adam, what's his name? Uh, Adam Morrison, and I kind of boosted his stuff up a little bit, where he'll be a solid NBA player at the very least. JJ Redick as well. You know what? Screw it. I'm gonna let I'm gonna let the fate decide it because at this point, it's it's kind of murky. So screw it. Oh great, they they drafted JJ Redick, so there's that. And then Adam Morrison went right after him. Pops Mensa, aka Tony Snow. I think they usually have a good idea of what to do with their own team options. So I'm gonna let them rock. And they had LeBron and Sebastian Telfair on the same team. All right, free agency. Oh, Carlos Boos is here. He is restricted, but they're gonna get him back anyways. Um, Ben Wallace wants to go back to the Pistons. They started to show some promise this year, and honestly, with how bad he's been playing, nobody else should want him. So rip Hamilton to the Rockets. He's been on Denver some for some years now. That would be very nice. That would be nice for honestly any team. All these teams that you know been built kind of nicely. Pacers for Karan Butler, but Butler leaving the Heat. Now it'd be nice for him to get his bag, but I don't know if that should come in at expense of leaving the champions, you know? So all these idiots are out here about to lose their free agents just because they want to try and sign Ben Wallace. Get the hell out of here, dog. Keep your free agents. So the Nuggets are out here not even offering Rip Hamilton. Weren't they pretty high in the playoffs last year? Yeah, get the hell out of here. I don't even want them to. Rockets is a nice team for them too, but hold on to your assets, dog. They got 21 million. Thing too. Don't they have Marcus Camby and a center? I just, oh no, they, oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow, they really did. What's funny though is I've built almost every team the exact way I would like to. <laughs> so I don't really care where half of these players go as long as they go somewhere. And golly, I might really not care because there is so many 80s for it. Simulated day. There we go. Jamal Mashburn getting a lot of offers from around the league. The Rockets being number one. Oh, and that Chicago legend, Jamal Mashburn. They were just almost in the finals with him. They're trying to offer him, actually. Are they offering him enough money is the question? Like, these idiots always make, like, just a barely wrong decision. Like, dog, just offer him a couple more dollars. Then. There you go. He's back. We're going to let the le rest of the stuff go as it shall. Let's see. Mike Bibby to the heat. They let Karan go. I swear I offered Karan a better offer and they just said, screw him. We want Mike Bibby. Okay. All right, then. They wanted a point guard. I'll let it rock. Let the Nuggets get back both their players. Andre Miller went to the Jazz. That's actually, actually kind of decent. That's actually kind of nice. They were what? The first seed, right? And they got Tim Thomas. Oh, yeah. They're cooking over there. They are. Mm, they got a nice little role player accumulation type of team. All right. Screw it. Let's just go to player progression. I'll evaluate from here i really i like the trading aspect of all of this i need like significant jumps oh chris ball up to an 89 they let carlos boozer go to toronto hey man if the cavaliers are that stupid i was talking about him being the franchise yeah they got nobody now they're gonna be tanking tanking they are gonna kevin durant sweepstakes and they got some picks from uh from someone i had traded man dirk and nash might need a breakup soon dog hey mike bibbig's officially gone so the kings are officially well they've been in rebuild mode jesus the celtics are terrible man holy hell they need to lock in and tank a little bit better man what the hell were they doing did they even draft it wait am i like drawing a blank because who the hell did they draft this year yeah whatever who the hell cares Dang, the bull sign allen houston look at them just getting budget bucket i'm not gonna lie the next rendition of the script might be trading uh dirk to the raptors or something like i want to get dirk out of there because they are doing nothing and it's like yeah I i've already i've already tried for them have i i don't know i don't remember oh my god the cavaliers are terrible they're actually gonna have brian scalabrini nearly start Starting, maybe starting bulls best three players are all centers but they're pretty cool though and i already know the bucks the bucks are about to be tanking so let me just let me just sim a little bit and see what how bad they are let me go to the bucks actually the second i see they're like terrible yeah we're just gonna trade ray allen oh they're not actually eh, yeah no they're pretty yeah yeah they're pretty bad matter of fact this is the exact time where you should trade ray allen and just commit to the tank because it is not yeah i'm literally just gonna do ray allen for ben gordon adam morrison and i'll throw in uh need some value from this pick so we'll go raptors 2010 as well as a 2009 lottery protected actually that's too much yeah literally just ben gordon and adam morrison a first and ray allen uh learn chinese buddy or learn canadian that's pretty cool any other early trash teams well the bobcats that's expected dang the bulls are five and ten. Oh my god what are they doing brandon roy's already averaging 27 but this team is still terrible all right let's just let's just let it cook also i don't believe i have in-season contract extensions on auto if they ever want to do that go ahead man oh yeah the bucks haven't won a game since elite tank holy hell they actually haven't won since and there it is they finally won they man i might have just made the best tanking decision for them in world history let's check out uh just make sure the heat and rock rockets are doing fantastic this season the paul pierce thing definitely has done wonders for them so that's that's a good uh you know one of my better moves and who did the celtics get from that they didn't have a ton to give up right but i, I feel like i gave them i don't i don't remember i have no clue what the hell i gave them 
for uh, for Paul for Paul Pierce. Was it Jameer Nelson? Maybe some way. I don't know. But I might need to charge them like rent or something for him. Thanks, Spurs. 34 wins this season. Oh my bro. Why is there two guards? Okay, let's 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 help the Spurs out a little bit, right? Hey, what's the call overall? Two guard. A 68 is is criminal. Also, a Steve Novak. Oh, that's Joe Ingles starting for the Hornets. They have Rondo coming off the bench behind Jock Vaughn. Oh, there he goes. I don't know what they're doing, man. Prioritize your young players, man. What the hell are you doing? Oh my god, the Bobcats too, man. Why are you in what universe should a Donald was that no 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 who was that that was starting over him? Keon dueling over Kyle Lowry, man. Yeah, this is definitely the one. Dion Glover. Uh Pacers good. Oh, Pacers are good, aren't they? I literally searched for shooting guards that are solid at shooting threes for them to trade for. I'm not gonna lie, best they're gonna get is one of these Celtics players who doesn't even really shoot threes, anyways. But not gonna lie, Spurs. To get to get this, you're gonna have to give up your first. You guys are way too good. Let me see. Actually, they have a better player for you. Uh, you know what? Give up both. Both uh, first for Bobby Simmons. Why is this guy green starting if they have Marty Collins right here, who's a, like significantly better? This guy green has a 47. Man, oh my God. Matter of fact, let's just trade him. Do two Spurs first for a nice little guard rotation. The Spurs are good and yeah, whatever. I don't know. Could have protected them. Don't care. Dang, the Hawks also need of a two guard, but I have a much easier solution for them. They got CJ Miles on a two way contract in the G League. First of all, two way contracts didn't even exist, so I don't know how the hell that's here. I rock with Marquise Daniels, but release Marquise Daniels, dog, and then sign this man. Okay, I guess I can't sign him. I don't know. Oh, the Hawks are about it. You know, just just as a reward for that. Yeah, all these G League dudes have 99 three point shots. Screw it. The Hawks are about to get a uh, a um a generational just generational talent. We'll go two year two year deal. For for this guy three year 28 year old screw it he's not making a lot of money anyways all right screw it simulate the season actually no, no no my favorite scenario where is dirt ninth in the conference oh my god thing is is that i think we're just about shock out of bad uh good players on bad teams Rashard lewis is still kind of young this team does kind of suck wait why do they suck that's sad grizzlies might gotta give up soon too man but I'm, I'm gonna let them rock for now you know there's certain teams like that with like really trash supporting they could just afford a free agent soon probably Probably. Thank God this Pistons thing is working out decently. And man, look at the Raptors. Top of the conference with six men, Sean Livingston, Devin George at the three. Or my bad, second in the conference. Very clearly second to the Heat. Hey man, this might sound crazy, but Dirk Lakers. Should we start talking Dirk Lakers? Hey, I am David Stern. And I will not be vetoing anything. Or we could start talking Dirk Sixers, but they already have Raheem who's, yeah, they're not. Let's start talking Dirk Lakers, man. I feel like they didn't spend a dime. Kobe and Shaq are making a ton but nobody else is making money so i swear i feel like i could just click this and it would okay no 14 million yeah might be a lost cause then actually definitely a lost cause i could do what i said give players a raise whatever whatever to make things work but for this type of team it's like man i'd rather things work in a legitimate way let me see actually actually i could make it a three team i might have found the dirt um trade partner that i did not expect actually while i was looking for a third team it looks like the magic because of Grand Hill, 16 million could work very well. But here's the thing. Them two, I'm going to need a third team because Dirk is not 92 overall, the biggest trade yet. Even if he's not going there, I think he would have to go there though. You know what, actually? Why haven't I talked to my team? Also, man, how are the Suns doing? Because I feel like they've been needing to get break, broken up too. Oh, great. They're doing good this year. Good for them. Oh, no. Yeah, he don't he don't make sense to the uh, Raptors anymore after they got Boozer. I'm not going to lie for Dirk, man. I'm going to need Grant Hill, a lot of draft capital. Matter of fact, I don't even want the, the recent the soon to come ones i want the you know what i'm saying future draft capital and i know the stipend rules off by the way i think i already went over this can't put no crazy great draft picks in here 10 years in the future anyways so look we need a lot of draft capital i'm gonna need nash in here as well to a third team that's the worst too when i'm doing simulations and teams are good but they're not doing anything for 20 years like might as well just restart though i have cooked up some absolute crack in this trade so dirk and melvin ellie are going to the magic that is all they are getting they are giving up Grant Hill, three first, Channing Fry and Ursan Eliasova for Dirk to elevate them to the next level. You know, sign your role players, your veteran role players, and deal with it. You need, you know what I'm saying, to beat these teams. You haven't done it yet. You get you get Dirk, D Wade, and T Max. So pay for it. And I'll make sure Dirk isn't leaving no time soon. You know what I'm saying? That'll be my guarantee. I might even just extend them right now. Derek Anderson, a first, Raymond Felton, or Kendrick Perkins are also coming right back to the Mavericks for Steve Nash, Sean Bradley, and Channing 
Fry going to them. I felt like Perkins was a little bit of a slight overpay, so I added, you know, Channing Fry to go back to them as well. They are like in fake contention right now, where like JR and Zebo, as they get better and maybe they sign somebody or whatever. Matter of fact, there's any salary filler they have to give out of here? Let, let me see. Oh, can the yeah, if the Magic could take some salary filler, there you go. Give them some more cap space. That's that's actually pretty nice. There you go. Bada bing, bada boom. Wow. So the Mavericks are officially at square one. Let me go ahead and do what I said. D Wade's got one year left, but he's going to resign. Dirk, go ahead and take the max for the. Well, we'll go five years. We'll go with a three year extension. Yeah, that's, that seems fair. Matter of fact, while we're here, go ahead and give T Mac another two years as well. The Nets also need to try and do something to mix things up because this is somehow still not. You know what, though? I could see them making a run with this team. This team is very nice. Yeah, th there's really nothing to do here, actually. They got Marcus Cam. I didn't even realize like they just signed him Richard Jefferson Jason Richardson Kenyon Martin Jason Kidd Kurt Thomas off the bench and the Sixers they might be a lost cause not every team can win the ring I'll make a very light Sixers trade real quick um Bobcats aren't good they got a Donald Foyle he's a little bit better than Zaza who's a Sixers starting center just trade him two seconds and some scrub for a Donald there you go let the Bobcats tank him a little bit better of a center not much else you could do here Mo Williams why aren't you starting oh because I have the young old filter all the way up there you oh how'd they even get Josh Childress how did he get you know what i don't care there there's something all right i don't know i already gave him vince carter years ago and iverson's down to 19 in a game yeah dog and they got abdul raheem leading them in scoring season's good done get it over with kg wins mvp on the heat i also moved back to the four this year i think they had no four but a center he also averaged eight assists a game kyle lowry wins rookie of the year very interesting out there playing basketball sean Livingston might become a six man of the year staple behind chris paul kobe bryant wins dpo why well i feel like they usually make a not as good as defense as he should be in 2k so that's good danny granger wins most improved with 24 per game rudy tom Janovich coach of the year i mean that's the rockets right yeah Kobe, tony kg lebron and Shaq makes first team tracy d way j smooth carmelo and duncan make the second team j kid paul boozer Nowitzki, and howard make the third team what a beautiful defensive teams uh all rookie you got brandon roy aldridge bargnani and rudy joining lowry joe ingles makes it josh boone makes it and yeah the rockets were the best this little experiment with paul pierce has worked out very nicely from being a non-playoff team it's nice to see how, how how much that one move has brought them the warriors missed the playoffs just barely with this team the mavericks also just barely missed it since we traded their whole team next year will be a more real tank year for them the clippers played very well for being 11 or for being like a tanking team honestly rebuilding played better than the grizzlies who that might be a sign wolves need someone to support danny granger so it's good they're at the bottom they're one of the bottom six i think but the bucks far and away the worst my god after trading ray allen they just locked in and continue to lose how did lamarcus do 18 a game kyle lowry's bobcats terrible um the sixers Allen iverson and vince carter missed the playoff tied with the bulls the bulls beat them out now what what's the reason for those two missing the playoffs who's like you know making it into the playoffs nowadays well the magic ended up taking the number one seed tying but also edging out for it with Dirk on the team the Pacers made it with Karan Butler going there okay I gotta respect some movement like you know and from player to another team because he didn't make a huge difference led a team to the playoffs probably Chris Paul's Raptors are in the playoffs now the Hawks have been a mainstay the Nets are back because I believe they might have been missing it for the Pistons as well yeah there's just a lot of com competition in the East right now but a pretty steep drop off to the Knicks who are still you know is that actually john stark well, i just realized that all right playoffs actually regular season league leaders points leaders tony parker rebounds which wow tony parker wow rebounds kg assist kid steals kobe blocks elton brand um forget turnovers sorry kobe kobe and uh dwight field goal percentage by far kobe three point percentage by far what the hell how many three he shot 200 threes and shot 55 percent holy he only has an 89 three and i only say only because you'd expect a 99 maybe a hundred if you shoot 55 percent so yeah watch out for the lakers even though they're the seventh seed because he is on one right now but they aren't so first round and they got smoked they are out of here immediately um any other upsets or surprises no upset actually no the pacers were upset the uh, actually the karan butler led team smoked by jason kidd second round the nuggets are out of here sons 
Raptors and Nets. So it's the one versus two seed in both sides. The Magic, we're gonna have the D Wade and LeBron rematch, except they have added a, well, I won't lie. Uh, well, first of all, the Magic got basically a big four with Mike Miller, but the Heat ain't too shabby either. Although they did get worse by losing Karan Butler, who I wanted to go back. So that's what it is. He made a solid move for his career. Probably got, didn't really get much more money, but it is what it is. And the Rockets, Yao Ming's team with Paul Pierce and Steve Francis against the Manu Ginobili, Karolinko, Emeka Okafor led squad, which is overperforming is like hell. And the Rockets are going to go to the finals and the Heat are going to go to the finals despite being overmatched by the big three of hell over there in Orlando. The Rockets versus Heat. LeBron going for another ring. Uh, the Rockets going for their first since the Hakeem era. First game just barely goes to the Rockets despite LeBron and KG combining for more points than any two players in their team did. Shout out to Keith Bogans. The Heat win another or actually you know, they win their first game with Joe, KG, and LeBron combining for I want to say what is that? 87 points. Heat get another one, 24 point win led by LeBron and KG. Heat another one cooking them, and that should be it, honestly. Yep. LeBron James, another championship. A lot of fantastic teams formed around the league, but it is still the LeBron and KG duo reigning supreme, even after Karan Butler left. Oh, they do have Mike Bibby now. I just realized, were they not starting? They were starting Larry Hughes over Mike Bibby, weren't they? They even got Smush Parker, man. Gary Payton is officially done. Can't override that retirement. I'll let Sam Cassell, Allen Houston come back. Why not? It's about that though gary payton hall of fame and alonzo morning retirement from the heat but did not make the hall of fame historic changes social media is now a thing i should have just re re you know what i'm saying we'd have been better off rejected the hell out of that uh draft lottery now this is the draft matter of fact before i do that before i do that draft lottery for kevin durant very big time draft lottery i actually might just let this one run bucks bobcats hornets Cavs, and timberwolves okay i'm gonna say if anything notable happens but aside from that i do not remember trading this many picks though i won't lie i don't think i've so far all these picks in and there's only six left and things have held true to form six the wizards the wizards are gonna jump up into the top three timberwolves fall down to six cavaliers will go to five wizards into the top three bobcats will fall down to four the hornets who will get three it is the wizards so it's between the hornets and someone else the winner of the second pick is the hornets and the first overall pick is the milwaukee bucks the absolute tankathon milwaukee bucks will get kevin Durant. Hey, very worthwhile. Might have just got them KD by trading Ray Allen. So, which is actually around exactly what happened in real life, right? Because KD never played with Ray Allen on the Supersonics, but Ray Allen was there and then got traded right before, I think, for Jeff Green. Can't lie, aside from KD, this draft is very mediocre. I'll say outside of like the top five. But let, let's get this up with Bucks first overall pick without a doubt. Let's just, you know, just if you wanted to uh, recap. Uh, yeah, so they will now actually have Ben Gordon, a Lamarcus Aldridge. And Kevin Durant, basically. That's that's the big three, which is very nice. Oh, and they have Adam Morrison down here. Uh, he'll be a, a bench player for, you know, years to come. And they have PJ Tucker. What the hell? I didn't even know he was there. They might get rid of him, though. You know how they are with those team options in this. KD goes number one to the Bucks. All right, the Hornets. Now, they have also nobody except for Brandon Roy, Andrew Bynum, and Nate Robinson. And I feel like someone else, but it is what it is. Okay. They need a... um. Actually, don't need Greg Oden. They have Varejao and Bynum. Now, that's say that we're going to run away from picking a nice you know player for them i think that a very easy choice here a thousand percent short mike conley mike conley will be over there the wizards are next now the wizards i'm not even sure how this is possible how did they even get this pick it's really their pick wow they, they sold that crazy with Peja and, and they, their whole team is expiring too so but for sure the best overall player at this point you know no injuries and everything i know they're recommending al horford but no i'm going greg odin for them the best overall player right now the bobcats are next up join the core of lowry and luau deng go ahead and do the obvious pick al horford cleveland also another terrible team they might actually be the worst team probably all the worst team of all of them and well i give them the best potential bucket getter which is rodney stuckey i believe i'm gonna give them yeah just make it simple timberwolves danny granger out here leading the pack they also could use a center or a guard actually they're pretty good in the guard but they really just need a center ben baker's expired he is 25 well he shouldn't be 25 to be fair though i just realized marcus saul here too man i feel like two of the players i actually do think of yeah when i think of the early 2010s i think of two great players
players, man. Mark Gasol, Danny Granger, definitely two of the quintessential guys. We'll go with those two. Sacramento's next up. I know they lost Mike Bibby. They basically just have Al Jefferson, Rajon Rondo, Gerald Green, pretty solid. I rock with Jeff Green heavy, but Thaddeus Young is like one of those guys that really... Thaddeus Young is a little bit more elite, uh, at least, you know, at his peak. So I'm gonna go Thaddeus Young. Actually, Boston's on the clock. They kind of just need best available. I'm not gonna lie. They are very mediocre. I'm gonna go best available, Jeff Green. Screw it. And number 10, the Grizzlies. Uh, I'm gonna let everybody else decide from here. And I actually wanted to draft where Joakim Noah would go, but yeah, screw it, Joakim. The wind will blow you where you need to be. Oh, he went to the Nuggets. Hopefully that's a good fit. Oh, I'm cool with all this. That isn't Gabe Pruitt. That's Rodney Hood. Come on, man. All right, team player options. Y'all got it, man. You make your own financial decisions. Dang, decline Channing Fry for what? Uh, they be treating these players expendably. He is 24 years old. He's probably peaked. Okay, I get it. I get it. Okay, Um. well, so all of these guys should be going back to their original teams. I don't know why LeBron is so dead set on maybe going to a different team when he's definitely going to go back, right? So many people are offering D Wade. Magic, though, have the best offer. Let me make sure that he get LeBron's best offer so I don't have to, you know, do anything. And then for Tim Duncan, the Rockets are putting in a good offer for him. What is, who is over there? Is Yao Ming a free agent and they're trying to replace him with Tim Duncan immediately after making the final? See, I don't think that's what I would want in my simulation, in my, uh, in my script. I get it. It's a power move. Number one overall seed. But both teams are contenders and everything. Who's offering? The Jazz are offering Yao Ming. I mean, if you can get him, you can get him. But now Gilbert Arenas is getting a very, very nice offer from the Bulls. And they're the only team that has offered him. I do think I, I felt in my, in my script that uh, I would possibly let the wizards just give up if they were that trash and it's looking like they might now the bulls have obviously been struggling as of late but dwight howard will get himself a nice secondary real time big time score and i am far from opposed to seeing amari stoudemire find a new team because yeah that it's been ugly although it's coming in lieu of them offering him over chris bosh i'm pretty sure right because that's the nuggets is chris bosh's team and let me just make sure that they're also offering chris bosh because that i don't want him leaving either on top of that make sure the rockets offer yao as well just in case tim duncan let me it doesn't feel right for him to leave that team they've only won or tony's only won one ring which was in 04 tim has two i think it, what is it it's 2007 right now so they should have just won their third but or their fourth actually but i say before giving up on them he gives it one more shot that's what i would personally say let's see give tim duncan the bag a player option they were even trying to give him a no trade clause which hell i would just get rid of anyway so um yeah but let's off from the bag vince carter man that era in philly's gotta end if you're not making the playoffs now where would be a good destination for vince carter maybe this portland team that's trying to kind of make it out of mediocrity right now you know it's weird because you think like oh he was just with iverson who was better than you know them or that Sixers team that was better but you never really know what fit in this in this basketball world even the knicks wouldn't be terrible because they're kind of starting to turn the table on a you know turn the tide on contending um, I guess the Jazz as well, if they actually had the money, but I doubt it. Matter of fact, that's a team who needs someone. The Grizzlies. Okay, perfect. The Grizzlies have money. Now, let me guess too. They're probably offering a lot to one of these guys, either a LeBron, a D-Wade. Yep, there you go. A big body D-Wade contract. Yeah, no, you guys should settle for Vince Carter, a 30-year-old Vince Carter. I mean, there's also Jason Kidd sitting right there who's not sure where to go. His Nets haven't been doing much in the past few years. I do think it'd be in his best interest to just stay in in comparison to going to the grizzlies but i think i'm just gonna let him decide for himself he's a little more of a confusing case he's also 34 but for the grizzlies man go ahead and sign vince carter dog any of these slightly older guys i'm gonna let things get a little bit crazy let's see so day one lebron james prepared to accept an offer from the trailblazers make sure you guys are matching that there you go all right now we have the the slew of gilbert arenas offers which includes the rockets being at the top of his list which wasn't something i anticipated so tim duncan must have went back to the spurs but Yao Ming didn't, right? Yao Ming didn't go somewhere else, right? He's still with the Rockets as well. So I don't know what they're doing with that. I'm going to restructure the Bulls deal because I do think his best bet would be with the Bulls if they have enough money to sign him. But they have 13.9 and I give a player option. Let's see if that does anything. No, that was already the best deal they could give. Hey man, if he if they got the money over there in Houston and nobody's offering Jason Kidd, worst comes to worst, if, if uh, the Bulls want Jason Kidd, man, hey, that's not a bad deal. Two years, 16 million per, not buying into two much 
Also, the Jazz have a decent amount of money. And as of last year, they started to get incredibly competitive. And I believe that, uh, what's his name is out here. Uh, Darko is in the free agency right now. But aside from that, I can lie. Elton Brand, hey, man, you've been over there struggling in what's it called land for a little while now. Not struggling per se, but not the best either. How about a little Jazz contract, man? Hey, oh, Pays of Spurs would be interesting. Wow. Whereas they're actually going to let Jermaine O'Neal go. I guess they haven't won a ring with that duo, to be fair. No, I don't think the Knicks are going to venture back into the top of the lottery for a little while. So what if they went and offered Jermaine O'Neal a little contract, a little four years, something, something, you know what I'm saying? Get get themselves into the top of the top. Aaron Davis is out here chilling. I think 85 and under, I'm going to let them decide. Okay, so he's going to agree with the Knicks, but what else has happened now? D-Wade obviously went back. Melo went back. Arenas has signed with the Rockets, so they had enough money for Yao Ming and Gilbert Arenas. Ron Artest is going to leave the Pistons for the Hawks, it's looking like, which means he joins Melo in them. I'm going to I'm gonna let it cook. And as you can see, every, just about everybody is gone now. Aaron Davis to the Pacers. A lot of a lot of decent movement. And Milwaukee let Ben Gordon go? I mean, he's 24. They must have declined his team option. That's the craziest thing. Hey, man, I guess. That is so stupid. But then again, they're going to be in the lottery for a long time anyways. And they got Kevin Durant and LaMarcus Aldridge. I mean, that is pretty stupid. I actually might just throw him back on that team. I don't want to have like, no, what if they had another, you know, solid 15 point score. I fix that. Dang, Iggy's at 87. Shaq is down to a 90. The Lakers, man, they are also not looking the best right now. Maybe there's really nothing to do there. You don't really move on from Shaq and Kobe. And oh, okay. Yeah, the, the pace is starting to get a little bit competitive last year. So now they get Baron Davis alongside already Jay Williams being there. But you, you just bring talent in if you're trying to, you know what I'm saying, make some shake. This is a big year. The 2008 draft class. This is Derek Rose, Russell Westbrook, and of course, greatest scorer of all time, Michael Beasley. I, I'm, I'm getting a weird feeling to not do anything much this year. I think things are pretty nicely in place. Shout out to Peja now in uh, San Antonio. Nice little, you know what I'm saying? They got something going on over here. They also finally signed a real shooting guard. They let the other two go that I had got for them. Oh, and Amari Stoudemire did leave. Did he go? Yep, he joined Chris Bosh in Denver. So I'm going to move Amari or Bosh to the center. Mm, I'm trying. I'll look at who's a better interior defender, I guess. Neither one of them is, is actually specializes in it. But, you know, okay, Amari's a little bit better. So screw it. And yeah, Bosh is a little bit better perimeter defense. Bet. That's a very nice nice big man duo though especially because you know Bosch kind of spaces the floor a little bit more Amari is inside dog whereas Bosch is a little more finesse you know I like that a lot I mean, this is where the draft class start to get really really interesting so I'm just gonna let this rock for now see what's going on like you know March or whatever okay cool decent portion to the season and yeah the heat the magic are cooking yet again as you would expect the Nuggets are 31 and 7 but Chris Bosch Amari Stoudemire very very nice team man I, I love this team actually this might be one of my favorites I didn't even know the Jets Jazz got Big Z, but they did. He's off the bench alongside also Steven Jackson with Manu Andre. They are second and they are hooking. Um, the Lakers. Oh, the Lakers got Jalen Rose. That's a pretty good sign. And Keith Van Horn is well off the bench. I like that. The Rockets doing well. Spurs doing well. Trailblazers with J.R. Smith, Steve Nash, Wally Zerbiak joined the team in free agency with Zach Randolph, Mike Dunleavy, Speedy Claxton, Nick Collison. A lot of good basketball going in. Matter of fact, the Suns, I didn't even realize they got Elton Brand, but they did. They replaced Amari with Elton Brand. They actually got Marcy and Gortat, just like how they did in real life. And Shannon Brown. I believe he played for the Suns for a decent portion. I know he played for the Lakers, obviously, but the Clippers, the young Clippers with Monte Ellis, Josh Smith, and Rudy Gay, quite literally just them leading the team. Nobody else, not a lot of uh, help around here, are currently firmly in the eighth seed. And then you got Vince Carter's Grizzlies underperforming. My God. I don't even know if there's a way to help them, to be honest. Um, Maybe I could trade J.R. Brimmer from the Mavericks to them for some stuff. Stuff, but the tankathon though right now is going crazy there is multiple teams in both conferences with less than 10 wins and over 30 losses nick young who's actually just tony bradley because nick young's not in the game the wizards led by greg odin and yeah they lost everybody they said i do think though their thing would be less of a choice and more of a oh snap we just didn't make the playoffs with like 290s or whatever they had yeah they're about to leave us and the bucks are still pretty firmly tanking as well because they have nine wins even with kd and ben gordon and aldridge and so on and so for the Knicks are currently in the playoffs at under 500. Although I'm not really sure how else you can make this team much better at their current, you know, scenario. The Hawks are fantastic. Crazy how much of a difference there is between the seventh and eighth seed, 27 and 12, the 19 and 21. Dang, the Nets are the fifth seed. They got 
better without Jason. Actually, they were already good. I mean, they're good with them, without them, whatever. And speaking of that, he went to the Bulls, right? Yep, there go the Bulls right here. They had lost Jalen Rose, but they brought in Jerry Stackhouse alongside the Jason Kidd edition. Now Jamal Crawford's actually a, well, actually a seventh man, not even a sixth man. Tyson Chandler's at the four, which is kind of hilarious. I've been, you know, riding on the coattails of their one championship win as to why I haven't made it like a trade with them yet or whatever. All right. I mean, honestly, uh, I think I saw that one trade for what was it? The point guard for, I was like, screw it. Yeah, they got Smush Parker starting over here. Let's go ahead and talk a Mavericks Grizzlies trade real quick. JR Bremer's just kind of here. He's also expiring. So this is the perfect type of player to trade. Go ahead and just give him Ronnie Brewer and just make it basic just i don't think jr bremer is first worthy what what is he average oh 19 yeah, yeah he's first worthy yeah we'll go first round pick this year that is true they are uh make sure it's top five protected we'll say yeah that's, that sounds about right there you go the grizzlies you know you guys have no excuses now you get a nice little backcourt at adrian griffin senior i'm very excited for when jameer nelson has teammates because man this man is averaging 21 points five rebounds eight assists on an eight win team probably at no fault i'm genuinely done making trades though i've been wasting a lot of, i think i've been recording for like seven hours and I'm like four seasons in. I'm not gonna lie, yesterday, actually, I'm surprised I haven't mentioned this yet. Yeah, so yesterday, like I was just playing 2K14 for fun. Look at this jump shot of this dude, right? I had drafted this guy right here in the right corner. I drafted him number one overall. Did a fantasy draft. As you can see, I have Derrick Rose, Anthony Bennett's on the left wing. Clay Thompson's over there. DeMarcus Cousins I traded for. And this is number one overall pick guy I had traded Bradley Beal for, actually. And look at him, 85 overall, number one overall pick, rookie of the year. And watch his jump shot. Hold on. Oh my God. Matter of fact, run it back. Okay, cross, double cross, back out this dude. First time I ever took a shot with him, he is, man. And then look at this, rookie of the year. I'm definitely gonna make some more 2K14 videos soon. That is my favorite 2K to play to this day. Gameplay wise, just, just a blissful experience. I did though have to turn it down. I ended up playing LeBron and Kobe in the finals. And man, I had to turn it down to Superstar Hall of Fame. They were cooking me. You can't really defend anything in that game. It's just kind of vibes. So I honestly like this 2K and i want to say the past 2ks 22 and 23 are my favorite in terms of having control over a five on five gameplay like i really feel like i can win most of the games that i play when i play five on five as long as you strategize correctly because when you're playing 14 like the ball will just randomly bobble off of a dude's knee or out of bounds like seven times a game but it's it's you know i just do it for fun it's not like i'm playing my team these days you know lebron was another mvp kd rookie of the year with 28 8 and 4 games sean livingston six man of the year for the third time lebron james dpoi Marcin Gortat, most improved. Brad Nelson, coach of the year for Miami. And Stan Nash, probably also Miami. D Wade, Kobe, LeBron, KG, and Tim Duncan. First team. Second team is T Mac, Gilbert, Mello, Sharif Abdul Rahim, and Pau Gasol. Third team, CP3, Jake Kidd, KD, Sean Marion, and Sha Sha Shaq. And here's the all rookie first team. Shout out to Shavlik Randolph, who's actually just Bo Yan, who actually was drafted uh, two years ago and just is now playing with the Sonics, who are, I guess, trash. I don't even know. He might actually be starting. How is he averaging 10 rebounds? Oh, he's a power forward. Okay. So the Grizzlies still ended up missing the playoffs after the J.R. Bremer trade. Give up their first round pick for a two win. It was a solid effort, but two wins out. The Knicks make the playoffs with Jermaine O'Neal and the Pacers just miss it with their pretty solid team that actually they just upgraded with Baron Davis. And, you know, Lamar Odom at six man, uh, Paul Millsap starting over him. Billy misses it. Allen Iverson, Shreve Abdurrahim, this whole run. I mean, this is around the time that Iverson started to fall off pretty bad anyways. So, yeah, you, you guys kind of got to just take this in stride. Maybe I could try and uh, I actually, matter of fact, an Allen Iverson trade is probably definitely very possibly in the cards. He might even be a free agent this year. He is. Yeah, let Allen Iverson go somewhere where he can try and ring chase and tribute because he's still a 20 plus point per game scorer. For Sharif Abdul Rahim, he'll probably maybe decline his player option. I guess we'll see. He's averaging 27 a game, so he could be a much more you know valuable guy somewhere else. Where was he originally? Atlanta. Yeah, with Melo and them, and they were actually very good when he was there. So I thought they'd be great over here too. The Wizards are the worst team in the league by far with the Bobcats right behind them. I guess not by far, but them two are. And yeah, Seattle, I, well, yeah, oh yeah, Seattle lost Elton Brand. So that's why, and probably some other people, I think Gary Payton retired. So yeah, that's why they are. Yeah, they're terrible. Season stats, LeBron James led in points. Oh, rebounds was Carlos Boozer actually of the Raptors. Assists, Jason Kidd, steals, Kobe Bryant, blocks, Tim Duncan, uh, field goal percentage, Dwight Howard, and three point percentage was Leandro Barbosa. Where is Kobe? Because my God, he shot the lights out that one year. There he is. He went from 55 to 44, 45%, which is still elite level and shot about the same amount, but made 20 less, 25 ish. 
30. I don't know. The Knicks losing the first round. Suns are out of here. Spurs, Hawks, Lakers, Magic, Bulls. Okay. The Lakers are going to get upset by the Trailblazers, who are actually led by Mike Dunleavy Jr., Zach Randolph, J.R. Smith, Steve Nash, and Wally Zerbiak, Tony Allen, just all around. Reggie Evans on this team, too. And of course, he had no points and four rebounds with five misses. What the hell? Yeah, the Lakers might need to get bro broken up. I'm not going to lie. It might be about that time. 34 and 11 from Kobe in a loss. If anything, man, uh, and I know Shaq made all nba as well and he's he's still great at the at the very least i gotta get this team another person because i've been you know treating them unfairly just because they won the first ring of the video i mean not unfairly per se but there's not really much to do there i didn't i try to trade them dirk actually yeah i did i did try to, i can't say that yeah orlando orlando lost in the first round to detroit uh gilbert arenas gilbert arenas detroit i could have sworn i thought gilbert arenas went to the rockets right didn't they agree to him and yao ming did they get you know money denied and everything yeah i guess so so gilbert arenas is on the pistons with chauncey billups maybe coming off the bench maybe starting alongside him i don't know kevin martin ben wallace the dude jamal mcglore or whatever his name is uh, uh trevor reza at the three but yeah they were able to smoke the magic the god tier magic i mean the pistons are pretty great in, in itself and aside from that the bulls also got got uh, beat by the Nets. Wow. Jason Kidd loses to his former team. That's all I got to say. That says enough in itself. Second round, it is going to be a Pistons loss. Blazers get cooked. Nets also cooked. So no upsets whatsoever. We are on to the conference finals. It is the one versus three seed since the Bulls got bounced. So Chris Paul's already here and I want to say year number three or two or whatever. They got Tiago Splitter at center now with LeBron James, which is pretty funny. Joe Johnson's a 90 actually. That, that I think that was the ceiling of what I said his overall as so he's reached that Carlos Boozer is at center for the Raptors with Chris Paul Richard Lewis Ray Allen I forgot I traded him there for uh, that package deal that was pretty solid I'm probably gonna do some more like creative stuff to make it you know my uh my my what's it called my script right I'm probably gonna do some like some creative draft stuff make like another player that shouldn't be goaded goaded like this year or something low key is this year a shame to beat no I think that's no oh, Michael Beasley but trust it actually matter of fact it's gonna be Michael Beasley he's gonna be a generational talent that is one of the most surefire generations generational talents I, th I think I've ever seen in my life that somehow wasn't a high impact NBA guy. Yao Ming, Paul Pierce, and Steve Francis are back. Hap happy to see, you know what I'm saying? They kept their core together. I didn't let Yao Ming go, which is something that probably would have happened in any other 2K simulation because they were so focused on getting Tim Duncan. Although they might've actually just got Tim Duncan, if we're being honest, but they also, did they, they smoked? No, they, uh, Tim Duncan lost to the Jazz. The Jazz, yeah, they, they, yeah, made quick work. And the, the Bosch Stoudemire duo, hey, I like all these teams right now and it is going to be wow okay hold on the nuggets are gonna make it my my guy amari stoudemire chris bosh rip hamilton eddie jones is actually here eddie jones followed amari to the next team that's kind of funny did not even know that and he's barely playing but he's getting some quality minutes in also boris diaz out there another well son in another universe and miami versus toronto game seven let's see any game play needed here okay how's everybody doing the universe today man i've been uh, recording for many hours actually one of me and my friends will do this thing very often where uh, I actually I, I've talked about it before when I made the second channel video where I did a rebuild versus my chat on Twitch. It was I, it's up my I'm click channel, right? And I talked about it on there that me and my friends would do these rebuilds or these uh these these we, we would have someone share the screen and then we would all draft and do like a simulation basically just with all of us drafting. It was like you know like up all the way from five to ten of us or something. And while I've been recording this video, we had one going while on another screen. So uh yeah, I was actually paying attention that halfway. Uh, I'm going to a drake concert tomorrow shout out to aubrey and that's about that but you know you'll uh honestly he might still be he's doing like eight shows in new york so you might he might still be there by the time this video is out but uh you know the one i'm going to will be done because you know time lebron gets a foul don't tell me he fouled out right okay good the pass is into carlos boozer boozer dribbles out hands it off to pfizer i expect him to try and force it to either well chris paul's not in the game right now okay rashad lewis back over there pfizer's got it pfizer from three he'll pull terrible shot rebound by Boozer, Carlos Boozer, and he will get fouled. Big dog down low. Boozer with that free throw on him. He used to have a crazy free throw back in the early 2Ks. Like he would like, I mean, the way he shoots it in real life, he brings it far behind his head. Also, I love having the shot feedback off. Like I'm actually just watching a normal game. I don't know why I haven't done that the entire year. Oh my, LeBron for three. Bang, LeBron James from downtown. Oh, over to Ray Allen. I forgot about Ray Allen. Ray Allen to the basket. He's going to hand it off. Beautiful handoff actually to Boozer, but Boozer bricks the shot. That is his 
his money money area and kg is down low with ray allen on him funnily enough and lebron's in a pump fake probably handed out to uh, bibby mike bibby another former heat guy actually eventually he made his way there i'm pretty sure and he pulls up and hits it i think mike bibby played with the heat i know that we had him the knicks had him and then he got injured pretty badly i think it was in the playoffs or the late season and oh richard lewis wide over three a three-point sniper is gonna hit it 114 to go a beautiful series going on right now lebron james goes left he stops he pulls and that is good through the contact that wasn't called as a foul i mean i didn't expect it but it was definitely contact sean livingston goes right right at a bibby and by the way uh very expected here that oh my god don't do that uh chris paul has to be fouled out right no he is not hey in a second i oh richard lewis open again for three another hit i will put chris paul in but i mean it is sean livingston the goat still though i'm not gonna lie he's still what is he 86 overall definitely not much of a detriment will not be messing with anything matter of fact what type of game is chris paul having because sometimes they do that on purpose i feel like wait no he had 27 15 right yeah no no no. put him back in the game it's game seven dog if, if you know what i'm saying if something's gonna happen i want chris paul to be out there for it and matter of fact oh yeah kg's playing all right bibby screen from kg screen on both sides and it'll go to joe johnson for three that is off rebound by boozer 36 seconds to go joe johnson missed the same shot that richard lewis was just cooking with and ray allen missed a quick mid-range could have wasted a lot more time but i won't lie that was a very high quality shot i know it was a deep mid-range but it was very open you know kg guarded by ray allen yep once again crazily enough and lebron's gonna go to the basket bring it back out he'll fade away from three and misses it rebound by boozer hands it off to richard lewis and man oh man that might just be it we might be seeing a toronto raptors finals appearance finals birth after getting chris paul just a few years ago richard lewis hits both lebron will send them into timeout or whatever uh yeah we'll see what happens uh pass in and bibby's got it i thought chris paul was gonna run to the lane i'm not gonna lie lebron will pump fake and pull a terrible three. Oh my god what is he doing i would love if and i'm not gonna lie i still you know like i just said me and my friends have been running this type of stuff for fun but i still enjoy watching these stupid 2k simulations anyways but if they actually made this cpu gameplay more elaborate it would man oh man it would be generational lebron corner oh my he swings it one more to kg kg misses a three and the raptors are heading to probably their first finals appearance yeah at least at the time i mean now you know 2019 but uh yeah oh lebron kg fold the chris paul in them and the miami heat have been eliminated so we have an all new finals the nuggets versus the raptors very solid jerseys right here i will say that matter of fact or well it doesn't matter because i'm sim casting but i was about to change the nuggets jerseys into like the nicer 90s ones these are okay both of them kind of downgraded from the mid 90s or the late 90s but around then man they were cooking the dikembe era and the vince carter era raptors are gonna smoke them win game one paul 36 points sean livingston at 20 off the bench oh my god the nuggets storm back down by three 152 to go devin harris number 34 chris paul trying to cook gets away his basket he'll take the lip and miss it what oh bosh pulls up close shot and misses as well chris paul's got it 115 to go the screen on the left by his big man carlos boozer he'll go to the basket and pull up a moving shot which misses rebound by boozer he pump fakes he'll go up and get blocked wow this is terrible 18 seconds to go though the ball did hit the rim and this is the old era so it reset the 24 and wow chris paul fades away from three these are terrible shots Diaw going back up the other way and he'll draw the charge drawn by i think that's rashard lewis Diaw running with a head full of steam but no head full of knowledge thought charles livingston back up the other way pass over to allen allen will go to right to the basket pump fake and he gets it. not pump fake my bad floater back out boozer wow this game is disgusting but they'll take a four point lead right right now boozer and amari 27 to 26 matchup and the pass down chris bosh will get an easy layup that is exactly what they needed down by four points a quick bucket it'll be handed over to sean livingston and sean was subbed in for chris paul but i'm not gonna lie chris paul was doing nothing sean gets fouled chris paul was out there straight just selling absolute garbage sean livingston will take the free throws makes the first and he is going to miss the second rebound by the nuggets oh my bender up the other way bender over to Hamilton rip rip going to the basket he pump fakes he goes into the post pass down and Bosch and one Chris Bosch with the bucket to potentially save the game can he hit the free throw with the bucket over Pfizer fouls number four Chris Bosch free throw was good their 2003 draft pick number four overall right it is now 2008 been five years and Chris Bosch looking to add a ring to his collection let's see Sean Livingston's got it for the game winner maybe he gets it he four seconds to go he could pass it over over to Rashard Lewis, the money shot, and it is.
is good. Rashard Lewis, the shot that cannot be stopped. The floppy pin down screen, both sides. Rashard Lewis runs up to the top and smokes it. Well, smokes it's usually a bad thing. So he actually, he, he hit the shot. He hit the shot. It is over with. Toronto takes a game. I don't know how many they got, but man, Rashard Lewis is hype as hell. He did the Anthony Bennett thing. Raptors up 2-0. That's Sean Livingston, Rashard Lewis. Pass this Rashard Lewis three-point shot will go down in the history books. And also, it is a beautiful, different play in comparison to when they just pass it to someone in the post all the time, usually in 2K. And wow, the Raptors are going to go up 3-0. Carlos Boozer, Chris Paul. And that is it. Chris Paul, finals MVP. Didn't show up in the late game moments, but showed up in the games total. He wins his first ring, a number one overall pick in 2005. With Ray Allen trade, you know, being very, very pivotal for this team. 19, 18 points per game-ish. I could have sworn I traded him during the draft. Did I not? Oh, I think I maybe ran it, uh, came back around and did it eventually. I don't know. Some very beautiful blockbuster trades in here, though. EJ Brown's going to retire. Hey, man, honestly, you get to step in, dog. Because, uh, I mean, I feel kind of bad, though, because he's been kind of, you know, st oh, he went to Houston. He tried. He tried to win some. Yeah, he's out of here. Jalen Rose, 81 overall, 35 years old. Buddy, get back in the league. Eddie Jones, you too. All right, this is the draft lottery for Derrick Rose, Russell Westbrook. I do think Rose looks like the unanimous number one pick, but him and Westbrook are basically interchangeable. I right, trust and believe I made some changes and it might just have to do it. Hey, I love Michael Beasley and I love that Mavericks OJ Mayo era right after, you know what I'm saying? He got some more opportunity on the Mavericks compared to the Grizzlies. All right, let's see. So the top, I don't think I'm gonna wait for the lottery, but the top picks, Kings via Washington? What? Also shout out to the Kings. I see they got their new logo. Did I actually? I might have traded with the Kings in Washington. I don't remember what, but there was definitely some trades in there. I mean, hey, Washington had to take a shot when they uh, when they had, what's his name? When they had Gilbert still. So I, I, if I did do that, I'm not mad at it. I mean, I am now because they are about to get the first pick, but they're also tied with, in odds with the Bobcats, which is kind of rare. And then they got the Thunder, Hornets, Celtics, Bucks, Spurs via Cleveland. Let's see. And it's going to be the Spurs via Cleveland and the Kings via Washington. Wow. Number one and two. The Spurs via Cleveland. Cleveland? How is that even possible? This is the thing, right? So teams used to trade picks far out in the future a lot back in these days, right? So the Spurs via Cleveland one, I don't think, I don't think it's even possible that I've made a Spurs and Cleveland trade throughout this entire thing. But I do know that in 2002, the Knicks had traded their 2010 pick, which became Gordon Hayward. So that's what I do know. Now, with that being said, the Spurs, who are already a powerhouse for some years now, now have the number one pick. So what do I do? What the hell do I do? Do I draft this team, Derrick Rose? Or do we try and finesse and trade for assets, right? Now, this, this pick deserves what Iverson would have been fire, although he is 33. So I'm not sure you trade the third, first pick for a 33-year-old, okay? Genuine Genuinely speaking, the Tim Duncan uh, like era is coming to a close probably within the next, you know, three years or so. So, I mean, I could just draft a Michael Beasley, number one. I do know that Michael Beasley is going to be a baller, a hooper off rip. Or we find one of these type of players, a team where, you know what I'm saying? But no, for real though, with the way that Michael Beasley's looking from, you know, like I'm trying to think of the team's perspective, like Michael Beasley's looking like he's going to be a instant bucket getter at the three position for like the next 15 years. I mean, especially after how he played in college. I would have comes to teams that could trade a player that they don't need and aren't succeeding okay though the, the magic low key aren't yet but uh you know that's not really uh you know what it's really looking like it is maybe just gonna be a pick because i don't see where else i could possibly trade this thing it would have to be for like a previous rookie of the year caliber guy like a lamarcus aldridge for example and a bunch of draft capital from that team but why would the team that's rebuilding want to give up draft capital so i think that's the thing though right because with the spurs now we wear our options so do we do we say oh okay actually you know you know i will say this russell westbrook was a two guard in college the spurs already have right here i know james posey isn't under contract and that's why i was saying michael beasley you know but they have their four their five their one and then they could have michael beasley at the three or russell westbrook at the two i don't think derrick rose and tony parker works i don't really think russell westbrook's works either but you know you, you take what you could get you have the first pick by the blessing of god somehow or we just get really weird and give him OJ Mayo, but that's a little far. I'm not going to lie. What's crazy is all top three pick teams actually all have great point guards. The Spurs, Kings, and Bobcats. Spurs have Tony Parker. Just drafted Kyle Lowry, although he is two years in and an 80 overall, so I could, you know, we can make some rationalization there. And the Kings, Rajon Rondo. You know what? Let's just go cook at the draft. I, I think I have my, my plan set in place with the San Antonio Spurs first overall pick. Give them a little energy, a little more balance. We're going to give them, crazily enough, Russell Westbrook to be their new two guard the sac 
Sacramento Kings are number two overall. So once again, he has Rajon Rondo, Gerald Green, so on and so forth. But honestly, the talent of Derrick Rose is something you do not pass up on when you're a team of, you know, of a lower level or so. And put Derrick Rose on the Sacramento Kings. The Charlotte Bobcats are next up. Once again, they have Kyle Lowry, Lou Aldang. Matter of fact, a lot of bucket getters. And I think that another one wouldn't hurt too much. Potentially a franchise changing one. Michael Beasley, welcome to Charlotte. OKC Thunder are next up on the board. And they just straight up have nobody. Matter of fact, also, yeah, this is this is Seattle, now OKC. So there's that as well. Yeah, they, they straight up, they just, they just don't have anything. I'll go ahead and draft them the player that we know definitively is the next best player. Kevin Love will go to OKC. New Orleans Hornets still in New Orleans. This squad's already got Mike Conley, Brandon Roy, Raymond Felton as well. Really, it's just a matter of, well, first of all, they already have Varajan Bynum, so still don't really need a center. Just a matter of getting the best player available, and I do genuinely think that they should take another shot at a franchise-changing bucket getter. I'm not going to lie. I don't know how long. Brandon Roy is what? He's been in the league for two years now. He's still a 77. I would expect him to be a higher overall. I don't know what's going on over here. All it seems like he had a, his minutes slighted or his role cut down or something of the nature. Maybe because Mike Conley got there, Raymond Felton's there. I don't know. Take another shot in the dark. Go ahead and throw OJ Mayo over there. Boston's on the clock. And yes, Jameer Nelson needs teammates. Remember that sentiment that I have shared before. David Lee has not panned out into anything. I don't think you get a franchise changing guy at this spot in the draft. They already have Jeff Green, so I'm not running to get Gallinari. I think DeAndre Jordan or Brooke Lopez. DeAndre is kind of intriguing because Jameer Nelson played a lot with Dwight Howard, so that would, you know, be a natural fit. But I do think that Brooke Lopez gives them some more dynamic offensive options. And at the end of the day, DeAndre Jordan is not Dwight Howard. So uh, I'm going to go with Brooke Lopez to them. Milwaukee Bucks are next up. Now this team with Ben Gordon, Kevin Durant, LaMarcus Aldridge. They do need both a point guard and a center. There's a few interesting options like uh, actually Serge Ibaka is very interesting actually now that I think about it. But, you know I'm gonna give him a real big dog next to a uh, LaMarcus Aldridge. I feel like he tends to enjoy when he has like a center like a real center next to him a traditional center and all of their centers are old anyways. I could go and get Goran Dragic to play point guard. He is a little bit older though. I'm kind of scared that he's uh, gonna get like keek a little bit because you know or whatever. I'll go with DeAndre Jordan for them. Just that's the vibes I'm feeling. Minnesota has Marcus Gasol, Danny Granger, Jose Calderon, and JJ Redick as their core right now oh yeah with brandon bass aka draymond but those guys i just said i think it's like the easiest pick in the world y you get serge Ibaka here you just go serge Ibaka. man the underperforming warriors well to be fair well yeah they're, they're just underperforming. they're not that good matter of fact i'm about to explore the market right now see what another team would want for rookie davis sixers are a lost cause Pacers, on the other hand are actually a little bit in and out of competing they could just give us the 13th pick for ricky davis or you know the warriors the 13th pick and maybe their second round pick as well and ac law like i said they're like in and out of com competing competing recently they don't have a legit two guard this is perfect this is perfect so yeah go ahead and just trade ricky davis for this just get him out of your, off your hands but once again the warriors on the clock need to be reset a little bit got a bunch of free agents but also you're not getting your franchise changing guy at this spot once again i do think Dragic or eric gordon is the high you know I, i'm feeling eric gordon for them right here i'm feeling eric gordon i feel like he has a higher ceiling a lot of injuries and stuff kind of held them back made him into like a, a, a sharp shooter with the rockets and everything and also getting traded from his you know franchise role the kings are on the clock again actually right yeah i already got the kings derrick rose so good to say that uh you know we're, we're, we're good with guards here but you know what literally quite literally need exactly what's available right now just a tall young wing alongside Thaddeus young more of a shooter go ahead and get them danilo gallinari this is a very deep draft which is why i'm still around drafting right now the mavericks up feel like they should have been worse dang Mecca okafor left utah i did not know that wow that is that is crazy and you know what this is the exact team without one one look i saw they have Derek fisher draft them goran Dragic. sixers on the clock and man oh man they might be giving up real soon so just there's not many many great players available right now it does say george hill could have all-star potential i doubt it so i'll just go with him since they're saying he's best available and the warriors back on the clock again after the pick i traded ricky davis for and screw it it seems like the next high floor high ceiling type of guy is actually roy hibbert who was a one-time all-star we'll go ahead and bring them him here not a huge trade but you know just uh training with ricky davis for roy hibbert but you know it puts you back in, in the right right direction because this team yeah this team has nowhere to go from where they are mavericks on the clock again i just drafted them goran Dragic. honestly at this point it's really a matter of just best player available which is why actually just send the draft yeah just send the draft spurs get westbrook number one overall just feel like d rose needs the ball in his hands more westbrook maybe actually crazily enough has a better chance of developing as like a catch and shoot shooter at the beginning of his career i don't know kind of gives me that vibe mm, look at that and the warriors get 
a steal in the second round. Mario Chalmers. I'll even give them Damian Rudez. And yeah, the Cavs got screwed over bad. They didn't get nobody. Not a soul. Dang, Nicholas Batum fell in the second round to the Lakers. And Bill Walker, who changed the name to Henry Walker. You know, shout out to him. I remember him. I'd be using him on those NBA hoop grid things. I know he played for the Heat and the Knicks and the Celtics. All right, now this is this is crazy, dog. You want to decline Danny Granger's team option, but he just averaged 24 points for you. I am not letting that happen. Yeah, I'm going to start looking through these a little more carefully because, well, I usually just don't look through them. I support letting David Lee go. He has done nothing for you. 25 years old, 77 overall for $5 million. Yeah, no. And the Hornets are trying to let Brandon Roy go. I'm not going to lie. I might just need to fix him up a little bit because, Jesus. The Knicks declining Darren Williams team option. Maybe they have some more uh ideas on the way i don't know why would you do that was that who they drafted yeah no keep him around keep him around go through the last year with him i don't know what you're doing that's the other thing i do think that the spurs will resign i'm gonna just make sure they they definitely resign tony parker you know they have too much potential over there in san antonio but uh i mean hey if they don't there you go you have russell westbrook now kobe's a free agent too and he oh my am i the one to deny kobe going to the knicks no no i'm not so uh if that happens man oh man because to be honest even though Shaq's an all NBA player, this supporting cast is not cutting it right now. It's actually funny because when you look back on the Lakers of 01, 02, 03, or I guess 2000, 01, 02, the supporting cast actually was pretty terrible. Devin George was like their third leading scorer in all of those years and everything, but it didn't matter because it's Kobe and Shaq. And granted, it's still to this day, you know, they'd be a dominant team, but I do think that the supporting cast aspect of things matters way more nowadays. And to be fair though, their supporting cast was way more normal in the NBA than, than it is now like it was a little more mediocre and that was just more so the norm like iverson made it to the finals with basically no second option man the rockets offering tony parker too man jesus do we think that'd be enticing to him because let me see them right yao ming quentin oh who's a who's a rockets free agent because i swear they had a point guard was it oh, oh steve francis like all these years has been man i don't know i might let the script script maybe russell westbrook and tim duncan is the future or well, in like the like next four or five years maybe that's the fight i should have imagined in my head you know uh, tony parker i mean he did get in like a bar fight didn't he once upon a time okay now kevin garnett now we're going too far right kevin garnett should very clearly be a heat lifer there is no reason for him to leave that team unless he's being traded for picks like how the nets or the, the you know that whole thing but cavaliers is actually abysmal that is a dumb idea stupid idea matter of fact once again actually throw him the no trade clause and everything just make sure he doesn't leave odds are he won't be traded anyways all right for dwight howard why is he not being offered anything another stupid team make sure that dwight howard is being offered by his team you know now alan I oh spurs lose tony parker sign alan iverson would be very what's crazy is they haven't even offered tony parker so this whole narrative might actually be you know a true thing now honestly this whole colby bryant Knicks thing is sounding good to me it's sounding dandy and the lakers seem like they're they think that they're gonna get kobe right but then if you're not gonna get kobe you probably should be focusing on maybe trying to extend out that shack thing for at least trying it for another year or whatever so why not go and offer where's jason richardson been all these years oh yeah the nets they were better than they should have been last year let's let's see how you know he would feel about offering him a four-year your deal right he won't fall off for his 31 probably maybe a little bit didn't even know sean livingston's already been in the league for this wrong but raptors make sure you lock this man up for a long time and not in jail shout out to tory lanes only said him because you know toronto sean marion phoenix they are gonna re-sign him iguodala should re-sign with the knicks but if it meant getting kobe but i will say though sometimes teams are stupid you don't realize you have the bird rights you could sign both of them if you wanted to so let's offer them ray allen should be a guarantee re-sign with the raptors you guys just won the championship come on now man get your head straight he is 32 i'm gonna say try and offer him a four-year deal not a five-year deal try and you know what i'm saying restructure so maybe even a three but we'll go four at the end of the day he helped you win a ring you kind of earned that luxury after you help a team win a ring rockets have been fantastic with paul pierce i don't understand why they already wouldn't be trying to you know what i'm saying offer him something but that could be another team he's 30 that would want you know a shack teammate paul pierce he was actually just talking about that uh recently that he's like oh i'm better than d wade da, 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 da. now actually this is going to be a kind of a forward thinking thing right here a team that could use and i'm just making sure before i say it because you probably already saw the team but a team that could use a player like steve francis who's out there in free agency if they wanted you know what i'm saying quit the tanking up early now get to contending real quick i gotta check out old steve francis as well if it'd be worth it but hey man he is 30 but who cares the bucks man kevin durant
Durant. Why not start cooking? Offer Steve Francis a nice deal, right? Sharif Abdul Rahim got an offer from the Pistons. Works with me. I mean, uh, he was the guy that was averaging like 28, though, right? I don't want him to just go nowhere. Oh, never mind. That's not nowhere. Yeah, yeah. They they have they I forgot they have Gilbert Arenas. Yep, go ahead. Go. Enjoy your time. I'd say Jason Terry should be an easy re-signing for the Hawks because he has been elite for them. It's just they haven't had too much success in the deep into the playoffs. But either way, I, I personally would say that uh, at least give him a three-year deal with a team option, I would say, is probably the best idea. He'd be on crack to not re-sign J.R. Smith, Portland. That man is already averaging 20 plus. He's an 86 and he's 22. You would actually be insane. Clippers, same with you and Josh Smith. Hey, look, the Nuggets got the priority straight. Devin Harris about to get re-signed to a five-year. Look at that. Jermaine Lawson, if you could find your way out of Boston, I'll let you rock because they have been, you know, I'm saying doing you terrible. And that's it actually for free agency. That's really it. Let me see where Kobe Bryant signed. Did he decide to go back to the Lakers? Was it the Knicks? Kobe Bryant has agreed to a three-year deal with the Knicks. They will also keep Andre Iguodala, Sean Livingston, and Ray Allen back to the Raptors. Tony Parker and what? All right. Yeah, uh, that's true. They Can they even afford this? I guess they can. Oh, wow. They could just afford both Tony Parker and Paul Pierce. That is crazy. If anything, they actually have even more cap holes they could get rid of. Like, just get rid of this guy for good measure. And the Spurs as of day one got nobody. Currently just ever so slightly cooked. Allen Iverson still, I don't think I signed anywhere. So there's also that. And last very important one, where are the Lakers at? They're going to get Jason Richardson with Kobe Bryant out of there. Allen Iverson now has 13 offers, but his number one offer being from the San Antonio Spurs. And that sounds perfectly fine by me. I'm also surprised that Sean Murray didn't accept his deal yet. And all these should go as I already anticipated them to go. Antoine Jameson, the Bulls. That's cool. Let's just simulate to a day one of this. Oh my God. How did Kobe find his way back? Kobe's what? Kobe is 29. It might have been because I screwed it up because I signed uh, Andre Iguodala. What if we do like a fake little sign and trade? But let me see. So if I go to Kobe right now, how much over? They are 6 million over the cap. Not terrible. But here's what we'll do actually. Michael Red, send him over to the Lakers. They'll still be very competitive for at least the next few seasons. In return, screw it. Take Robin Lopez actually and a very protected first round pick. That's about that. So send him over there and then make sure Kobe Bryant signs and I'll be basically the sign and trade. Oh, brother. I'm what, what am I off by? One million? Man, go go just hand the Lakers another player. I don't care. Oh, Jefferson prepared to. Oh, no. What are we going to do? Yep. Kobe is officially a Nick. And actually, I feel like if I go over here and look at the Spurs, yep. There goes Allen Iverson. Four year deal to join them. The last run of his career, he will be alongside uh, Russell Westbrook. Another bulldog, you know, not undersized player, but undersized in NBA terms. Guy who plays larger than his height is, just like AI did. And that's basically it for free agency. Let it rock. The Spurs get obviously aging AI. I mean, that was, you know, with a given. So we'll see how this skull goes. Westbrook could stay at the one now. I could have hypothetically drafted D Rose there, but you know, they're they're basically the same guy. Kobe, 99 overall with Iguodala, Jermaine O'Neal. I'll definitely move Iggy to the three now that Michael Red's gone as well. And shout out to him. Low key, you know what the Knicks did in this? They literally did what the Brooklyn Nets did in real life when they got KD and Kyrie. How I had had Michael Red on the team to like kind of make them like a fake contender, like a fake playoff contender you know solid team and all the all the young guys got better basically like the spencer dimwitties the d'angelo russells and they you know showed their playoff team and kobe said oh screw it i don't like Shaq anymore i'm pulling up and the thing is you gotta remember i didn't even tell him to do it he just wanted to he just wanted to go to new york and i'm like yeah, i'll go with the flow i ain't complaining man cavaliers have nobody still right they even lost their pick right yeah they they got cooked bad so uh rodney stuckey's gonna have you know the weight of cleveland on his shoulders yet again 2008 overweight obviously 09 is crazy in itself also this is a, just as a note which by the way it is crazy this team still doesn't want anything they even signed vin baker they got now who i just now noticed i didn't even know he was here but they have a whole starting five 80 plus two role players and then four, three 94 plus players and no ring it is criminal that they have not won now for like some of the rookies as of late well obviously chris paul's a 96 playing out of his mind winning the ring already marcus saw's up to a 79 jj reddick's actually an 80 jr smith probably peaks around an 87 but we ball greg Odin's up to an 87 with absolutely no teammates are going to sign some scrubs alongside him probably and i really hate this game because why did it just make michael beasley not get better than a 78 oh wait he just got drafted i forgot i completely forgot and i'm actually going to move him to the four off rip that is what they need so in the modern nba he fits that four way better so it is what it is i mean it's it's not modern yet but it is what it is i was so excited to see him progress i checked before we played a game all right well i don't know of anything you know urgent i need to get to right now so screw it just simulate matter of fact i want to see how well yeah screw 
record. I'll stay on the Knicks, yeah. KG wins another MVP. Michael Beasley, rookie of the year, 27, 11, 3, 1, and 2. Granted, he's on the Bobcats, but he's also a bucket. Sean Livingston, another six man of the year. Tim Duncan, DPOY. Rodney Stuckey, most improved with 28, 5, and 5 a game from his 14 last year in his rookie season, where he didn't start as well. So, yeah, he's got the, you know, world on his shoulders right now. And like I said, and Doc Rivers, coach of the year. D Wade, T Mac, KG, LeBron, and Tim Duncan, first team. Gilbert, J Kidd, Josh Smith, Mello, and Shaq, second and third team. Tony, Stuckey, Boozer, Michael Beasley, and Yao Ming. I swear to you, I changed nothing except for, um, except for his potential, which has nothing to do with this season. So he would have done this regardless. Defensive first team, there goes Kobe, who did not make, usually doesn't have like the all around stat numbers to make an all NBA team in these loaded 2K Sims. And then, uh, yeah, there you go, second team. Oh, all rookie first team, Kevin Love, Eric Gordon, actually. Surprisingly enough, I did not expect him to play this much, but he did. He's a 75, but 22 points per game is incredible. Kevin Love also 20, Derek Rose 17, and Russell Westbrook 17 in that Spurs system. And DJ Augustine, who actually didn't pick playing well over there in Dallas, or well, you know, he got picked eventually, but not by me. T Mac led the league in scoring, Carlos Boozer in rebounds, assists, Jason Kidd, Jason Kidd in steals, blocks, and Shaquille O'Neal. Field goal percentage, Dwight Howard, and three more percentage, Vince Carter. I did not actually do anything this season. I just realized, I guess, screw, this is a year of evaluation and um, nothingness. And well, the Wizards with Bonzi Wells of the three and Re Greg Oden were the second worst team in the league to the Warriors with their whole reset, you know, organizational stuff. Eric Gordon has come off the bench right now. I, I could see why he played a lot because they have nobody. The Kings also pretty terrible. 28 wins, which is bottom at least six even though they have rondo gerald green desmond mason thaddeus young al jefferson derrick rose on the bench i never thought about that so i had to pick derrick rose because he fit the best with this team but at the end of the day yeah him and rondo don't really coexist i knew this drafting him as at least both of them gotta at least have the shooting guard tag so it could at least maybe happen you know they can they can move some stuff make some happen but i'm not surprised to see the, the how, how they handled that you know now what i really gotta see is there any good teams that just missed the playoffs okay so the mavericks i did not think sharif abdul rahim was going here i thought he was going to the pistons he went here got his bag and might get traded sooner than later because my god yeah there's no point in him being there uh kevin loves wow kevin loves thunder that he single-handedly basically led did fantastic for what you know they, they are better than vince carter and pow's grizzlies who need to break up that team is just terrible and then uh mike conley's hornets did okay andrew bynum becoming an 82 overall that's pretty good yeah that's really that for the the west but for the east the pacers who were showing some light at a certain point are doing really nothing now the nets who got jr brimmer in the offseason season they're there yeah they're not that great it's a lot of tough mediocrity hey teams can get some solid returns for these guys and i might need to look into like getting richard jefferson returns this offseason Kenyon martin that type of stuff because after soon it's going to be no value for these type of guys they're also not putting up crazy numbers so if anything jr bremer was the best score on the team at least in the perimeter so i don't know it's just confusing the bobcats made the playoffs with kyle lowry lou will luau deng michael beasley and Al Horford starting five. Matter of fact, they didn't just make the playoffs. They won 50 games. The Knicks, of course, made it with Kobe Bryant. I can't just say, of course, a lot of stuff can happen in these, but, you know, expectedly. The Bulls are back in it pretty firmly with 51 wins. Oh, actually, yeah, the Raptors have more wins than them, way more. The Raptors had 60 wins, but got bounced to fourth because of the division thing. And yeah, the Bulls are third, still cooking back in the playoffs, and then the Heat and Magic expectedly. Whereas the Rockets with Paul Pierce, and now I forgot, Tony Parker, yes, uh, 24 points per game over here he did put 33 up two years ago but nonetheless spurs still made it with Allen iverson and why is russell westbrook coming off of the bench i have no clue greg popovich unless he retired is on something over there let me go and look because i already know they're gonna have like the old young thing probably nope they don't but hey let me edit that let come on dog dog start russell westbrook man jesus he he's earned this i mean he hasn't but he deserves it also dante jones is an absolute stinker darko was an 87 by the way averaging 17 11 on the jazz and they are the second seed with big z as his backup manu andre miller this team has been one of the most naturally formed kind of naturally i did sign manu here because i was like screw it nobody wants him why not this team's got a lot of money they brought in andre miller they've had andre karolenko they brought in tim thomas darko was a obviously a draft pick as a 
remnant after the you know the big four went getting him and then his potential actually being good because i made it good the suns with mediocre jeff and marcin kind of mediocre sorry marcin in the starting lineup of the third seed nuggets back to being a top four spot the trailblazers steve nash trade seems to be a pretty good idea for them as he's still 35 and an 88 overall where they got jr smith zach randolph they're pretty solid 53 wins which is tied with the spurs and the lakers still kind of competitive i thought they would be a little bit more competitive they got a 90 and 86 and 81 79 81 in the starting point guard 80 in the starting point guard slot but they won 42 games tied with the clippers actually who are overperforming still to this day don't have much other than that i actually have to look out for maybe getting a free agent for them because man they they need something or a trader man something all right first round blazers hawks pistons lakers clippers bobcats suns and knicks out of here and second round raptors bulls rockets and spurs out of here so there was actually no upset except for the uh the suns losing to the actually the spurs with Allen iverson and russell westbrook was an upset marbury mary and elton brand got out of there but no other upsets in the first yet in the second round the rockets the first seeded rockets lost to denver so amari stoudemire chris bosh and then we're going back to the conference finals it is orlando versus my versus miami for another year you know it originally it was just d wade and t mac now you got dirk over there and it was just lebron with nobody else but now he's got kg obviously for some years now i think they have multiple rings right then you got bosh amari rip hamilton Corey maggetti and devin harris against the jazz team that i was just going over three and a half seconds ago orlando is actually up 2-0 to start this series but now it's tied 2-2 miami never lets up and they up they never let up let's see is that one gonna end oh no okay i gotta finish this one first miami is going to win game seven come back from down 2-0 and yet again smoke the magic the magic just don't have it i gotta look into maybe making a trade for shoot somebody dirk had a triple double but they might need to look to move backwards because this whole big three experiment is not working maybe the bench is just that trash like i see Rodmanovic shot 34 percent through 16 games i don't know and for game seven over here nuggets versus utah love that no old nuggets logo it reminds me of uh you know young ty lawson young nikola Jokic, and the nuggets are gonna make it to the finals yet again i don't remember if we got this matchup already but heat versus nuggets first bosh versus lebron uh kg versus amari and so on and so forth the nuggets very deep all around team the heat cooking 125 97 game one james garnett man oh man the nuggets up a pretty convincing lead five point win bosh and stoudemire take the win one to one i don't even think i said anything when the last game ended and oh wow this one just got really close all of a sudden i have no clue what the series is i completely drew a blank chris anderson at the line the first one or the only one is good what the hell is that oh, yo, i'm not gonna lie i'm not gonna lie though okay it is 7 a.m and yeah 7 a.m as in i haven't slept why did i just say he made that free throw he bricked the hell out of that free throw devin harris passed down to amari my dog amari in the post amari body up oh snap he'll take the lap he bricks the hell out of it pass up to lebron james l james to be exact um i did just say his full name though and he hits the layup lebron ties it up with 60 seconds to go 59.6 harris the screen by amari he stops he'll wait for marty to get into the post guarded by kg amari whoa a weird hook very terrible shot jesus yeah amari number 32 you're gonna be ordering number one soon or you know processing orders at a mcdonald's drive through buddy if you take another one of those shots hello rip hamilton go ahead oh joe keem's on this team wow i forgot joe keem was on this team rip how man rip hamilton's like crossover looks so realistic well, that's kind of niche but whatever um pass down to amari again amari against kg he does a post whatever the hell and then hits a shot there's a post hop away from the the basket and then turns towards the basket i guess it worked hey it got kg off him a little bit enough to hit that layup and a two-point lead for denver and for the record it's currently 2-2 in the series so this to take a 3-2 lead i think i see omar asik on the on that's definitely him right there omid ashik i you know one of the only ones that i think i probably said before is that i hate when people say rajon rondo i like rajon Rajan Rondo, you know, I don't know what way you're supposed to say it, but I don't care. I think it's supposed to be Rajan, you know, it sounds more correct. It looks like they're going to set up Kevin Garnett in the post. LeBron's not even on the court right now, but you can't really go wrong with a KG post up. Two seconds to go. KG, he will post hook it and hit it with 0.2 to go. Kevin Garnett post hook. KG just a high intensity bastard. I think I heard someone recently, whether it was a friend or it was someone like an NBA personality on Twitter or as a player, said that playing Kevin Garnett, like early young Kevin Garnett, was like playing tall michael jordan because he really did have the entire skill set like not you know the fluidity to fully the fluidity because obviously he you know he's like a, a six inches tall 
shoulder almost, but he almost did. Maggetti the pass in and Joe Keen will take the shot. He hits it, but it does not count. Come on, dog. It's 0.2 seconds left. Someone in the comments just got incredibly excited at that shot. Me knowing good and well did not count, dog. It is 0.2 seconds left in the game. And the Nuggets are currently running away with it, just even though through the KG uh, fake game winner, game tying shot, five point win by the Nuggets. LeBron had 45, KG had 38, but the Nuggets overall effort was way better. Is that Quintel Woods? Look at him. Hell, even Chris Bosh only had six points on two for 10 shooting and they win. I think I even just seen a guy with eight turnovers or something. I don't know, dog. It is ugly over there, but they got more of a team. The Heat though, storming back, tied up and force a game seven. LeBron 37-15, KG had 34 and a bunch of rebounds, but Miami is going to run away with it. They have done it. 30 and 16, 25, 12 and 12 from LeBron, 30 and 16 for KG to be exact, 24, 9 and 3 from Joe Johnson, 8 and 11 from Mike Bibby, and uh, Devin Harris showed up with 20. Amari, I mean, 18, four blocks, four steals, pretty solid. Chris Bosh, yet again, kind of mediocre game, five for 11. I mean, they got a lot of guys taking shots. Rip Hamilton also three for 11, two for eight from Eddie Jones, one for nine from Joakim Noah. Just a, a overall blunder. Kevin Garnett wins a finals MVP. I believe Braun had won every other one because that's their third, right? Yeah, third in four years with last year, obviously being that a uh, crazy, what's it called one, that Chris Paul one. And Shaq is trying to retire. He does have zero years left in his contract. I'm going to, hey, with this being said, I'm going to let Shaq go wherever the hell he has interest in. And I'm, I'm going to bring him back. You know, he's still an 87 overall positive talent for this league. Also, Jalen Rose is out of here. Yeah, I, I already overrode his retirement once. Same with Eddie Jones and all of them. Kurt Thomas, you got one more in you, buddy. Jason Williams is out of here. He's only a 75. You can get to step in if you want. And the Hall of Fame inductees, yeah, I was about to say it's going to be nobody because I took Shaq out of it. Look at that. Even has like, oh, uh, well, that just says heat because I'm on the heat. Never mind. All right. So this is a huge draft, obviously. It is the one for Steph Curry. But, you know, I hate when players like, let me see. Okay. Yeah. Blake. No, no, no. Blake's is accurate. The dude I'll be downloading from. He does a great job. They do a big Doug Swan, man. Shout out to you. You do a great job with these draft classes, unless this is just 2K stuff and you just added some players to it. Because Blake was around, you know, at 93 at most. But me personally, I'm going, hey, put, give him a little bit more assurance even for that. You know what I'm saying? 88 plus. Because, dog, Blake Griffin was literally a generational talent. Go watch the top dunks thing. And I know it's sure, oh, it's just dunks, but there's a reason why he's got the entire top 10 plays of the 2010s almost oh yeah james harden's in here too and demar Derozan, and drew holiday and a bunch of other people i'm gonna go through and make sure everybody's looking great the reason why i respect a guy like james harden a lot um in comparison to like the thing is is that i know a lot of people you know we got a lot of james harden fans i would assume in the world like it's not like you know he's like a completely hated or overlooked player but i feel like during his prime he was very overlooked and you know we would talk about him because he was breaking every record in the world but when he wasn't he wasn't talking about as much or mostly just talk about how he's like a playoff choker all this type of stuff right but the thing is like i feel like all the time as nba fans were like oh snap i wish this guy who didn't pan out like for like a lot of people including myself like a michael beasley or a uh or a jabari parker or like a th i wish this guy who could get buckets or even the romanticization of like you know like the great scores that weren't really that efficient like the six men type of guys you know it's like all you see is positivity and highlight reels for them but then all you hear about james harden is oh snap he eats too much he goes too many clubs and he can't win in the playoffs so it's like me personally when a guy's averaging 40 i'm gonna respect it i appreciate the hell of it and i still think he should have won the 2017 mvp as well you know demar to Rose and Max 87 is disrespectful. Okay, I will say that he has been 91, 92 for like the past 10 years almost. Todd Gibson, 24 year old rookie. My God, you old bastard. I already knew that, but it's just crazy seeing it. All right, so for this draft lottery, obviously the unanimous should be number one overall pick. And wow, Kings via Washington. Is that from the Asia trade right or something like that i do think i yeah I, I do think i traded this king's pick to to from or the wizards pick to the kings um also celtics via philadelphia was that from the antoine walker trade yeah philly you guys sold by falling off this soon man man oh man wow very interesting i am watching the fumbling of my own move that i am making with every team in control all right uh but then again i could just script it up and say oh the pick was protected sorry guys forgot to tell you but i won't it's kind of fun the warriors kings cavaliers celtics twice and timberwolves who will get the first overall picks it is the next what? Wait, wait, wait. The Nets with the 13th odds? I got to see that in real time because this is going to be the exact same. Hold on. Pacers get 14th. No way the Nets jump up from... 
13 to 1. The winner of the 13th pick is the Nets moving to the top three. And it is the Nets. The Warriors get two. Where were the Warriors at? They oh, they well, that's crazy. I didn't even think about that. They were one. And then the Kings via the Washington pick. And then yeah, the Celtics also kept that other pick. And wow, it, that is insane. I already went over the whole prospects and everything. Let's just man oh man. So Brooklyn, huh? Or well, not Brooklyn yet. Still New Jersey. Kenyon Martin, Richard Jefferson. And honestly, they don't really need a trade if, if if they just pick steph i mean jr brimmer is not you know what i'm saying if steph comes in and makes an immediate impact this team could kind of just roll in the stride well Kenyon is a Kenyon is a free agent which means though they probably have some decent money oh yeah everybody's a free agent except for like two people so they probably have some decent money to bring a free agent in alongside steph the nets are on the clock and yes yeah, steph number one overall without a doubt for sure no doubt did not expect that number two so the golden state warriors now they have nobody eric gordon was just cooking uh roy hibbert but that's basically it they just started their rebuild so it is safe to say best player available is the safest action to go here and that is going to be without a doubt james harden joining eric gordon again ironically that is kind of funny them for their whole careers is a, is a nice scene to think of so next up is sacramento who obviously this actually just about works perfectly for them because this is literally the perfect pick for them because obviously they're already kind of loaded with Derek Rose and Rajon Rondo. The thought of having a trade probably Rondo within the next few years is, uh, you know, more and more likely right now in this free agency after a uh, right, right, you know what I'm saying? So a team that needs a point guard or something, you know, might be a star for star type of trade before he expires from his team option. They weirdly let him walk or have to re-sign him like they really want him or something like that, you know? That East Young, great power forward, but if you want a better power forward, hey man, let me tell you, you can't hurt to have Blake Griffin the number three overall ranked player for sure next best guy up will be a great top power forward for years to come now next up the cavaliers actually have a pick rodney stuckey just one most improved player i think i just saw brandon knight or no no no, no, no. that's got that's gonna be brevin knight because brandon knight's down the league yet so they're saying ricky rubio number four um no way in hell with this pick i am not messing around with them i will be going with the next best player available obviously another bucket getter yeah demar Derozan. He will be next up to the Cavaliers. Nice little franchise player, potentially decent player to start a little rebuild. Now the Celtics finally can get themselves another nice teammate alongside uh, Jameer Nelson, Jeff Green. I swear I drafted them. Uh, oh no, I, yeah, I got them Brooke Lopez. Okay. You know, they don't have many high potential type of picks. And I know sure like a Tyreek Evans. I mean, that's a, this is actually, I, I'm not gonna lie. I, I was just, you know, looking at his potential and everything. And uh, I mean, I, I know what he is. I, I might've given him a little bit of a boost. Cause the thing is with guys that fall off early, they're like oh let's make it so that they only become an 80 overall no, no 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 buddy you were an 84 he won rookie of the year like i'm gonna make you so you fall off when you're like 29 but you're gonna have a good prime for like nine years so my thought here is between tyreek evans and drew holiday and honestly when you really think about it jameel ne jameer nelson re-signed for another three years he is old as hell been here his whole career not old as hell but old as hell for a rebuild they need a shooting guard shout to nick young but i'm gonna i'm gonna give them tyreek evans actually it could be pretty interesting and actually wait they're back to back and i'm not gonna mess around and be like oh let's draft by fit now no 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 no, no. just give me drew holiday yeah just give me both i think i just said chris broussard something about talking about i'm so high on drew holiday's perimeter defense man oh man that's a good take all right next up danny granger jose calderon Gr granger's expiring it didn't seem like they wanted to keep him around last time around he isn't really this is kind of this is danny granger's ceiling to be fair i would say like his ceiling 2k rating wise is like 84 85 but buckets just straight buckets not much else and that's what he's giving you uh i wouldn't get rid of him personally but honestly they have a lot of money a lot of you know potential here with whatever they feel like doing this offseason i don't know you know probably not an attractive free agent destination i could get them ricky rubio again like in real life at this point there's not a high 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 uh what's it called potential player so you might as well just get a good fit solid fit which really though they just have their whole starting five laid out right here so you know it really is just best player available for them because i didn't even mess with johnny flynn i just let him be a bust i'm sorry johnny you know what jose collar it is very possible that he leaves i usually don't go over the 80 overalls anyways why not man i feel like we've seen the uh, importance for like a team like utah and just getting good basketball players and putting them on the team i'll go ahead and pick them up ricky rubio man minnesota legend ricky rubio goes back all right sacramento so i already drafted them who was it again wasn't it like the top pick in the draft um yeah blake griffin okay cool now, the sad thing with this team is that i know they do not need another point guard but they also they've also got a good array of talent anyways not like they're in dire need of any position to be fair but the other thing is, is that there's really only point guards available at the very least i'll go with a point guard with some height to him give me 
me Jeff Teague. It says he'd be an all-star. He's a solid back at the end of the day. Next up is New Orleans Hornets again, right? Or no, they actually don't have a pick yet. So Mike Conley, Andrew Bynum, Brandon Roy, hopefully with some potential now because I kind of fixed them a little bit. OJ Mayo or Brandon could play the three. And then, you know what I'm saying? They play alongside each other. What's well, looking like this team's missing one thing and it's a four, like very much so. But you know what? Like Todd Gibson and uh, and whoever the hell else is too much. Or Jonas Yurepko is a too far of a drop for me to not pick someone like a nice backup point guard, maybe potential starter if Mike Conley ever has to get dealt. I'll go with Ty Lawson, the Hornets. Ah, yes. The very, very promising Bucks. Although they, I guess they did nothing this year. But KD, Steve Francis, LaMarcus Aldridge. You know what? Oh, no. They already got Boogie. I mean, not Boogie. What the hell? DeAndre Jordan. Jesus. Actually, screw it. Steven, Steve Francis is old. This is one of the teams that could actually use a point guard. I'll go Brandon Jennings, Mr. 50 points in the rookie season. Next up, the Grizzlies. And oh, man. Yeah, they, they got to restart soon. So for sure, draft them just the best player available, which isn't going to be too great. But you know what? Actually, no, nah, forget it. I was about to say I might just draft the machine to beat and see if he could become good. So I think I'm about to pull off a blockbuster right now. Three team trade in the NBA draft. So Vince Carter is going to be heading to the Portland Trailblazers to join Steve Nash, J.R. Smith, Wally Zerbiak, Zach Randolph, etc., etc. Try and help them compete. The thing is, Vince Carter is a 26 point per game, incredibly efficient score, and they are a pretty solid overachieving team right now that needs like that last piece to maybe put it all together, maybe make a deep run. Shane Battier and Tony Allen are going to be going to the Knicks in the trade where the Grizzlies will be returning with just one young player, Ryan Anderson, um, some future first from Portland, as well as their first this year. I forget which one it is, but it's not that great, which is why I called up a third team in the first place to throw away even more assets because the Knicks had two first in like the next 10 picks, you know, nothing too crazy. And then just asked for one more pick. And there you go. You could have some nice role players, 83 and 81 overall for basically free. I mean, not free. It's it's picks. So, you know, I'm saying we'll, we'll throw a, a, a nice um, second in there as well. Why not? I'll throw I'll throw it in next year's second. I don't feel like adding that many players to the Grizzlies right now. And yeah, that's it. Vince Carter, Grizzlies era. Also, Pau Gasol is a free agent for the Grizzlies. They could decide if they want to keep him or not or just call it a day because it has not been working over here, dog. And there it is. The Grizzlies are still on the clock, except now they are reset entirely, basically. And you might be like, oh, you should have traded Vince Carter for another star and you could have yada, 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 you know, try to get with Pau, but dog, it it Powell's had like what how many different arrangements of stars on this team and it hasn't worked so it's not like the draft uh talent is that crazy at this point i will say i think i'm gonna take the shot on johnny flynn at this pick or do i go for him rasheem i'm gonna see so johnny flynn just basically started right but i think Hashim the beat should have all star on him maybe yeah there it is screw it let's see Hashim the beat welcome to the team buddy thunder on the clock they overachieved like hell they drastically need a point guard to be next to kevin love with them i'm not really trying to play around and get a guy who might be a bust to be fair they are similar overalls anyways but darren collison is going to be a reliable guy for years to come so i'm, I'm going to pick him up for them mavericks also need a point guard screw it there you go buddy johnny flynn pacers on the clock now this is a team that is very confusing right now they have a full set starting five and everything but they are not winning anything they also don't really need anything and you know what this is my signal to simulate the rest of the draft dog because just let them make their own decision i don't know they went and picked up a uh, james johnson solid solid player shot to a Alonzo G, Dewan Blair with no ACLs. He's actually just Bob Lanier, unless I'm tweaking. Danny Green falls a little bit, but yeah. Todd Gibson falls to the second round to the Timberwolves. Look at that. The Timberwolves starting early. Damari Carroll and Garrett Temple with Chase Budinger. Man, oh man. The Bobcats got the wings of just beautiful wing pick. Patty Mills in the second round. Look at that. Look at that. Pat Beverly in the second round. Look at that, man. About to basketball. Oh, Miami would have too many two-way players. That's crazy because that is the first time I've ever clicked for, to sign a guy to a two a contract and it was on accident don't even want this guy don't it was because i was trying to decline his contract that man jj reddick averaged 26 and they're trying to get rid of him on his three-year team option man bring him back 26 from jj reddick is insane by the way mad pin down screens look at that they're actually trying to accept brandon roy's team option this year i'm so proud all right so into free agency so chris paul's out here 1000 percent already won a ring um don't know why the raptors haven't offered him already who are they trying to offer that isn't chris paul because what the hell are you doing Shaq has no offers yeah market's kind of dead over there he wrapped his go ahead dog and stop playing around give chris paul his money oh might be the first hundred million dollar contract how 
Gasol. The Grizzlies have not even offered him. It looks like he might go to the Bobcats. So I feel like I've been okay. Yeah, aren't they actually? That might be beautiful. That's the team with Michael Beasley just made it to the playoffs. That, hey, any any talent here, additional talent, that worked. I don't know why Carlos Boozer also. I don't know what the Raptors are doing out here. Good to see the Knicks still want to keep Darren Williams. Shout out to Monte Ellis. I see you. Shout out to Gerald Green. I'm going to let the market for these guys build itself up. But for now, I'll go saw probably to the Bobcats unless he doesn't accept off rip. Boozer hopefully back to the Raptors because I offered him. Kid had looked like he was going to the Bulls again. But I'm going to let the market for the rest of these guys formulate right here, right now. And yeah, I had brought Steve Nash back to the uh, Blazers on a one plus one deal with the team option. I don't know why it says they're trying to renounce the rights to Zach Randolph. I don't know why they would do that. All right. So day two and kids probably, yes, going to stay with the Bulls for two years. Pau Gasol still top offer from the Bobcats. Michael Red maybe to the Pistons. He's kind of just around at this point. It really doesn't matter where he goes. Wizards, Kenyon Martin, I guess. I don't really, I don't really co-sign that one. I mean, hey, honestly, they need players. They have nobody. Look at them. Screw it. Go ahead and simulate another day. Montales, Predator. Okay. All these players, Predator, offer, accept offers. Lakers are trying to renounce their rights to Shaq. They literally just don't want him. And also the Knicks are going to get Mike Bibby alongside Darren Williams somehow for some reason. And yeah, the Clippers are going to match Montales' deal. All right. There goes Shaq's contract. Oh, okay. Resign with the Lakers, I guess. But you know, to be fair, there's nothing really going on over there. Is there a more interesting team I could see for Shaq? I can't lie. It might just be that Bucks team. Hey, Bucks, if you guys want, you have the money for it. Yeah. Go ahead and offer Shaq a nice two year contract. You know what I'm saying? Put up money for that. Matter of fact, I'll even try and give him a one plus one, but give him a bag. Okay. Just barely missed it. Can we try again? Hell no. I could just decline it for the Lakers because honestly, I think it'd be kind of fire to see him go to the Bucks instead because the thing is with the Lakers like uh I mean Katie's gonna be as good as Jay Rich is already he already is actually yeah it's, it'd be so much better over there okay he did he agreed to the Bucks deal nice Marbury decided to stay with the Suns Mike Miller with the Magic still Michael Red left the Lakers for the Pistons Kenyon Martin sure Wizards needed players a very interesting team I think they just signed Charlie oh no they've been had Charlie Villanueva with Brandon Jennings and DeAndre Jordan off the bench man James Harden needs a teammate matter of fact who was it it was the uh the Rudy Gay team I've been talking about needs a, a teammate this one right here they could have been good for Shaq as well but you know I wanted to see you know Shaq on a contender though i can't lie let's see about getting them a center oh danny granger's to the bulls is very interesting i do think i might have to start looking at trading away like tyson chandler from the bulls to be fair though they keep on like making the playoffs there's not the deepest run and i think a good center for this clippers team could be kendrick perkins honestly i know he's not no uh, you know top tier or whatever but he's a good he's a good guy i'm gonna just simulate the rest of it it's actually a great pickup they literally their other best center was a 69 overall dog they needed that so bad and yeah the grizzlies need to tank they are terrible Terrible. They have a lot of picks now, too. I'm trading away everything and didn't even get anything for Pau Gasol, technically. So I was like, screw it. Might as well get some for Vince while you can. Also, man, can the Mavs just give up? I'm about to settle, to settle this right now, dog. 3 5 to Raheem, 26 point per game score. All right, so where can we move him, right? Also, Eddie Curry finally got out of Chicago. They did have too many centers. I could even see the two that they have. I'll, I'll just leave them around. But yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. You've been the third string. There's a good few names, too. I think Sharif might be the best, like, value you for an 86 overall in the market but like richard jefferson's out there uh jason richardson's also out there but he's a 90 but i do think the best move might be i think this hornets team might be ready to win a little bit they got brandon roy varajal oj mayo ty lawson mike conley and they actually can just take on any salary we could do like earl clark for sharif abdul rahim throw in a lottery protected pick and the only reason i say that is because i'm not gonna lie i don't want this to backfire and you know but i'm not gonna lie if i was them i wouldn't be giving up picks that i'm I'm, so I'm going to take that back, actually. I'm going to send Sharif where I always thought he was going to go, which was Dallas. Now, Sharif is 32, but he's still averaging 26 and 8 and 5, whereas Ben Wallace, who's 34, is falling off a cliff. He matches up the salary really well. They're going to have to pull some weird stuff and play some, you know, weirder guys at center. Actually, Brendan Haywood's still a 78, and he can play center, so there you go. They want a young player as well. There you go. You have De DeJuan Blair throwing a first-round pick unprotected this year, and I'll go lottery protected for the next year. There you go. Ben 
Ben Wallace and uh, Sharif Abdul Rahim can bring the Pistons maybe to a new level. I guess we'll see. Now, there's something that actually just tells me the Pacers shouldn't be giving up because, like, they still have so much talent. Well, oh, I forgot Brooklyn drafted Steph Curry or New Jersey. So I'm actually not going to trade Richard. I was about to say, let's give uh, the Nets some love and trade, you know, a player from them. But actually, no. Go back to the Pacers. They have a little bit less in terms of, you know, a promising talent. And I was going to make a trade with the Bobcats. They have Pau Gasol, Kyle Lowry overperformed, still have a decent amount of cap space. I could literally just throw them second round pick Damari Carroll. I don't even need to throw a player in there, but throw, you know, first round pick first round pick for karan butler who was averaging i have 15 i think that's only one first round pick worthy to be honest i think i know 2k better than you know because normally if you try to trade for a guy who's like this it'll take a lot more than this but i know 2k more than these guys although he is going to be a solid value player for the uh for the what's it called for the bobcats and i think he definitely holds more value than anybody else luau is kind of peaked at 79 lamar odom could also be interesting honestly they're doing like the exact same thing they're also the exact same age almost the exact same stats oh screwed i'll just do karan butler for the one pick and uh why not i'll throw in garrett temple as another filler and uh a second karan butler to the bobcats and i'm not gonna lie kevin love i'm gonna give him one more year to see like is he really that guy because they played crazy well and james harden needs some help soon too matter of fact real quick uh put yeah just make Harden a point guard we'll just get it started early now pacers i probably won't offload all of their talent anyways but they're all one year deal so i was like screw it let me at least get them a first round pick for karan butler if he's gonna go dip off after this year anyways i'm a curry i'm gonna let him test his own waters see you know what i'm saying how he could do out there in basketball nba world mavericks are done for um the dirk saga honestly i think this is like a hill you kind of have to die on if if they win they win like dog you, you keep losing the conference finals i don't know i just had a very random but interesting idea so what if the jazz said hey andre miller you've been fantastic for us but it's time you, you're getting old dog let's trade you to the lakers but make it a three-team trade and get ourselves out our next franchise point guard was John Rondo, right? He would go to the Jazz. Uh, Jason Richardson would go to the Kings. So the Kings would get themselves a another, you know, a, a three, a two, a three, basically, rather than having Derrick Rose and Rondo. Richardson's only 28. He's still got a good, I would say, four, five, six years left of like still being a good basketball player. He was averaging 30-ish until he got next to Shaq, and now he can go and average good numbers over there. And then obviously, uh, Andre Miller's not going to Lakers, you know, chop liver or nothing. I'm, I'm uh, you know, add some picks. Holy hell, Adam Morrison fell off a cliff. Oh, I'm gonna throw him in the trade anyways. So, you know, since um the Jazz are giving up basically just Andre Miller and getting Rajon Rondo, who's just young, better Andre Miller, they're gonna give up two first to the Lakers who are giving up, or, you know, they're getting rid of the best player in the trade. So they'll get it two first. Andre, a chance to reset, you know, their roster and uh, call it a day on whatever, you know, the Shaq and Kobe experiment. I mean, it, it completely worked. It just fizzled out and you'll get uh, Adam Morrison. I don't know if this team has any good young players to throw their way. Actually, I'm gonna throw Jared Bayless to the Kings because they're giving up Rajon Rondo as a point guard and they do have Jeff Teague as well but just to keep stuff even I don't know uh to be fair the Lakers don't really have anybody screwed I'll let him go cook over there for a second round pick to the uh Kings for good measure there you go that's it that's the trade we're gonna do it the Lakers now have Andre Miller the Kings now Jason Richardson alongside Derek Rose in the backcourt with Gerald Green I'm gonna move to the three because he gets better and Jay Rich doesn't and that joins you know the competitive core with Blake Al Jefferson real nice that young Danilo Gallagher off the bench this is beautiful and the jazz get themselves a, a second rejuvenation with rajan rondo darko milicic erlenko is still incredibly young for how long this league has been going for and he's been here the entire time uh manu old man mo p i've really been wanting to help carmelo anthony on the hawks but i don't know what i could possibly do for him there's not like a player i could think of that's just out there that need i mean shoot greg owen is a 90 now <laughs> i mean does he need a center he kind of does right yeah chris Kamen could be better thing is is that like the wizards just haven't they they signed Kenyon. i don't know what they're doing i'm gonna give him one more year and then uh greg Oden might have to get out of there i did try to trade vince carter to Melo's team first but they didn't have the salary to match it up i'm not gonna lie if tim duncan's team sells again you never know also sean livingston 90 overall that is honestly beautiful and man Melo might just get traded to the pistons i don't know i'm just looking at opportunity scenarios that was all the people that have been watching this is a very long detailed video but we're here for the vibes man i've been enjoying a lot where ironically i i do videos that I, I actually enjoy doing like weird stuff you know newfound experiences things that i've never done here on a, on the channel which is rare because you know it's not how much creativity you can get with this game so doing stuff like this is weird but interesting i'm gonna simulate specifically to uh february like 11th 
and then look at some trades or look at teams and how they're doing and everything okay bet i'm at the date i wanted to see specifically how Melo's team was doing and oh man man oh man the hawks are phasing out yep they are not in the playoffs currently they are over 500 actually the bucks have become too good themselves and the pacers are still somehow holding on even though i traded away karan butler i mean lamar odom does do the exact same stuff the knicks with the seventh seed the pistons all right but i'm not gonna lie man i am not convinced to not trade carmelo anthony to be alongside gilbert arenas over here i feel like that oh i did just trade sharif there chauncey Billups does not need to be here if he's off the bench but he's a good ah uh, i don't know i'm i'm gonna be i'm here hey low key low key chris paul and them have not been back in how many years i want to say it's been three you hear carmelo anthony's on the trade block right okay okay it's only been a year removed it's a very tough conference all i'm saying is if you hear carmelo anthony's on the trade block you're definitely taking taking up that offer and they have the guys with the contracts to match the bulls are another very interesting one obviously i wanted jason kidd to be their guy but that's not happening you know it, it obviously didn't work he's a fantastic passer through it i think the bulls would be pretty seamless let me talk to chicago so hit up them right hawks man imagine how entertaining this league would be in real life maybe some of you've been watching that from that perspective but holy hell this would be wild in real life and uh, the thing is the hawks are like middle of the pack but the second this trade happens it's over you're giving up you've sold Melo's prime i could try and maybe get him a better supporting teammate you know that's one thing i haven't done really i'm, I'm gonna look at that real quick it's just tried mixing it up so i don't think ron artest is really working i remember i, I boosted his shot tendency up years ago like one thing i haven't done yet is but once again there's not many guys out here okay well mm, nope josh smith's team is pretty solidified i could just put him on the knicks kobe's team is not like you know moving the needle thus far and we know that sometimes in, in 2k kobe does tend to be a little bit on the weaker side of you know impact this could actually be very possible because i don't see me building a better team in atlanta than i could by just trading him to new york and giving up on atlanta because i was already thinking about detroit it's either that or detroit and because they already made their trade for you know a top tier score raptors was just in the finals two years ago rockets dog i need to see you guys make the finals man it has been a minute yeah yeah it's gotta it's gotta be new york actually actually no it doesn't it's gonna be chicago because the money does not match up correctly over here go and call the bulls there's gotta be something wrong with me right it is 8 37 a.m on a sunday and i'm drawing up a trade with um this much complication where the bulls in this trade would be receiving ron artest and carmelo anthony right the knicks are actually the third team they're going to be getting three scrubs uh, and uh antoine jameson they joined the trade because i was like well we don't really need antoine jameson over there on the hawks or i'm you know i'm talking from the hawks perspective because i was creating a trade as you know we're trading carmelo anthony right now the hawks what they'll receive in this trade is jerry stackhouse which is salary filler jason kidd which is actually kind of salary filler i might just swing him to another team in two seconds danny green a solid young player javel mcgee a solid young player same with austin day and robin lopez just young guys to be around and i'm actually gonna probably spin back and get even probably another two first round picks from them just because the hawks aren't giving up an insane amount to get ron artest and carmelo anthony for an old jason kid 36 year old jason kid which is basically just salary filler in himself for a team in the hawks that's giving up at this exact moment um yeah i just talked myself into it yep this is good but i gotta i gotta spin back and get more picks from the bulls as well so like in order to get that done you're gonna need to give up you know what i'm saying matter of fact we'll skip 20 we'll skip 20 2013 right 2012 2014 and just take a second round pick and while we're at it actually you want to just continue to build on this so we got to get rid of now uh jason kidd and jason terry too screw it now nah, i'll say that for another trade actually so kevin love is officially legit by the way they are the ninth seed yet again only seven games out of the playoffs with nobody helping him literally nobody so you know what how about we call up the thunder real quick but did i even do did i even get my picks from the uh, bulls no okay bet go ahead and just complete that trade real quick don't worry about nothing else right now and then call up the thunder man kevin love is on a tear he's not gonna get good enough picks for them at least to turn it around so uh that man is averaging 30 and 13 in the second season yeah lob raja bell and lob james white and i'm not gonna lie you could have the entire <laughs> i'm not kidding I, I i wish you best of luck you could have the whole team matter of fact i might need to work with a third team just to get more picks but you're gonna need to give up every single pick you have right at least all the ones that could fit in this trade and then we're gonna throw jay williams in here as well oh i actually uh this is a lot but hold on i'll get back to that in a second oh bet i've been wanting to give a player to the clippers for a long time just you know what i'm saying give them a uh a nice asset give them jay williams and uh oh they must be doing great this year because their pick is a one star how about you give us two first then 
Kidd. And I even just make it a little bit more reasonable. I'll split it up. So the Thunder will get Jason Kidd and Jason Terry. That's still a real solid return for getting nothing. So I will take those three picks. Since Jason Terry's still been cooking and he's still got some years on him. I'll even protect the 2012 one top 10, right? What the hell? Oh, sorry. I got to put another. Yeah, this is it. This is it. Basically, I'm getting nothing, giving away the entire team, getting a bunch of picks. This actually warrants one more from the Clippers too. Throw, throw that one top 10 protected as well. Hawks rebuild begins. They're officially wiped clean with a ton of first round picks from look at this. Yeah, they got draft capital of hell. This is Sam Presti working over here. Carmelo Anthony is out of here and he now gets to go cook in Chicago. This is a very interesting development. Indeed. Indeed. What is happening? I don't know. After that, though, just uh, I think we got to just simulate the season, man. The Lakers Andre Miller tank is working really well. And this is for the 2010 draft as well, right? The John Wall boogie. Hey, I'm not gonna lie. These guys do end up pretty great throughout time. Also, Bobcats are number one in the East with the Karan Butler trade and the Pau Gasol signing. And my Michael Beasley still averaging 21, 9, and 3. And whoever the hell Ronald Murray is averaging 17 at 30 years old. Oh, look at that. They even got Ramon Sessions again. I had no clue. He's on the Greensboro Swarm right now, which I don't even think should exist yet. Or maybe. Here, the Hawks can go ahead and tank. The Cavaliers, you guys need to tank a little bit better, dog. And I definitely thought the Celtics... Uh, actually, I take that back. Didn't expect them to be good at all. Thunder really could make that playoff push now. They have a lot of basketball players. Timberwolves really need to get lucky in the lottery because they are not going to get anywhere with Marcus Gasol and JJ Redick only, man. This is this is not it. All right, screwed. Everything looks good to me. Simulate the season, man. LeBron James wins MVP with the Heat. Ricky Rubio wins Rookie of the Year. I didn't even think about that. I did just see him on that team. Sean Livingston, Sixth Man of the Year. LeBron DPOY, JJ Barea, Most Improved. Otis Newman, Coach of the Year with the Bobcats. Look at that. What a come up for them. The Michael Beasley come up. Dwayne Wade and T-Mac both make first team, and so do LeBron and KG, and then there goes Tim Duncan. Gilbert, Lowry, Josh Smith, Paul Pierce, and Dwight Howard. What a second team. And the third team, Tony, Kobe, Carmelo, Love, and Yao. Defensive first team, Kobe, Ron, James, Karolinko, and Duncan. And here's the defensive second team, the rookie first team. So yeah, Rubio wins rookie of the year over Steph Curry, who averaged 22 and 7. James Harden, who averaged 24 and 4. DeMar DeRozan, 18 and 4. And Tyreek, Tyreek Everett's 18, 4, and 3. As well as um, Ryan Anderson, 20 points per game in Memphis because he had a lot of opportunity. John Johnny Flynn did pretty decent over there. Maurice Spates averaged 16. Jared Bayless. Season stats, league leaders. LeBron James leader, 33 points per game. Rebounds is Tim Duncan assists. Jason Kidd. LeBron in steals. Tim Duncan in points. 65% from the field from Dwight Howard and 51% for Jared Dudley, actually. His teammate from three. And actually, did that? Did the playoff chase work? No, it did not. The Thunder. But you know what, though? Hey, they were going to finish top of the like playoff misses anyways. At least maybe tied and be a little bit lower than the Mavericks. You might as well gear up for some contention for years to come because, yeah, why not? I don't know. You're already going to be there anyways. Nuggets are the first seed in the West, although they're exactly tied with the Clippers, who I traded Jay Williams and Chris Kamen to with Monte Ellis, Rudy Gay, and Josh Smith and Trevor Reza and Jose Calderon and Kendrick Perkins. The Rockets, 60 wins with Tony Parker, Deshaun Stevenson, Paul Pierce, and Yao Ming and Quentin Richardson on the bench. The Suns still holding in with Elton Brand replacing Amari. The Russell Westbrook uh, kind of led Allen Iverson, Page, Tim Duncan, they, they're the fifth seed. Portland with Vince Carter, J.R. Smith, Larry Hughes, and, and Zach Randolph. For some reason, Steve Nash is on the bench. And Wally Zerbiak, I guess, kind of makes sense. He could play the four. Oh, no, he can't actually. I'm going to fix that. I'm going to make Larry Hughes a two just so Steve Nash can start because I don't know what the hell they're doing. There you go. That's a more normal starting five. They got they got Kurt Thomas and Kenny Thomas. Look at that. 50 win Rajon Rondo led Utah Jazz team. And then Derek Rose, actually. See, it's still going to be tough for that Thunder team to make the playoffs because the eighth seed is the Derrick Rose, Jason Richardson. These two teams that actually dealt with each other plus the Lakers who are tanking to hell. Bobcats, though, 66 wins with my man. Who would have thought Kyle Lowry, Karan Butler, Michael Beasley, Pau Gasol would do this much. Toronto with Chris Paul, Rashard Lewis. Man, oh man, I, I get PTSD from those shots. Although, well, I don't mean PTSD in a bad way, I guess. The Bulls with Carmelo Anthony finished third in the conference with 51 wins. Miami, you know, they, they got a bit of a weaker supporting cast but they still have a big three of all 90 plus overalls and speaking of that the magic with Dwayne Wade T-Mac Mike Miller and Dirk and Vin Baker and a bunch of 80s way more than the Heat have the Pistons with Sharif Abdurrahim Michael Red joining Gilbert Arenas end up sixth also Chauncey Billups on the bench Kobe Bryant's Knicks with the addition of a few more uh what 
with Antoine Jameson added to the team, basically. Yeah, they uh, they end up seven. And the Pacers somehow sneak their way in despite just trading Karan Butler. It's still a good team. Just don't have like the one prolific guy, at least in terms of overall. And the Bucks just barely miss it with, wow, the Bucks missed it. With Shaq on the bench, LaMarcus Aldridge, Charlie Villanueva, Kevin Durant, Ben Gordon, and Steve Francis missed the playoff. The rest we'll focus on when the time comes, I guess. All right, first round, the Knicks are out of your Pacers, Kings, Rockets, Pistons, Heat, and Suns, and Jazz. So upset so far. The Spurs have upset the Suns with Elton Brandon, Stephon Marbury, the Spurs, Tim Duncan, yep. Portland, 4-1. to one. The Rockets, they are the sixth seed. The Trailblazers, the Rockets, obviously, Gao Ming, Tony Parker, Paul Pierce. They've underperformed a bit. We haven't seen much from them. They lose to J.R. Smith, Zach Randolph, Steve Nash, Wally Zerbiak, and Vince Carter, which isn't that much of a, you know, disappointment. That's a great team in itself. The Magic and the Heat played in the first round. I didn't even think about that. Yeah, they were the fourth and fifth seed. And the Heat smoked them. Oh, no, the Heat lost. The Heat kept losing to them in the, uh, or the Heat kept beating them in the conference finals, but now they lost to them in the first round. So LeBron James and Kevin Garnett will not be repeating as they get, you know, smoked in the first round. Second round, the Blazers are out of here, the Bobcats, the Bulls, and the Suns. So the Bobcats, the number one seed, are going to lose to the Super Team Magic, who are the fifth seed, obviously. Pau Gasol, Michael Beasley, and them were, you know, couldn't stand chance with the Magic, who have made it to the conference finals for many years in a row. And no upsets in the West. It's just 1v2. But on the East, you got the Chris Paul Raptors, who I believe they were the two seed, right? Yeah. So it's just the Magic kind of quote unquote surprising. The Magic have yet to win a ring. Obviously, Chris Paul could come back and win, crazily enough, a second. On the West side of things, you got the Clippers, the Monte Ellis, Rudy Gay, Josh Smith, Chris Kamen, Jay Williams led Clippers against the Nuggets. We've, we've grown very accustomed with making the finals, I think, like twice now. Magic up 3 1, 3 2, and they will get the Raptors. I keep saying smoke the teams. They will get them out of here in six, and so will the Clippers. So it is the Super Team Magic in the finals with D Wade against Jay Williams, T Mac against Monte Ellis, Mike Miller against Rudy Gay, Dirk against Josh Smith, and Vin Baker against Chris Kamen. They are literally better in every single matchup and probably depth as well. But the Clippers got some sort of keen sense of dog as Josh Smith is averaging 30 in the playoffs. Chris Kamen pretty well, 12. Monte Ellis, 16 in the playoffs, 18 in the regular season. Rudy Gay, 23 in the playoffs, 25 in the regular season. That big three is elite in its own right. And so far, they are cooking the magic in this game. It's starting to get close, though. I can't lie. Oh, yep, there it is. Jose Calderon has the basketball, 135 to go. And Jose will pull up with a close shot. That is off. Rebound by T-Mac. T-Mac will pull up the fading three, and that is good to take the lead. Three-point deficit for these Clippers. They head up the other way. Who will they get the ball to? Who is the main option? I'm not actually even sure. It looks like they're running through Jose Calderon. And Jose will get not fouled. Oh, my God. Leveled, though. And Claxton, Speedy Claxton in the post. I see someone cutting behind him. Instead, he'll pass it to T-Mac. And T-Mac could have gamed it right there, but misses. much, uh, Very much so within his bounds. And a nice pass down to Monte Ellis from Jose Calderon. Fundamental self. And there's a one-point deficit for the Clippers. And, oh, man, I, I was actually looking at my phone. Wow, was my bad. Once again, I am tired as hell and zoned out for a second there. But, uh, T matter of fact, T-Mac could catch anyone else off guard with a shot. This man just tween pulled from the free throw line right over Monte Ellis like it wasn't even there. Calderon back up the other way. 33 seconds to go. And Monte's got it. The screen by Kamen. Monte with the... Oh, oh my. Jose is wide open and said Monte will get the foul. Monte able to hit both. They're going to have to foul though. T-Mac able to hit both. They still got a chance to hit a three here though. Clippers, here they go. Jay Williams with the basketball. Jay, he will hold it for a second. Get the screen. Go right. Okay, pull up mid that's not a bad you know I, I had a feeling i had confidence he'd make it you're gonna send him back to the line again and wait wait oh my god in the passing lanes is jay williams they're gonna foul team mac again though eventually the uh, ariza you know what i'm saying the one to foul team mac hit the first and the second is also good clippers no timeouts yet again williams back up pass over to ariza from deep three and it is way off side of the backboard yep close this game out dog toward the 38 38 from team mac get the hell out of here magic take another game man we know what did it oh okay clippers uh magic and the magic are nba champions officially the big three of d wade dirk and t mac and as it crosses 903 a.m here in new york i think that's a good time for me to call it man oh also uh shaq yeah is gonna retire jamal mashburn or you can come back i will say this now i'm being serious this is uh you know i've been recording this is a very long video 
like and I, it isn't actually completing what I planned on setting out for so which means that if you would like I would be I would I would be honored to continue this until 2023 and a maybe even longer video I don't even know how this would possibly work I don't know what the hell is going on anymore I don't know what I'm doing you know it's ironic too and uh, I appreciate I, I think I might have said this I actually don't know if I've said this yet but in the video that I uh, you know when I was away in Vegas um I know I made a community post about it but my most popular video the 2003 re-simulation which is four hours long hit 10 million views and the description of that is like I'm either going insane um and making a new mold or I don't really care or something like that and I guess that's maybe what this is again I don't know what the hell I'm doing so yeah there you go this draft lottery for uh you know not the most climactic one but looking like something along these lines the Hawks got a couple picks now from themselves as well as OKC Lakers at the top with the Warriors the Wizards the Sixers the Grizzlies the Nets the Timberwolves but I'm gonna leave that for the next time if that's what you want to see don't even usually do two-part things but that is it thank you for watching I haven't said that in a while weirdly enough um um I can only say this because he's doing fantastic in this video subscribe to the channel you'll have the luck of Sean Livingston's knee that one time shout out to Sean Livingston shout out to Rashard Lewis matter of fact give me an MB for MVP in the comments if you want to see a second part I know he hasn't won one yet but we have to manifest and it's been real it's been fun but it ain't been real fun ironically in the words of Michael Beasley and I'll see you next time around the neighborhood good